Hey there, audiobook enthusiasts. Welcome to the audiobook collection. Today's upcoming audiobook is a special shout out to one of our amazing Patreon backers. If you're keen on personalized requests, consider becoming a part of our Patreon community. The link is in the video description below. Your support is truly appreciated, and I'm grateful to have you with me on this exciting audiobook adventure. And hey, if you're looking for a bundle of 300 plus novels, swing by my Kofi shop. For just $35, you can snag a Google Drive link to an audiobook treasure trove. Additionally, if you want to show some love to the original author of this novel, check out the author's credits discreetly provided in the description. Your support makes a difference. Thanks for being part of this literary journey with me. Chapter 121 Chapter 121 Both aliens stared at Harry in silence for a few moments while Harry patiently waited for them to introduce themselves. The green-skinned female alien sighed and then glared at him My name is Chilai and that's Lemo Chilai pointed a thumb towards the old alien besides her. Harry nodded and then smiled All right I'm Harry Potter and the girls who brought you here are Milim and Kanu Kanu waved at them from Harry's side while Milim smiled at them. Harry then continued speaking Now what's this about helping Broly? Chilai frowned and looked down. An explosion suddenly shook the area causing her to look towards where it came from, only to see Broly get blasted by an orb of knowing that there was no time left she decided to answer Harry's question Broly was forced to fight. He doesn't like fighting but Frieza made him lose control and now he's going to get killed. We have to help him. He doesn't deserve this. Harry stared at Chilai in silence for what seemed minutes. Harry then turned his head towards Kanu did you get the dragon balls? Kanu nodded and took one out of her fluffy tail and showed it to Harry yes. Chilai and Lemo had them and think they wanted to use them to help Broly, huh? I don't know. Harry nodded and then turned his head towards Chilai I take it you wanted to make a wish on Shinron huh? Chilai raised an eyebrow Shinron? She suddenly shook her head and then spoke up wait that doesn't matter. I just wanted to have the Dragon Balls take Broly back to the planet he was found. Harry smiled I see, well alright, but you don't need the Dragon Balls for that, I'll send him to whatever planet you want just tell me the name of the planet. Chilai looked unsure whether to trust Harry or not but Lemo decided to go ahead and give it a chance Broly was found on the planet Vampa, he spoke fondly of it even if it is a harsh place to live in. Harry hummed Vampa huh? Okay, give me a few seconds Harry closed his eyes and then called up his connection to the Akashic record, a multitude of screens made out of pure energy suddenly appeared out of nowhere. Weiss raised an eyebrow sensing something odd in the energy constructs but since he couldn't understand what they were showing he decided to quietly watch instead, Harry opened his eyes and then began to read the screen as they began to show some information that no one could understand. Meanwhile, Chilai was watching worriedly as Broly continued to try to fight the strange Saiyan that was effortlessly beating him. Suddenly Broly faltered and the strange Saiyan cupped his hands as he began to charge energy in them. The force of whatever he was going to do was powerful enough to make even her feel it and she began to worry for Broly, Harry suddenly smiled I found it. Harry watched as Kagata fired a very powerful Kamamiya at Broly, but before it could even touch the big Saiyan Harry snapped his fingers and used his control over space, teleporting Broly directly to Vampa. Everyone including Gagata widened their eyes in surprise while Harry relinquished his hold on his connection to the Akashic record causing the energy made screens disappear. He smiled and then nodded to, to himself for a job well done okay, Broly is back on Vampa now Chilai and Lemo gaped but nodded not wanting to question Harry when he obviously can do some very powerful stuff. Instead, they both took off running back towards Freezer's ship, everyone stared at them do so with curiosity but Harry just chuckled I think they're going to go join Broly. Harry then turned his head towards Kagata who sighed and just shook his head now that everything was done. Harry suddenly teleported everyone right to his side but Gagata wasn't surprised and just grinned at Harry it's been a while Harry. Harry smirked and then used his power over reality and snapped his fingers, Gagata suddenly diffused leaving both Goku and Vegeta rather confused as to what happened. Why still did his head in curiosity my? Just what was that? I felt reality suddenly shift and before that space actually folded on itself right over Broly, what interesting techniques Harry. Harry smiled at the angel they aren't techniques per se Master Weiss but I'm directly manipulating the concepts of space and reality themselves. Weiss raised an eyebrow intrigued at what Harry just said but Goku suddenly pushed forward and engulfed Harry in a one arm hug Harry, you're really back and you're stronger than before. Harry chuckled and grinned at Goku you've gotten stronger as well Goku especially since the tournament of power, I take it that you've been training non-stop since then? Goku sheepishly chuckled I kinda had to. 
You never know what might come up and the tournament of power showed me just how much stronger that I need to grow, it was certainly an eye-opener. Harry nodded having felt the same way, that eye-opener was the reason he went on his travels to look for further strength and power, vegged across his arms and sighed so Harry, mind explaining why I can't sense your ki- I can feel divinity from you but that's it, I can't sense your overall power. Gokka nodded having noticed the same thing. Harry laughed a little well let's just say that I have become something far more complicated and leave it at that for now, don't worry though I'll explain everything soon but we still have something to take care of. Harry turned his head toward the direction where Milim left Friesen unconscious, both Goku and Vegeta turned their head towards where Harry was looking and finally noticed Frieza's low energy signatures so they understood what he meant. Everyone then took off flying towards where Frieza is, of course, Vegeta took Bulma with him in his arms as they headed to confront the frost alien. Dash. Meanwhile, after a little while both Chilai and Lemo arrived at Frieza's ship and walked inside, they were shocked to see many dead members of Frieza's army and were glad that both Kanu and Milim deemed them harmless otherwise they might have gotten killed as well. After a while they arrived at the hangar and boarded one of the ships inside, Chilai immediately turned the ship on and began to fly it out of the hangar of Frieza's ship. Lemo walked up to where Chilai was sitting and driving so where to? Chilai smiled well if we can trust what that Harry guy said. Then Broly should be back on Vamp and I'm going there. Someone has to take care of the big oaf, especially now that he's all alone. Lemo grinned then count me in as well. Well be safer with Broly anyways but first let's stop somewhere and buy some stuff we might need before we head to Vampa. Chilai grinned and nodded to Lemo sounds good. With that conversation finished both Chilai and Lemo left the planet and headed toward where Broly is. Dash. Harry looked up as soon as they arrived where Frieza was laying on the ground unconscious and looked up, he smiled as he watched the ship that Chilai and Lemo were using to leave the planet, he knew where they were going and was glad to know that Broly has good friends. The group also quietly watched Chilai and Lemo's ship leave the planet and once it was gone they all looked down towards Frieza, Harry then suddenly blasted a kill blast on Frieza's face which surprised everyone not expecting him to do that. Frieza got up growling in pain and absolutely angry who dares hurt the mighty Frieza. I will kill you and everything you love. But Harry cut him off you're not going to do shit Frieza, not unless you want me to kill you before you could even twitch a finger Frieza turned his head and glared towards Harry. But once he noticed him, he somewhat calmed down and crossed his arms over his chest while scoffing if it isn't the lizard. So you were the one who came to help the monkeys, why I am not surprised. Goku awkwardly chuckled while Vegeta just scoffed and crossed his arms while facing away from the group. Harry sighed and shook his head it's nice to see you two bastard but mind telling me why you're looking for the Dragon Balls? Frieza frowned and looked reluctant to answer Harry's question but Harry narrowed his eyes at him I will read your goddamn mind and find out myself Frieza, so what will be? Frieza growled and then clicked his tongue in annoyance I wanted to wish for my size to increase a bit. Everyone stared at the frost alien while Weiss was chuckling non-stop. Harry sighed and rubbed his eyes why is everyone using the Dragon Balls for stupid wishes like these? What's wrong with you guys? Bulma sweat dripped while Frieza growled and then began to float well since you're here my chances of using the Dragon Balls are practically zero so I'll be leaving, I have no desire to fight against any of you at the moment. Harry however called out to Frieza before he could take off I'll be making sure the Dragon Balls are never misused again Frieza, the same with the ones in Namek as well so for your own good I would avoid trying to use them again. Frieza huffed but nodded, he then engulfed his body and Kian took off flying towards his ship. Harry and everyone stared at Frieza's leave. Suddenly Goku chuckled I'm surprised how calm he always is when you're the one talking to him Harry, he's never that nice to us. Vegeta scoffed anyone would be polite to Harry after fighting him once, he's not one to hold back and brings you an enormous amount of pain, remember what he did to me when I first tried to kill you all. Goku nodded and Bulma suddenly jumped ah, that's right. Krillin told me that he and Harry let you go because Goku asked you to. But Harry still broke both of your knees and hit you with a curse for a while before he let you go. Vegeta physically shook at the reminder of what Harry did to him before he was allowed to leave Earth, it certainly made him respect and fear the dragon. Harry scoffed and pointed at Vegeta this asshole blasted me off the planet and then beat me to the ground as I fell back to Earth, then when he took on his great ape form sat on me and then proceeded to stomp me until I stopped moving. He's lucky I didn't cut off his balls for that. Goku laughed and nodded ah. I remember that, that was the hardest battle we had so far at that time and we both were overwhelmed a bit but as soon as Vegeta stopped holding back that's when things got dicey, good times tilde. Harry sighed while Vegeta just huffed, 
Harry shook his head Goku I love you like a brother but sometimes I want to punch you in the face as hard as I can. Goku just grinned ha 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 chi chi says the same thing just without the like a brother part. Harry just chuckled while Bulma grinned and spoke up I can't imagine why chi chi would say that. The sarcasm wasn't lost on anyone right now. Everyone shared a laugh for a few moments, even Vegeta did as well and soon enough Freezer's ship suddenly took off into the sky and quickly left the planet. Harry seeing this nodded and then spoke up to everyone alright guys, let's all go back. I have a lot to tell you and I'm sure you're all curious about what I've been up to. Everyone nodded except Milim and Kanu who just smiled at Harry, everyone then decided to go to Bulma's house to talk since Beerus was there, so Harry teleported everyone right to where he sensed Beerus was resting. Dash. Everyone found Beerus taking a nap with Bra sitting on his chest and giggling herself silly trying to reach for his ears, Bulma immediately walked up to Beerus and picked her daughter up into her arms, and began to talk to her while Bra giggled at her mother's silliness. Beerus opened an eye and stared at everyone, he then grinned when he saw Harry if it isn't the dragon, it's been a while. And you feel different, more powerful too. Harry grinned at Beerus Lord Beerus, it has been a while sure and yeah. A lot has happened, I take it you were keeping an eye on everything that was happening? Beerus opened his other eye and sat up, he yawned and stretched for a little bit and then nodded at Harry yes, I was aware when you arrived along with the girls beside you, I guess you helped with the situation as well? Yeah, that Broly was strong you know? With a little bit of training he could even give you a run for your money Beerus. Beerus grinned at Harry and nodded never mind the Saiyan, I'm more curious as to why you feel like Xeno-sama and how strong you've really become. Vegeta raised an eyebrow you can't sense his energy either Lord Beerus? Beerus just continued to grin no, only the fact that it's divine in nature is the only thing I can sense. Either he has ascended way past what a god of destruction can accomplish or he has become something else entirely. Goku and Vegeta looked perplexed while Weiss just smiled, Bulma turned her head towards everyone and began to pay attention to everything that was being said since she was curious as well. Harry lightly laughed and nodded then perhaps I should explain what I've been up to and what has happened to me on the rest of my journey, buckle up everyone because it's quite the story. Everyone nodded and Harry began to explain what he's been up to after he left this world and about the sort of worlds he's visited and lived in for a while, he also explained the sort of skills, techniques, and magic he picked up along the way. Everyone even Weiss and Beerus were surprised at everything Harry told them, sure Goku, Bulma and to some extent, Vegeta knew of Harry's circumstances and the fact that he's a dimensional traveler but the whole scope of the rest of his journey was unknown to them. Beerus and Weiss only knew the gist of it since Harry wasn't too keen on revealing everything to them, he trusted Weiss but not Beerus and he knew that he was not someone to be careless about. Beerus chuckled you bastard, to think you would hide all of this from me. I should destroy you for keeping such secrets from your god of destruction. Harry just smirked, you're not my god of destruction remember? I'm from another world plus like hell, I would reveal other worlds to someone like you, you tend to act like a child and destroy things on a whim. Beerus's eye twitched in annoyance while Weiss laughed and then spoke up young Harry does make a good point Lord Beerus though. That does make me wonder why Harry would reveal all of this to us now? Everyone nodded wondering that as well. Harry shrugged and then smiled Beerus is not a threat to me anymore and I can deal with him quite easily if he tries anything funny against my world. Beerus narrowed his eyes at Harry oh? You think you can beat me now Harry? Harry tilted his head and nodded of course, I can but I rather not fight you and accidentally destroy this universe, I only have to kill the Supreme Kai and then bring him back to life to deal with you. As soon as Harry said those words Beerus immediately jumped and powered up, Kanu immediately rose a barrier to protect everyone and everything around them while Harry just huffed all I have to do is wish for the Supreme Kai to die and he will immediately drop dead before you can even move an inch, so Lord Beerus you better relax. Beerus growled and powered down, he hated to admit it but out of everyone he met, Harry is the most dangerous foe one could ever face. He was after all one to prepare hundreds of steps ahead of you just to make you utterly powerless to face him. But to think he would do that to a god of destruction, Wise chuckled my, he has you in a checkmate Lord Beerus but. How do you know about it Harry? Harry smiled Goku and Vegeta mentioned it after they faced Goku Black and I confirmed it later when I received the ability to connect to the Akashic records, the moment I arrived back into this world I tagged the Supreme Kai with an instant death technique, all I have to do is wish for his death and poof he drops dead, of course, I would bring him back to life right away but that would get rid of Beerus permanently. Beerus nervously began to sweat while Weiss just sighed I did warn you about causing too much trouble Lord Beerus, eventually someone was going to get tired of your aloof attitude towards destroying planets. 
Veg decide don't feel too bad Lord Beerus. Harry is a guy that can hold a grudge, and eventually, he will get even, one way or the other. He's not one to let bygones be bygones. Goku and Bulma nodded having known this about Harry all this time. It was something that was both scary and endearing to them since Harry only really acted like that when it came to his loved ones. Do you want to get under his skin, or piss him off? Then go after someone he cares about, but know that he will get even, and if he doesn't kill you, he will make you suffer for it. It was something that Vegeta knew too well as well, as mentioned before when he first came to Earth and attacked along with Nappa he came to understand that Harry wasn't one to mess with. He isn't naive or kind-hearted like Kakarot, no he is cunning and cold when dealing with enemies and has no hesitation when it comes to killing his enemies, honestly, the only reason he was alive right now was that Harry decided to humor Kakarot and let him live. Though he did make sure Vegeta paid for everything he had done, the end result, the proud prince of all Saiyans ended up with two shattered knees and unimaginable pain from that Crucio or whatever spell Mumbo Jumbo Harry had hit him with. All of that had earned Harry the respect of Vegeta. Nappa had also suffered at the hand of the now dragon god. When Harry and Kakarot arrived Harry wasted no time in beating and then violently killing Nappa by ripping his spine out. Luckily for Vegeta, Kakarot had called dibs and he faced him while Harry watched but after a while, he joined and boy did Vegeta regret his life choices. He put up a big fight against both Harry and Kakarot but he was soon forced to take on his great ape form. As a multiplier form, Vegeta was able to overpower Harry and he wasted no time in taking him out first, though he only succeeded in knocking him unconscious after violently attacking him, after that taking on Kakarot was a piece of cake. Still, all of that showed Vegeta that Harry was one of those individuals you didn't want to end up on the wrong side of, though now Harry has become an ally and even a friend to Vegeta he was still wary of him. Harry smirked at Beerus you didn't think I would forget how you just appeared out of nowhere, picked a fight, and threatened this planet, did you? I still remember the beating you gave me too and I don't forget those who beat me to an inch of my life. Harry narrowed his eyes at the God of Destruction and Beerus just glared back at him, in hindsight he can't blame Harry for doing all of that and he can admit that he had somehow deserved it as well you think Xeno-sama would allow you to do all of that? Harry smirked. He would, unless he doesn't want all his destroyers and angels to stay alive, after all even he can't mess with death. Death comes for us all after all. Suddenly as if being summoned, a dreadful aura spread around the area, an aura so thick and cold that it made everyone shiver, especially Beerus and Weiss. Harry just went on the first time I arrived in this universe caused my connection to the conceptual being known as death to be cut off because of Xenosama's influence in this universe. It also didn't help that Death's influence in this world was not the same as others but now that I'm stronger, now that I'm a dragon god and that I have powers beyond your understanding. Death now has the ability to join this universe, my death has now arrived and we don't like to play fair. Suddenly behind Harry a feminine silhouette took form, it was big and was shrouded in a black cloak that covered her eyes but the thing that shook everyone was the fact that it was engulfing Harry in a loving hug with a soft smile on her face. Both Beerus and Weiss jumped in what seemed to be fright, Weiss actually backpedaled W what is this? It's far stronger than Xenosama, but, all I can feel is death. The end of all things. Beerus froze and just stared at the being behind Harry in silence until she suddenly seemed to move her head towards him and smirk, which caused the god of destruction to shiver in horror. Soon death vanished with an amused giggle but the coldness in the air stayed which left everyone feeling cold, except Bra, Kanu, and Milim unaffected by death's presence for some odd reason that everyone else didn't understand. Harry smiled I can instant kill anyone now and if necessary death and I can fight off both Xenosamas and come out on top, if I feel in the mood I can even summon my girlfriends and of them help and they're far more powerful than any of you can imagine as well, but we don't have to worry about that if you play nice and behave Lord Beerus. Beerus narrowed his eyes and then gazed at both Kanu and Milim who only smiled and waved at him. Milim suddenly grinned and then spoke up there's more of us. And Harry made sure that we're powerful enough to fight off anyone too. Kanu nodded we all have our expertise and all kinds of unique abilities as well plus we have a few instant death techniques as well. And that's not even counting on the fact that Harry has given us all kinds of skills as well. Harry smiled from the moment I arrived home and found people to love and care for I decided to prepare them to fight and defeat to beings like you, I know of the true horrors laying in wait in the multiverse and I for one wasn't going to sit on my thumbs and wait for some bored god like you Beerus, to show up and threaten my world and family. Beerus stared at Harry in silence until he scoffed and looked away fine, have it your way dragon, I won't hurt your precious ones. Wise chuckled and shook his head I have to say, Harry, you're terrifying as an enemy oh oh oh. 
Harry grinned at Weiss regretting training me Master Weiss. Weiss stopped laughing and then smirked at Harry not at all. Beerus sighed if you're done with your threats and whatnot can you continue with your story? I must admit, I'm even more curious about what you have been doing back in your world. Beerus seemed calm but Harry and Vegeta noticed he was still quite tense. It seems like he was still shaken by Harry's preparations to make sure he wouldn't be a threat again but Harry didn't care and just continued. He then told them about his world, what he had done when he got back, the yokai faction, Neo Kyoto, and everything they had accomplished together, and of course about his big chaotic family. It surprised Bummer and Goku quite a bit at the size of Harry's family but they were truly happy for him. They knew he had the dream of having a big family someday and they were glad he had gotten what he always wanted. Vegeta was interested in all the ways someone can train and get stronger in Neo Kyoto and seemed rather excited about it. This of course piqued Goku's interest as well. Bulma however was more interested in the technological advancements of Neo Kyoto and was rather curious about all the projects Harry was working on. She knew that Harry had quite the mind for technology and was an inventor by heart. Everyone listened to Harry for a few hours as he told his tale and eventually everyone had to move to Bulma's living room. Bra had ended up in Harry's arms and as he told everyone what's been going on in his life he played with Bra and kept her entertained. This allowed Bulma to take mental notes and keep track of everything Harry was telling them. Goku and Vegeta were, of course, excited as well along with Weiss himself who seemed pretty curious as well. Even Beerus seemed to be paying a lot of attention to everything Harry was telling them and quietly sat there intently listening to Harry. Eventually Harry finished catching everyone up with everything he had been doing lately. Harry poked Bra on her belly and made her giggle as he spoke up again that's everything so far guys, I decided to come here and visit after I finished dealing with the Greek faction and had time to relax. Bulma sighed and leaned back on her couch wow, that's quite a lot you've been up to Harry, honestly, it all sounds amazing and I had seen a lot myself. Goku crossed his arms and hummed I'm more interested in all of those powerful beings that live in your world Harry, there are even dragon gods over there. I want to fight them. Harry chuckled while Bulma, Vegeta, and even Beerus sweat dripped I'm afraid that not even the gods of my world would pose a challenge for you Goku, sure some of them might have some unique abilities that might give you some difficulties but they're not something you can't handle. Goku just widely smiled but I bet I can learn some things from fighting them. Harry raised an eyebrow but nodded since he couldn't really argue with that statement well that's true, plus you're the type to learn from your opponents in mid battle so, yeah I can see it happening actually. Goku just laughed and nodded to Harry while everyone just sighed, Vegeta then spoke up I'm more interested in the ways the people of Neo Kyoto can grow strong and that natural dungeon as well. Milam grinned ah, everyone in Neo Kyoto can grow powerful, all they have to do is put in the effort. Harry, Lefei, Jessica, and Hermione have placed training chambers with time dilation and gravity controls for anyone to use and the natural dungeon can spit out some very powerful monsters and bosses. Harry grinned at Vegeta you actually appear as a boss in one of the deeper floors of the dungeon Vegeta or rather the you I fought when you and Nappa came here. Vegeta raised an eyebrow at that while Kanu giggled you're actually a very popular boss in Neo Kyoto Mr. Vegeta, in fact, you even have a fan club too, something about the way you furiously fight just appeals to yokai in general. Vegeta smirked and seemed rather proud which just made both Goku and Bulma smile. Wise hummed and then decided to raise some questions this natural dungeon seems very interesting. I take it that the monsters and bosses found inside are the ones you have fought during your travels right? What are the requirements? Harry smiled at Wise yes the natural dungeon has been spawning enemies that I have faced before for quite some time. One day it just connected to me and began connecting to all the worlds I've been to and using the information on enemies to create and fill its floors with all sorts of beings. Milam scratched her head when that started happening the smart ones in the family studied everything as much as they could. Hermione explained to us once that the conditions seem to be that Harry has to be the one to fight the enemies and beat them before they can spawn in the natural dungeon. Weiss nodded I see you wouldn't find me or Lord Beerus inside the dungeon, Harry has fought us but never defeated us. Though I did spar with him while I trained him, would that qualify? Kanu shook her head no, it is to be a real fight otherwise nothing happens. In fact, Mr. Goku appears as a boss on multiple floors, each one is a kid. Goku tilted his head huh? Why as a kid? Harry smiled well, the only times you and I ever fought seriously was during the tournaments as kids. We really did go all out and tried to beat each other down at those times. Goku awed and then nodded ah. So that means Krillin, Yanka, and Shin appear in the natural dungeon. How cool. 
Harry nodded and chuckled yeah, even Piccolo Daimu appears and Piccolo as Junior as well, they caused a lot of guild members a lot of problems progressing in the dungeons. Milam giggled for a long time everyone had to gang up on Piccolo. The guilds had to send whole armies and train non-stop. Not surprising though because Piccolo has a lot of very explosive and destructive techniques. Gokka nodded and completely agreed, Piccolo was a very dangerous adversary in his youth and was not surprised the guilds in Neo Kyoto had a hard time facing him. He himself was almost beaten by him multiple times during the tournament where they faced off. Harry made Bra float and fly around with magic which made her laugh out loud in fun while he continued to speak every being from this world that appears in the natural dungeon forces everyone to adapt and grow stronger, I'm actually very proud of everyone that they never gave up or grew discouraged. Milam grinned it also helped that Harry and everyone at home are always happy to train and help anyone that needs it, that's why Neo Kyoto is the strongest in the world. Everyone even Beerus smiled at Milam's enthusiasm while Harry and Kunu laughed in amusement, Bulma then spoke up to ask Harry something hey Harry? Harry turned his head towards Bulma, and smiled yeah? Bulma smiled back at Harry are you going to connect this world to yours? It was a good question since this world is filled with very powerful and dangerous beings, Harry closed his eyes and thought about Bulma's question well to be honest, I'm very hesitant to connect both worlds. I don't have to worry about the angels and destroyers anymore but there's always someone strong popping out of nowhere here. Bulma and Vegeta nodded knowing how true that was, Beerus just looked away but inwardly agreed with Harry since this universe always has something or the other happening, meanwhile Goku tilted his head in confusion since he didn't understand what was so bad about that. Harry looked up I guess I can if I find a great secret place to make a gate and ward it to hell and back on both sides but even then it is a risk. I don't want to risk my world or my family. Bulma nodded yeah that makes sense, I would love it if I could visit whenever I wanted, in fact, I'm sure many of us would love to but you do have good reasons not to do it. Harry frowned let me think about all of this a bit longer, maybe I can come up with a way to allow everyone to visit whenever but give me some time. Bulma smiled and nodded knowing that Harry will be able to come up with something. Goku then stood up and stretched you should go and visit Chi Chi Harry, she's missed you a lot and maybe you can get her to relax a bit she's been on my case for a while now. Harry chuckled I bet it's because you're always going off to train Goku, but I'll see what I can do. No promises though, you might have to take your lumps like a man. Goku just smiled and nodded sounds good. I'll go ahead and let her know you're coming. With that said Goku teleported away and Harry just shook his head. Bulma smiled next time you come over bring the whole family, I want to meet everyone. Harry smiled well you better prepare for the chaos that will rain down on your house Bulma. Bulma just grinned letting Harry know that she welcomed it. Which made him chuckle. Harry then turned his head towards Weiss and Beerus despite everything, I am happy I got to see you both. Weiss just smiled and nodded, and Beerus just closed his eyes and smiled a bit it is good to see you again too dragon Harry smiled at Beerus and Weiss, then waved two fingers at Vegeta who did the same with a grin and with that Harry teleported himself, Kanu and Milam to Mount Bozu. Bra floated to Bulma with the help of Harry's magic while giggling and Bulma grabbed her from the air and hugged her daughter with an amused smile on her face that was your uncle Harry. Wasn't he awesome? Bra laughed and clapped her tiny hands in agreement with her mother's words. Chapter 122, Chapter 122 Harry, Kanu, and Milam teleported right in front of the sun house, Kanu smiled and looked around as she appreciate the nature of Mount Pozu wow. The Senjutsu on this mountain is off the charts. Nature here is so vibrant and alive too. Harry nodded in agreement, when he first arrived in this world and appeared on Mount Pozu he was a bit caught off guard by the overabundance of natural energy in this place, but he did always loved how connected to nature this mountain is, it always brought a smile to his sage side yup. This mountain is just full of life, in fact, the entire planet is like this, there's also not a lot of pollution either. Kanu smiled and nodded as she took a big breath and enjoyed the clean air of Mount Bozu, suddenly a voice spoke up it also helps that this planet's land mass is bigger, in fact, the planet is quite big as well. Everyone turned their heads towards where the voice came from and saw a tall young man with spiky black hair coming out of the house and smiling at them, Harry immediately smiled as he saw the young man Goen. Goen immediately walked up to Harry and excitedly began to speak Uncle Harry. Dad told me you were back in this world, so Videl and I immediately came here to see, or rather Dad brought us here. Harry chuckled and messed up Goen's hair though the half Saiyan just chuckled in amusement it's good to see you Goen and man your dad works fast. 
go and Grinda nodded well I think mom sent him to get us right away, she immediately began to cook a big meal for you and your companions the moment she heard you were coming here. Harry chuckled and shook his head in amusement, Chi Chi has always gone out of her way to make him welcome in the sun home, suddenly a green skinned man walked out of the house and grinned at Harry who smiled the moment he saw him Piccolo. It's been a while. Piccolo walked up to go inside and nodded to Harry yes, it certainly has been quite a while Harry and it seems you've gotten stronger too. No that's not it, it's like you've become something else entirely right? Harry chuckled and nodded well. I guess the Kami and you allowed you to sense the changes in me. I'm not surprised though, out of everyone I thought you would be the one to notice it right well you, Weist and Beerus that is but those two don't really count. Piccolo nodded I see, so I take it you met with them? Yeah. I'm sure Goku and Vegeta told you of what happened when they went to you during the whole ordeal they were involved in, but yes Beerus and Weiss are on earth right now Harry shrugged not really worrying about the presence of the god of destruction and angel on earth. Piccolo frowned they just told me the gist of it but even then I could sense that something big was going on. I guessed you helped with the situation right? Harry nodded in confirmation to Piccolo's questions yes, it wasn't a big deal but it needed handling. It's not over yet but I'll soon be dealing with what happened in my own way, I'll be going to the lookout later for that. Piccolo crossed his arms and nodded I see, then I'll go with you, I'm rather curious as to what you're planning on doing since you're always doing something interesting. Piccolo suddenly sighed and turned his head towards Milim who had been inspecting him closely as soon as he appeared can I help you? Milam looked up at him and widely smiled and ah, I'm just getting all the information of your alien biology with my Milam eyes, so don't mind me Tilda. Piccolo's eyebrow twitched in annoyance which made Goen and Harry chuckle, Kanu sheepishly smiled and scratched her head you'll have to forgive Milam, Mr Piccolo, she doesn't mean to be rude but she just doesn't know any better and our family isn't any better for that matter. Piccolo sighed but nodded, Goen tilted his head towards Kanu and hummed a beastman, but you're more humanoid than the others I've seen. Kanu smiled and then bowed ah sorry. I'm Kanu and I'm a yokai from Harry's world so I'm not a beastman. Goen's eyes widened in curiosity while Piccolo raised an eyebrow what's the difference? Piccolo asked out of curiosity. Harry smiled well the beastmen of this world are the result of mammals evolving like humans did they are a product of selective evolution, the yokai of my world are supernatural beings born from fear and legends of humanity. Goen and Piccolo listen intently finding all of this very interesting, Kanu then decided to further explain also we yokai have magical powers and supernatural abilities something the beastmen of this world do not I believe? Goen crossed his arms and nodded well technically that's true but there have been some beastmen that have shown some special abilities before, I think dad mentioned having fought some like that before in his childhood. Harry nodded there's also Parandulong though those two went to a special school that taught the art of transformation. They weren't born with abilities or magical powers like the yokai are. Goen nodded while Piccolo suddenly spoke up so they're more akin to the demon king right? Harry grinned and nodded confirming Piccolo's comparison that's right, demon kin from this world are magical in nature and born strong and with a bunch of special abilities, some very unique for that matter. Milim, who had somehow gotten on top of Piccolo's shoulders and taken off his hat to see his antenna suddenly spoke up there are demons in this world too. Harry, Kanu, and Goen tried not to laugh at how Piccolo just seemed done with everything right now, Harry then decided to answer Milim's questions yes but most don't compare to the ones you know of Milim though there are some which are far beyond the power level of even Guy and Leon. Milim put Piccolo's hat back on his head and jumped off his shoulders that's actually pretty scary, those two are incredibly powerful and dangerous, enough to give me pause as I was before you brought me to your world. Harry nodded yes and we don't even know what sort of abilities they might have as well. Goen frowned you're talking about Deborah right? Harry smiled and nodded yes, you remember how he turned Cridden and Piccolo into stone? Plus he was powerful enough to fight you off for a bit and that's saying something. Goen sighed, that fight with Deborah had left a bad taste in his mouth especially when the Demon King just dragged the fight on as much as he could, he was glad Harry never let him stop training otherwise Deborah might have beaten him into the ground. Piccolo grunted in annoyance at being reminded about his lapse of attention during that time so what you're saying is that is not only their power we should worry about but those pesky unique abilities of theirs. Harry nodded when facing enemies like Demonkin and Yokai it's best to always expect surprises and be ready for anything, you wouldn't believe the amount of craziness I've seen. Piccolo nodded in agreement with Harry's advice while Goen decided to ask a question then what sort of special abilities do Yokai have? Kanu smiled and decided to be the one to explain it really depends on the type of yokai, for example since I'm a nine-tailed fox yokai I normally would focus on illusions and fox fire. 
Go and wasted no time asking further questions Foxfire? Illusions? Harry was the one to answer that question Foxfire is a type of mystical fire unique to Kitsune, this fire burns with the power of Senjutsu and it's a damn pain to extinguish once it latches onto you since it not only physically burns but it also eats away at your life force as well. Go and winced and even Piccolo clicked his tongue at the implications of such techniques, for fighters who use ki having your life force attacked in any way can severely cripple you. Kanu giggled at the expression on both Go and and Piccolo's faces you don't have to worry, most Kitsune's fox fire wouldn't be able to do anything to beings as powerful as you are only my mother and I would be powerful enough to hurt you with it and we're on Harry's side which means we're also on your side as well. Goan and Piccolo smiled at Kanu who seemed rather proud of herself for her little speech, Harry gave her a head pat which made her giggle. Suddenly a young woman carrying a baby came out of the house as well and smiled when she saw everyone Goan. Chi Chi wants to know if Harry is here? Goan and Piccolo smiled and then took a step to the side allowing the young woman to see Harry who smiled at her well. If it isn't Miss Satan. The young woman rolled her eyes and walked up to Harry with a smile on her face letting everyone know she was amused by Harry's nickname that's Miss Sun to you, Harry Potter. Harry grinned at the young woman who grinned back at him, Harry then chuckled and the young woman couldn't help but laugh as well it's good to see you again Harry. The young woman gave Harry a one-armed hug which Harry returned it's good to see you too Videl. The baby suddenly squealed and began to reach for Harry and it's nice to see you too Pan. Videl giggled and handed Pan to Harry who laughed happily as Harry lifted her to his face. Pan then grabbed Harry's face and began to make baby noises at him. Harry grinned at Pan how's my favorite son doing? Boy. You got bigger now. Videl smiled while Goan said aloud hey for Harry's comment about Pan being his favorite son, which made Piccolo chuckle. Videl ignored her husband's complaints and spoke well she's almost two now and a handful with how energetic she is. Harry smiled and then began to make Pan float with his magic then it's a good thing she came out more like you than Goan, he was a crybaby most of the time when he was a baby and as a kid, well until Piccolo fixed that. Go and groaned which caused Piccolo to grin at him Harry can you please not talk about my dark past with my wife. Harry laughed all right, all right. Videl just smiled at Goan who seemed very embarrassed right now, Harry then turned his head towards Videl what's this about Chi Chi asking if I'm here? Videl smiled ah well Mr. Goku is trying to sneak a bite at what she's cooking so she was wondering if you were here, so you can help her keep him under control so she can cook in peace. Harry grinned and nodded well. One beating for Goku coming up. Everyone stared as Harry walked into the house Goku. You better not be eating the delicious food before I'm or I'm kicking your butt. There was some panicking and screaming inside the house for a few moments before silence, Goan nervously laughed at the way Harry could keep his dad under control. Videl however, was staring amusedly at Pan who was still floating around her with the help of Harry's magic, Piccolo side already used to the chaos that is Harry Potter. Both Milam and Kanu smiled and giggled at how happy Harry seemed right now, according to him this is the world he spent the most time in because of the number of things he could learn here and the fighters that he could face on a daily basis to grow more powerful. So he spent a lot of time with these people and that made them very special and important to Harry, since he had literally known them for a lifetime now. Soon after everyone decided to follow Harry back to the house and see the chaos he just brought to it in just a few seconds, it is after all a normal thing for chaos to follow Harry everywhere he goes and they didn't want to miss it. Dash. Once inside they saw, Goten poking Goku on his cheek as his further squirmed about under the effect of an overpowered incarcerous spell from Harry, while the dragon god was happily hugging an equally happy Chi Chi. Goen awkwardly chuckled as he watched his father squirm trying to break the magical ropes while Piccolo just grinned at Goku's predicament, Pan floated down towards her grandpa and began to poke him as well. This caused Videl to giggle at the image, while Kanu and Milam just laughed at how funny the whole thing was, Chi Chi then stepped away from Harry and stared at him you seem healthy and even younger than when you left too, I'm happy you're taking care of yourself, Harry. Harry chuckled of course, I was going to take care of myself. I wouldn't want to be at the end of your scoldings after all. Chi Chi smiled and nodded to Harry, seeing him so young and cheerful reminded her of when she met him and Goku when they were children, it was when Master Roshi had put out Fire Mountain with a Kamamiya wave that Harry fixed their castle and belongings with magic, that single act had made him a friend to the Ox family. After that he would come over and visit often and would even bring Goku with him so she could spend time with him, honestly, Harry was a big reason why she and Goku got married since he played the role of her wingman with Goku. She was also glad that he gave Goku the talk and explained some very important things that Goku needed to learn, things that he sorely needed to know. 
Thanks to Harry's talk Goku came to understand things far more than before and both had become boyfriend and girlfriend when they had grown to be 14 years old. Harry at that point made sure to always bring Goku to spend time with her no matter where they were and he was even her best man on her wedding day with Goku, a role Harry took with a smile on his face. It was that same black-haired boy she met so long ago that was back from his adventures and she was very happy to have him back, so Chi Chi laughed and shook her head you always know how to behave, compare to Goku and Goen I never have to scold you tilde. Both Goku and Goen complained though all Goku did was squirm around but Chi Chi ignored them while Harry sent them a victorious grin, this resulted in Piccolo smirking at their misfortune, Videl giggling and both Milam and Kanu smiling at the scene before them. Dash. A while after Chi Chi was able to peacefully finish cooking thanks to Harry being able to keep Goku tied up, not like the earth raised Saiyan didn't try to break the conjured ropes Harry had wrapped him in with. But the nature of Harry's magic and his use of the Elder Wand made it impossible for Goku to break the ropes, he even tried using his Super Saiyan Blue form to try and break them but to his, Piccolo, and Goen's surprise, the ropes refused to budge. It was only after Chi Chi finished cooking that Harry let go of Goku, by that time however Goku was far more interested in how he couldn't make Harry's conjured ropes break. So Harry had to explain that his energy had taken on all kinds of special effects and among them was the God Slayer affinity. Goku having ascended to godhood meant that he was now vulnerable to things and beings who had this aspect, especially by someone of Harry's power level. It came as a surprise to Goku and Goen who had never heard of such a thing before, Piccolo, however, had heard and even seen some of this kind of thing before thanks to Kami's memories. However, he had never seen any of these so-called god slayer weapons or beings actually be able to harm or kill a god, much less Kami himself. Harry hummed and then theorized that perhaps these people and weapons might now be powerful enough to actually harm a deity of this world since this universe's power level was way higher than any he's seen so far. It made sense to Piccolo since the deities in this universe were very powerful. To begin with, he did wonder if Harry could actually harm more killer Kai and after pondering about it he decided to ask him about it. So the Namekian did so and Harry's answer both amazed and terrified him can I kill a Kai? Yeah with ease, in fact. I can just whisper their names and tell them to drop dead and bam, dead Kai. Pretty much everyone was surprised about this, except Goku who already knew from when Harry threatened Beerus, but the rest of the Sun family didn't know that information and it surprised the end Piccolo. Go inside and leaned back to think about all of this, he moved his gaze and sweat dripped as he watched his dad eat like there was no tomorrow. What surprised him was the fact that Milim was eating just as fast and as much as his dad. Kanu though was elegantly eating a little bit of everything while enjoying the food's taste, to him, she seemed like a little princess which seemed to be something his mom liked with how cheerful she seemed to be talking to Kanu. Goen then took a look at Harry who was eating while having Pan in his arms and playing with her you know Uncle Harry, if it was any other person who told me that they can kill a Kai with a whisper I would be terrified, but if it's you at least I know you wouldn't do that for no reason, still to have such a power. Everyone nodded in agreement to Goen's words. Piccolo then turned his head towards Harry that's not something you could do before right? Otherwise it would have saved us a lot of headaches. Harry chuckled and nodded yeah, that's a new ability I awakened as the master of death in the last world I visited. That got everyone's attention, especially Milim and Kanu who now that they think about it, haven't asked what sort of world the last one Harry visited was. But they were beaten to the punch by Videl who was very curious and interested in all of this what sort of world was it? If it helped you unlock that crazy ability then it must be something very special. Harry looked up from playing with Pan and laughed a little oh, it's special all right Harry smiled and seemed to be reminiscing a bit and after a few moments he spoke up again the last world I visited had me going to a school for demons in the netherworld. Everyone stared at Harry even Milim and Kanu stared at Harry perplexed about what he just said that made Harry laugh a bit at how funny everyone was looking at him okay. It looks like I have to explain a bit. This school for demons is very unique in that it doesn't work as a school usually does, the teachers there encourage bad behavior and rather spend their time being lazy than actually teaching. In fact, delinquency is well looked upon in this school and there are no rules or laws either, you could walk up to somebody, kill them, steal everything including their clothes, and you would most likely be considered the top student for doing that. Everyone just gaped at Harry as he continued on fights there are a common occurrence as well as the number one way to deal with arguments and complaints, in fact even the teachers were known to attack a student for fun. Stealing, killing, loitering, hiding the toilet paper from the bathroom stalls and all sorts of evil deeds are expected and encouraged. Harry chuckled while Piccolo actually grinned liking this place already, while Chi Chi looked disturbed, and Goku, Goan, 
Macmillan, and Cunny seemed very curious about such a place. Meanwhile, Harry continued on Evil Academy. In this demon school, a good student is one who engages in evil activities such as truancy, never showing up to class, and getting in fights with others. The student who participates the most in these kinds of activities is known as the honor student, while demons who are admirable by human standards are known as delinquents. It truly is a very unique world. Harry poked Pan on her belly which made her giggle as he paused for a minute before continuing on but that's just the nature of that world, everyone there is honest with their desires, and because healing and resurrection magic are very common, no one fears death or injury. In fact, the nurse of that school is so good with healing magic that even if you were to bring her ashes, she would have whoever the ashes belong to good as new in a few minutes. Harry then looked up at everyone and grinned but that's not the most important and special thing in that world. In fact in that world there are these techniques and systems that are very special. In Evil Academy you can reincarnate into an advanced form of your race and start from level 1 with bonuses, by the time you reached your previous level of power you would have surpassed any limits the old you would have had. You can also go inside items, weapons, and even gear and fight countless of powerful monsters and demons. The end result is that anything you choose to go into will also grow in power, the more you tread its inner world the more power you will obtain. In that world I was able to reincarnate over and over again until I became a dragon god, it was in evil academy where I reached my full potential as both a dragon and as the master of death. I was even able to power up my keyblades to their absolute limit as well. Everyone was utterly impressed with what Harry just told them and explained, sure the nether world sounds very dangerous but it also had a lot of benefits as well, and given how powerful Harry currently is it seems utterly worth it to go and try some of the things in that world. Goku smiled and swallowed his food all that sounds so exciting. Makes me kinda want to go and try that reincarnation thing and see if it can help me get stronger. Harry smiled it's possible you might unlock special abilities and skills along with awakening to hidden potential, plus if you're lucky you might have some kind of advance race that you can reincarnate into. Goku nodded then we should go and visit this world, Harry. Harry chuckled while Chi Chi, Goen, Goten, and even Piccolo grinned at Goku's enthusiasm. Harry then shook his head sorry Goku, but it's going to be a long while before I even try to connect my world to the nether world or another for that matter. Goku actually pouted which Harry easily ignored why? Dot. Harry grinned because the nether world is connected to other nether worlds in the same universe and there are some very powerful and terrifying beings out in that universe, I don't want to risk my world or any others by giving these beings away in. Kunu looked at Harry would these beings even put up a fight against you? Harry stopped playing with Pan and looked up maybe the overlords can but they have some real troublesome abilities and I'm talking Majin Buu levels of bullshit. Chi Chi cut Harry off before he could finish his sentence language. There are kids in the house Harry. Harry chuckled and corrected himself right. Well let's just say that even if I'm able to fight the real monsters of the netherworld, I wouldn't be able to do so while protecting the planet or anyone else. Milim and Kunu looked a bit surprised. Harry smiled at them the wards would make sure everyone we care about is safe but after a fight with those kinds of enemies, I would have to move us to a new planet or another world and that would just be annoying and too much work. Goku sighed but nodded, he might love fighting powerful foes but he wasn't going to risk Harry, his loved ones, and his home world just so he can fight. Harry noticed Goku's disappointed expression and smiled don't worry Goku, I'll think of some way for us to go to the nether world. I might even bring the rest of the guys and make it a bro trip. Goku smiled and even though he didn't know what a bro trip was, he was excited that Harry was willing to take him to the nether world. Harry then grins meanwhile take this time to perfect whatever you're working on right now because you might need it if you want to try reincarnation. Goku grinned and fist pumped, Piccolo suddenly spoke up add me to that trip as well Harry, I have hit a wall in my training and this reincarnation might be just what I need to break through that wall. Goen turned his head towards Videl who noticed him right away, she stared into his eyes for a few seconds and then smiled and gave him a nod, Go and grinned and turned his head towards Harry count me in as well. I might be able to make my goal of unlocking a new form no one has seen before true. Harry nodded sure, I'll let you guys know when I'm going to try to go to the nether world, but for now I want to relax. It's been very busy in my world lately. Everyone seemed curious about what Harry just said, so Harry decided to catch them up with everything he had been doing as of late in his world and all he's experienced so far. Dinner was long and eventually, everyone had to move to the living room so Harry could continue to speak about his life in his world, by the time he was done it was already very late and the young ones in the Sun family had fallen asleep. 
Pan was peacefully sleeping on Harry's lap and Goten who was sleeping on the floor and snoring was completely out for the count, the adults, however, were digesting everything Harry told them right now. Dash. Chi Chi sighed as the adults enjoyed some coffee except Piccolo who was just drinking water she looked up for a bit before speaking to Harry you've certainly been busy Harry, to think you would have a harem, lots of children and even your own temple and priestesses. Harry sweat dripped because the way Chi Chi summarized everything he had done recently, made it sound wild er. Uh. Chi Chi laughed and shook her head you don't have to give me any explanation Harry, as long as you're happy and make everyone in your life happy then you won't hear any complaints from me. Harry sighed, Chi Chi smiled in amusement and got up to pick Goten up from the floor it's time to put this lazy boy to bed, I'll be back soon. Harry nodded and watched as Chi Chi headed upstairs to put Goten to sleep, Goan, Videl, and Piccolo stood up, Goan smiled and spoke up it's time for us to go home as well. Harry nodded and stood up, he then walked up to Videl and handed Pan over to her, Videl giggled when she saw Pan scrunched up her eyebrows she really likes you, Harry. Harry just smiled at her. He then turned his head towards Piccolo meet me tomorrow on the lookout in the morning, it's time we do something to make sure no one abuses the Dragon Balls. Piccolo nodded, then they said their goodbyes to everyone, they even went upstairs to let Chi Chi know that they were leaving now meanwhile Goku turned his head towards Harry hey Harry I want to do something about Broly too, I don't want to leave him out there where Freezer can find him. You know how he is with grudges. Harry nodded well what do you have in mind? Goku grinned and then began to explain to Harry what he was thinking about doing for Broly and his friends, while Harry also had an idea about what he could do for Broly, Chi Lai, and Lemo. Dash. That night Chi Chi told Harry to use his own room in the sun house, he was surprised they had kept it the way he left it but Chi Chi just told him that there was no way they were going to do something with it, everyone knew he would be back some day after all. It made Harry happy to know that the Sun family still considered him family and had kept his room the way he left it, that night Kanu, Milan, and Harry slept in his room in the Sun house. But the next morning Harry had a few things to do, meanwhile, Goku was going to go see Bulma about what he wanted to have prepared for Broly and his friends, so both of them got up early along with Kanu and Milan. They had a big breakfast and then left to fulfill their plans, Harry. Milan, and Kanu headed straight to the lookout to do something about the Dragon Balls and to visit the Guardian of Earth. Dash. Harry and the girls decided to fly towards the lookout to see more about this world and since they weren't in a hurry they took their time cruising around the sky, to someone highly connected to nature like Kanu this world was amazing for her. It was so full of life that it made her feel rather excited all the time, though she was very surprised to see actual living dinosaurs and even saber toothed tigers roaming around. She asked Harry about them and he explained that they never died in this world, they were left to roam the planet, some evolved and became bigger and even more ferocious while others just stayed the same. It's because this world is filled with so many dangerous predators that there are not that many humans, not like their own world that is. Kanu of course noticed this as well, she had noticed that like Harry had told them before, this earth was bigger than the one in their universe and had fewer humans living on it. It was also obviously evident that the humans in this world didn't pollute their planet as much as the humans on their earth did, which explains why this earth was so much alive and full of senjutsu. It made Kanu wonder if there was a way to do the same with their earth, perhaps making the planet bigger might help everyone but it did raise the question as to how to do it and if it was even possible. She'll have to talk about it with Harry and see if it's both doable and worth doing so, humans weren't the most trustable of beings when it comes to things like these. But eventually, their little trip ended, and all three finally arrived at Corin's tower, both Kanu and Milim had learned of this place and about the hermit that leaves at the top of the tower. Harry seeing Corin's tower decided to pay a visit to the old cat and see how he was doing and perhaps get a couple of senzu beans so he can have them grow in Kyoto, he was sure Demeter will be able to make a good crop soon enough with a few. Having sent Subins in Kyoto would just add to their already impressive healing capabilities, plus he was also sure both Tsunade and Asia would have a field day with them as well. So with a smile on his face, Harry decided to fly up Corin's tower and visit the old cat hermit. Chapter 123, Chapter 123 Harry, Milan, and Kun arrived at the top of Corin's tower and landed inside. Harry smiled when he saw the smiling face of the old white cat hermit who was staring at him if it isn't Harry, it's been quite a while old friend. Harry chuckled at Corin and was about to greet the hermit but Milim suddenly blurred and appeared behind Corin. The old cat hermit jumped a bit in surprise but was unable to act when Milim suddenly moved so fast that he was unable to catch sight of her movements. 
This was how Corin found himself in the arms of the true demon Lord Millen, who wanted to pat the kitty because she found it cute and so Corin was suddenly assaulted by chin scratches and head pats. Corin looked so happy and content with the attention that Harry couldn't help but sweat dripped. Corin sighed in delight ah, yes. That's the spot purr. Kanu laughed at the image before her while Harry sighed and softly smiled at Milim. Everyone in the Potter household knows that Milim likes animals and she's always playing with the cat and dogs around Kyo. It's very common to find her under a pile of cats or dogs, something that happens very often and she's one of the few in the house who has actual normal pets in her room. Small cute things like a fish tank full of all kinds of colorful small fish, a very chubby hamster, and two small blue jays. It's quite the contrast between her image of an all-powerful dragonoid and true demon lord and who she really is, which is a cheerful and fun-loving girl but these little quirks just endeared her to everyone. She's also very prone to petting and playing with the yokai with animal traits, like Konko and even Kanu. In fact, she tends to pet and play around Sirius whenever he takes up his animagus form which was just amusing to Harry. Corin snapped out of his trance and then cleared his throat while Milam continued to pet him. Though Harry could tell that the old cat hermit was feeling a bit embarrassed despite trying to save face a hem. Sorry about that, I'm a sucker for a good head pat. Harry grinned at Corin, while Kanu giggled and nodded and it doesn't help that Milim is terrifyingly good at finding all those sweet spots in your ears or chin tilde. Harry laughed a little at the wisdom behind Kanu's words, she is the number one victim to Milim's expert head pats and scratches after all how have you been Master Corin? Corin smiled and looked up to Harry from his spot in Milam's arms I've been good lately, up until yesterday things have been quiet so I've been able to relax a bit and grow a few senzu beans, what happened yesterday? The whole planet shook a couple of times. Harry scratched his head ah, uh, well Freezer came around to get the Dragon Balls for something stupid and brought a very powerful Saiyan with him, you can guess the sort of mess that brought about. Corin nodded I see, there's always something like this happening here on earth nowadays. I take you were the one to resolve the problem right? Harry smiled at Corin and shook his head I only helped a little, it was Goku and Vegeta who ended up resolving the matter, but they had to fuse to do so. Corin raised an eyebrow and then hummed a bit I see. I bet that hit their pride a bit. Those two are not the type of people to do things like fusion, to face a powerful foe unless it's absolutely necessary. Harry nodded yeah, I bet they're both going to be training like maniacs soon but I understand the way they're feeling, once you face someone so strong. Something in you, just lights up that makes you want to push yourself even more. Corin chuckled and shook his head in amusement you've always been a hard worker Harry, even now when I am no longer able to feel your presence I bet you're still trying to get stronger somehow. Harry smiled at Corin well, I am but at the same time I'm also trying to help all of my loved ones get stronger as well, I learned not to take things for granted even in peaceful times. Corin nodded at Harry letting him know that he agreed with the sentiment behind his words I take as you came for a few senzu beans then? Harry gave Corin a grin letting the cat hermit know he guessed right just a few, I actually have a goddess of agriculture and her children, so I was hoping she can grow the senzu beans with ease. Corin grabbed his chin and pondered about this new information Harry just told him a goddess of agriculture you say? Just what sort of things have you been involving yourself with Harry? Harry laughed boy do I have a story for you, Master Corin. How about I tell you what I've been up to lately? Corin nodded and Harry began to tell his tale. Throughout the entire time Harry explained what he's been up to. Corin silently listened but inwardly he was pretty much impressed with everything Harry had done in his world and the improvements he made to so many lives. Once Harry finished telling his story, Corin sighed and looked up I have always known you were meant for big things Harry, even back then when you showed up with Goku as kids, I knew you were going to do amazing things and you have not disappointed. Corin chuckled in amusement while Harry scratched his cheek feeling a bit embarrassed I had great teachers along the way, including you Master Corin. Corin scoffed but continued to smile bar. You mastered what I was teaching you and Goku almost right away, I didn't teach you much but it does bring me happiness that you still consider this old cat your master. Harry shook his head training here and going up and down the tower actually helped me a lot. Thanks to all of that I was able to hone my speed, movement, and instincts, plus you've always helped us with the senzu beans as well. Corin chuckled and nodded well, being flattered like that certainly makes this old cat feel very good. Now give me a second, I'll go get you a few senzu beans and I'll even write you a few notes about how to grow them. Harry nodded and Corin jumped out of Milam's arm to head down to his chambers and to where he grows senzu beans. Milam pouted as Corin left all. I wanted to pet the kitty a little more. Harry chuckled and gave his pink-haired girlfriend a head pat which cheered her up, about twenty minutes later Corin came out of his chambers with a scroll and a little brown bag in his hands. 
Curran walked up to Harry and handed him the scroll and the little brown bag. Harry, of course, didn't waste any time putting them inside his inventory while also pulling out some big fish and dropping them in front of Corin who grinned ha ha ha. You always bring the best gifts, Harry. Harry chuckled and nodded of course. And I promise to use these Enzu beans for a good cause Master Corin. Corin nodded I know, now I'm sure you have other things to do, important things for that matter, so go on and leave this old cat to his silence. Harry smiled and nodded he then turned his head towards both Kanu and Milam who nodded at him, with that done they all then jumped out from the tower and took off flying towards Kami's lookout. But before that Milam gave Corin one more head pat causing the cat hermit to chuckle and watch Harry and the girls fly up towards the lookout, what a bunch of fun people. Now let's fry up those fish and eat. Dash. Harry and the girls flew straight up and reached Kami's lookout in a few minutes since they decided to take their time, but eventually. They reached it and landed on the floor of the lookout. The girls looked around in awe at how everything had these odd feelings of tranquility and mysticism. While they looked around they noticed a young Namekian and dark-skinned man that looked like a genie standing in the middle of the lookout and smiling at them. Harry smiled and immediately walked forward towards them while the girls followed him close behind. As soon as Harry got close to them he raised a hand in greeting Dend. Mr. Popo. How are you guys? Both Mr. Popo and Dent smiled and greeted Harry as well, the young Namekian walked up to Harry and suddenly smiled Harry. It's been so long since you've come to visit, me and Mr. Popo, we have been alright here in the lookout. Harry placed a hand on Dent's shoulder and gave him a smile I'm glad you guys have been good up here, you both should visit everyone more often you know? Dent chuckled and nodded we'll try but you know how it is, I have to keep an eye on everything, after all, I am the guardian of earth. Harry nodded but still smiled at Dent, the young Namekian has grown quite a bit since the last time Harry saw him, but he still remains the same kind kid he met when he and Goen saved him back on Namek. Harry then turned his head towards Mr. Popo and gave him a wide smile Mr. Popo. You look good despite never changing. Mr. Popo chuckled and nodded it is peaceful up here so I don't have much to stress over, unlike you and Goku. Harry laughed, Milim suddenly walked up to Mr. Popo and stared at him with her special eyes. Very interesting. You're a demigod and a very old one too. Milim widely smiled as Mr. Popper sweat drops at the sudden revelation of his true nature. Harry knew of course but he had kept silent all of these years out of respect, but Milim is another case altogether. Quite simply, Milim just doesn't care and it shows with how easily revealed Mr. Popper's true nature. Dend was of course surprised because he didn't seem to know. Kanu sighed and shook her head Milim, you can't just go around using your eyes and loudly reveal people's secrets, that's not nice. Milim sheepishly laughed a bit and scratched the back of her head uh sorry about that, it's an old habit of mine to always check everything about something I find cool or interesting. Mr. Popo just smiled and nodded it is good to check things and be prepared but do take moderation with abilities like those, I believe Harry has an ability like that, but I don't think he's even been known to tell the information he gets from that ability. Milim nodded and smiled while Harry just chuckled a bit, Milim is not someone anyone can scold or offer advice to, but something about Mr. Popo just allows everyone to feel calm around him, though he does know how to really get on your nerves at times. Harry turned his head towards Dend I take it Piccolo is here already and told you about what I plan on doing right? Dend nodded and then turned his head towards the temple in the middle of the lookout, Piccolo walked out of the temple with a grin on his face and began to walk towards Harry and Dend. Harry scoffed in amusement come on. You were totally waiting for someone to call out your name, weren't you? Piccolo just grinned at Harry which pretty much told him he was right causing the dragon god to shake his head in humor, Den then spoke up Mr. Piccolo told me you wanted to make sure the dragon balls are never misused again correct? Harry nodded yes. As of late people have been using them for stupid and quite selfish reasons, back in the day Goku and I had to deal with all kinds of enemies looking for the Dragon Balls for things like eternal life or world domination. It caused nothing but trouble and suffering. Dend nodded, he had heard from both Piccolo and Mr. Popo about all the trouble that has been caused by the Dragon Balls and a part of him was rather sad, that something so sacred to his people was the source of so much greed and evil at times. Harry went on I know Kami created the Dragon Balls to give the people of Earth hope and encourage acts of bravery after King Piccolo's reign, though he later regretted it and I don't blame him. It was only because of Goku that he decided to fix the Dragon Balls but I know he wouldn't have been happy with the way the Dragon Balls are being used nowadays, so I want to do something about it. Piccolo closed his eyes and silently agreed with Harry, he is Kami too now so he knows that if Kami was still around he would be very worried about how the Dragon Balls have been used lately.
Both Kami and Piccolo know that the Dragon Balls were necessary. He had already lost count of how many times they have been used for good which is why the Dragon Balls still exist and a new Namekian Guardian was brought. Mr. Popo also agreed as well, he and Kami were always worried about how the Dragon Balls were being used but in the end, they became a necessity so Kami was unable to do something about it. It also didn't help that Kami lacked the knowledge to actually do something about the Dragon Balls, after all, he was raised on Earth so there were huge gaps in his knowledge on everything that had to do with his Namekian knowledge. Dend nodded in agreement with everything Harry just said, yes, I agree that something must be done, in fact, I've been wanting to do some modifications and empower the dragon but, I didn't want to risk someone abusing an empowered Shinron. Harry nodded I see. Yeah that makes sense, in any case, I was thinking of adding safety features and some kind of protocol to prevent those with evil intent from using the dragon balls. Dent covered his mouth with his thumb and pointer finger as he pondered a bit about what Harry wanted to do, a few seconds later he nodded and then looked up to Harry yeah, that would be amazing actually, and with those safety measures and protocols in place, I can do my changes and empower the dragon a bit. Harry smiled good, now I'm going to need to see the dragon statue. Dent nodded and then turned his head towards Mr. Popo who nodded at him with a smile and then quickly left to go get the dragon statue, the young Namekian then turned his head back towards Harry what about the dragon balls? Are you going to need them too? Harry nodded, Kanu stepped forward and waved her tails a bit, and the seven dragon balls suddenly came out of her fluffy tail and floated in front of her we already have them, apparently Miss Bummer had collected them already and Milam and I took them back from Frieza. Den smiled and then slightly bowed to Kanu thank you for getting them back from Frieza, who knows what sort of evil wish he would have made. Harry sweat dripped since he knew exactly what Frieza wanted the dragon balls for. Piccolo grunted and then spoke what did Frieza want with the Dragon Balls anyways? Immortality. Harry sighed and tiredly rubbed his eyes, this reaction got a raised eyebrow from Piccolo and a confused stare from Dend, but it was Milim who answered that question apparently Frieza wanted to wish to become a bit taller I don't know why though, being small is awesome. Kanu nodded in agreement since she was also pretty short, meanwhile, Piccolo sweat dripped not really knowing what to say while Den's eye actually twitched in indignation. Harry sighed that's not any better than what Bummer wanted to wish for either, really all of this reckless misuse of the Dragon Balls has become something to really worry about. Piccolo crossed his arms and nodded while Den just tiredly sighed well at least you're doing something about it. Harry nodded I've wanted to do something about the Dragon Balls for a long while, but I lack the skills and abilities to actually do something about them, it's only because I've become a higher being that allows me to change things to a legendary rank item like Shinron and the Dragon Balls. Piccolo nodded while Den seemed a little confused at the classification that Harry gave to the Dragon Balls but he accepted anyways, Mr. Popo then came back pushing a cart. On the cart lay a very detailed dragon statue covered by a crystal case along with a crystal vase with a clear crystal liquid inside, Milam and Kanu stared at the statue in curiosity while Den, Piccolo, and Harry smiled. Mr. Popo soon finished approaching the group and then stopped right in front of them there we are, anything else you might need Harry? Harry smiled at Mr. Popo and shook his head no Mr. Popo, but thank you for getting this for me, now let's get this done shall we? Everyone nodded and watched as Harry approached the statue while Mr. Popo lifted the crystal case off of Shinron's statue, Harry stopped right in front of Shinron and fondly smiled. He softly reached for the statue's head and gently rubbed a finger on Shinron's head, it's good to see you Shinron, I had a lot of adventures with Goku and everyone because of you but, in all honesty, this was a great adventure. Everyone smiled as Harry began to reminisce about the adventures he had with all his friends in this world and their quests to get the Dragon Balls. Dash. Harry appeared in Mount Pozu after arriving in this world and met with a young Goku, the young Saiyan attacked Harry calling him a wizard for appearing out of nowhere, the irony of the situation did not escape him. But soon Goku found himself beaten down by Harry's far superior skills and fighting abilities, this fact made Goku very impressed and interested in Harry who at the same time was very curious about Goku's potential. The young Saiyan had adapted and even copied some of Harry's movements as they fought and that showed Harry the potential Goku has, so when Goku got up and immediately asked to be trained by him, Harry immediately agreed thinking that this would be a great way to improve his own martial arts as well. This was the beginning of the brotherhood between Goku-san and Harry Potter. Harry stayed with Goku, and together trained and sparred in an effort to get stronger. Harry used his knowledge of other worlds to help Goku get stronger, things like time dilation, gravity training, and even harsh environmental training as well. This helped the boy connect and learn about each other as they both put their lives on the line to get stronger.
well Goku more than Harry who was already used to this sort of training. But things changed when they both met Bulma briefs, that day both Goku and Harry were out and about getting something to eat when Goku was suddenly run over by a big vehicle. Harry's eyes widened in shock as he saw his friend fly through the sky until he crashed against the floor. He then saw a young blue-haired girl get out of the vehicle in a panic. After that surprising first meeting and after Harry had stopped Goku from attacking Bulma, she explained what she was doing in Mount Pozu and told them of the Dragon Balls. After that Harry, Goku, and Bulma set out and had countless adventures looking for the seven Dragon Balls and met all kinds of people, fought against all kinds of enemies, and learned a lot about this crazy crazy world, Harry had the time of his life. Dash. Harry grinned, what life? Harry chuckled and then shook his head in amusement, he then gathered his power over reality and everyone watched as Harry's body was suddenly engulfed with a red aura. Both Piccolo and Dender looked interested in what Harry was doing, they could feel something odd about the aura around him and were rather intrigued by it, but chose to wait and not interrupt them. Harry bent reality and changed the very concept of the wish-granting dragon known as Shenron. Suddenly Shenron's statue glowed white and after a few seconds, it stopped glowing. To the surprise of Piccolo, Mr. Popo, and Dent, Shinron's statue had changed and no longer seemed to have been made of white clay, instead it seemed to have made of sort of silver metal. Dent walked up to Harry and stared at Shinron's statue for a little bit, after inspecting it for a few moments he looked up and stared at Harry in surprise you made Shinron immortal. Harry smiled and nodded yes, now even if you died the Dragon Balls can still be used, you still have control over him like always but now we don't have to worry about the Dragon Balls ceasing to work because you might be taken down. Plus I also made sure that both Shinron and the Dragon Balls were indestructible, Piccolo Daimu did succeed in destroying Shinron once before. Piccolo walked up to Harry and stared at Shinron's statue I see, if he was able to do that then anyone calling themselves our enemy would be able to as well. That might have caused some problems, good idea Harry. Harry nodded that's not all I did. Now Shinron can now deny granting a wish and immediately leave if the person who summoned him has evil intentions, I of course keyed everyone we know into the formula I used so we can still use them as before, though if they summoned him for some silly or stupid reason Shinron will still leave. Dend, Piccolo, and Mr. Popper smiled liking the changes he made, Harry then made the Dragon Balls float towards him and snapped his fingers. His hand glowed red for a few seconds, at the same time the Dragon Balls glowed red as well and then Harry nodded to himself now I added a purifying effect on the Dragon Balls as well. Piccolo raised an eyebrow, hmm? what for? Harry turned his head towards Piccolo and grinned I noticed a while ago and I'm sure Kami did so as well but the Dragon Balls had been absorbing negative energy all of this time, I think it's because they've been used for a very long time now and most of the time for selfish and careless wishes to be made. That sort of things draws in negative energy and that is just inviting trouble. Piccolo sighed and nodded since he knew that Harry was completely correct. Dend frowned and was a bit angry about not having noticed that Harry however just smiled I'm done. With this no one will abuse the Dragon Balls, and Shenaron, you can do your thing now Dend. Dend smiled and nodded, he then grabbed the crystal vase beside Shenaron's statue and lifted it up. Soon after he tilted the water vase and let the liquid inside pour down on Shenaron's statue. A little bit after he stopped and put down the crystal vase back in its spot, he then raised both open palms over Shinron's statue and let out a bright energy that engulfed it. A few seconds later the light subsided and Dend nodded there we go, I empowered Shinron so he'll be able to have more power to grant wishes though it can only grant two still. Everyone nodded and Piccolo patted Dend's shoulder two wishes are enough, good job Dend the young Namikian smiled and nodded at Piccolo. Mr. Popo then carefully put the crystal case over Shinron's statue and began to put it away. Piccolo then turned his head towards Harry you said you wanted to go to Namek and do the same right? Harry nodded that's right plus, I think having the same safeguards on Poronga will be a good idea. A lot of beings know about the Dragon Balls already and Namek as well. Even though new Namek's location is a secret you never know. Piccolo nodded better be prepared than feel regret later huh? Harry nodded and turned his let's go now, I have to meet up with Bulma, and Goku later, I might as well have Bulma safeguard the Dragon Balls for now that she collected them. Piccolo nodded, soon after Harry, the girls, and Piccolo plus Dend left for Namek via Dark Corridor to also make sure no one abuses the Namekian Dragon Balls and Poranga. Dash. Later in the day, Goku arrived at Bulma's place and immediately began to tell her about his plan to help Broly and his friends. Goku felt that Broly wasn't evil but just used by others and him being so powerful he decided to give him a hand. 
That way he can have a very powerful sparring partner as well. So to him it was a win-win situation. Of course, Bama agreed to help Goku because she also felt bad for Broly so you want me to get him a capsule case with a house, food, supplies and some other things Broly might need correct? Goku nodded yeah. I spoke to Harry last night and he told me that the planet he sent Broly to is a very harsh place to live on, so I want to help him and his friends be able to live and survive on Vampa, plus this might also help keep Frieza away from them as well. Bama nodded yeah that makes sense plus Harry would help him. Broly is the sort of guy with a story that would make Harry want to make sure he lives comfortably. Goku tilted his head oh. Did Harry tell you about Broly's life? Bama nodded he told me and veg to the gist of it while he was here yesterday remember? Goku awkwardly chuckled ah. You're right. I forgot. Bama sighed and shook her head but still had a smile on her face you never change Goku Goku just laughed which made Bama huff a bit. She then decided to ask Goku about something where is Harry anyways? Goku smiled at Bama, and proceeded to explain he and his girlfriends left early in the morning to go do something to the Dragon Bulls and Shinron. I don't remember what exactly since I wasn't paying attention, but I think it was something about making sure no one abuses the Dragon Bulls again. Bama sweat dripped a bit because she was one of the people who have been abusing the Dragon Bulls but didn't say anything about it. Suddenly a pillar of darkness sprouted from the ground, and out of it stepped out Harry, Kanu, and Milim. Both Bama and Goku smiled and Harry waved at them hey guys. We're back. Kanu and Milam walked up to Bama and smiled. Bama smiled at the girls are you guys coming back from the lookout? Milam and Kanu shook their head. Milam then excitedly began to bounce where she stood oh. We went to Namek and met all of the Namekians. It's so cool to visit another planet and meet more aliens tilde. Bama smiled at Milam while Kanu nodded I quite like the Namekians, they're very peaceful and kind people. Goku turned his head towards Harry oh? You went to Namek too? Harry nodded yeah, I thought it was for the best to make sure that the Namekian Dragon Bulls aren't abused either, we even went with Dent and Piccolo so they could hang out with the Namekians as well. Goku grinned I bet Piccolo and Dent enjoyed that huh? Harry chuckled well you know how Piccolo is, most of the time he spent it being grumpy but he had a smile on his face whenever he spoke to any Namekian, Dent had the time of his life though. Goku cheerfully smiled while Harry turned his head towards Bama hey Bama? Bama turned her head towards Harry yeah? Harry walked up to Bama can we leave the Dragon Bulls with you, you already collected them and you never know when we might need them so it's best to keep them nearby. Bama nodded sure I don't mind. Harry turned his head towards Kanu who had grabbed the Dragon Bulls before they left for Namek and put them away in her tails again, Kanu smiled and nodded to Harry. With a little flick of her tails, the seven dragon balls suddenly came out of her fluffy tails and floated towards Bama who grabbed them well. Aren't those tails convenient? Kanu grinned and nodded it's like having extra pockets and you know what they say, women love having a lot of pockets tilde. Bama laughed and nodded. She then quickly locked the dragon balls in a safe in her lab which was where they were right now, Bama came back a few minutes later and Harry walked up to her. Bama raised an eyebrow but let Harry do whatever he wanted since she trusted him. Harry placed a hand on her head, and then Bama's body was suddenly engulfed with a bright light. The light soon dissipated and Bama looked around confused as to what happened. Harry smiled and then pulled his hand away from Bama's head there I made you have eternal youth and even gave you some bonuses because you're my friend. Harry winked at Bama who looked up at him, she then raised her hand a small fireball materialized in the palm of her hand oh. You gave me magic too. Harry nodded among other things but this will also help you a bit. I'm still pretty pissed Beerus slapped you that day. This way you can protect yourself at least a little bit. Bama nodded and brightly smiled at Harry thank you, Harry. You're the best. Harry just smiled and suddenly Goku approached Bama that's great Bama. How about we have a little fight? A little sparring will help you get a hang of your new powers. Bama growled no way. Are you stupid? You will kill me if I were to fight you. Goku laughed ah come on. It will be fun plus Harry made you immortal. Bummer shook her head no way, and he gave me eternal youth idiot. Not immortality, that's two completely different things. Harry chuckled as he watched his two friends bicker like siblings, in all truth this is how things are between them, all three consider each other brother and sister. Though Bummer was wrong about him not giving her immortality, sure he did give her eternal youth but to do so he had to change her into something supernatural. So yeah, she's practically still somewhat human, but she was also a supernatural being that will stay alive for a long time and was practically immortal because Harry gave her all sorts of skills that will make sure she survives pretty much anything. But he decided to keep that a secret and let her find out on her own. 
He did the same for Chi Chi last night in secret as well. He was sure it wouldn't take too long for both of them to notice all the changes, but for now, he'll just spend time with everyone and visit some old friends now that he was back in this world guys relax would you? Both Bulma and Goku stopped arguing and turned their heads towards Harry, Bulma sighed and shook her head sorry Harry but this idiot really knows how to get on my last nerves. Goku sheepishly laughed while Harry just chuckled no worries, this is just the norm with you both. Goku smiled and Bulma rolled her eyes but still smiled showing that she was amused what are you going to do now Harry? Are you going back to your world? Harry shook his head no, now that I'm here I might as well visit everyone and check how they're doing and spend some time with them. Goku grinned that actually sounds like fun. Who are you going to visit first? Harry hummed and bit and pondered about who to visit first I think I'll visit Master Roshi first and see how the old timer is doing, he's all by himself now that Krillin and 18 moved to the city. Goku smiled and nodded oh, then I'll go with you too. We might have some adventures along the way. Harry nodded and seemed excited about having an adventure, something that Kanu and Milim noticed, and couldn't help but to smile seeing Harry being so happy and excited. Chapter 124, Chapter 124 Harry, the girls, and Goku hung out with Bulma as she got everything ready that Goku wanted for Broly, as she prepared everything Goku asked for, they all talked about more casual stuff. Goku, of course, talked about his training and how he and Vegeta were thinking of going to Beerus Planet to train with Weiss for a while, Bulma huffed at the fact that her husband was going off on his own again but still had a small smile on her face nonetheless, she herself spoke about how she was working on some other small projects for Capsule Corp and Harry even helped her with some designs, Harry told them about his kids and niece Morgan. Bulma found the little girls adorable and wanted to meet them, especially Morgan who seemed to be a little genius in the making, Goku wanted to fight them causing Harry to laugh and tell him that they would gang up on him and kick his ass. That made everyone chuckle and laugh at the mental image of the girls jumping Goku, Kanu and Milim knew how dangerous the girls were so even though they were laughing they were seriously hoping Goku wouldn't pick a fight with them. No one would save him from the ass kicking he would get from the adorable squad, of course, Harry also told them about his demigod kids and proudly told them what they were doing in Kyoto. Goku smiled and was excited at how the kids trained to get stronger every day and about all the unique abilities they have, Bulma was happy that Harry takes care of the kids and makes sure they have everything they need. Both of them knew about the harsh life they lived thanks to Harry telling them about it and felt bad about what the demigod kids went through, both Goku and Bulma are parents and even though their kids were super powerful they still worry about them. Though hearing how Harry was handling being a father made Goku think that he needed to spend more time with his sons and granddaughter, perhaps going on vacation was something he should think about doing for the whole family. Eventually, Bra woke up from her nap and since Bulma was busy, Harry went to pick her up from her crib which was in Bulma's lab. Bra smiled the moment she saw Harry and giggled when he picked her up oh the little Saiyan princess. How is my favorite briefs doing after her nap? Bra laughed and clapped her hands, Harry chuckled while Bulma stopped what she was doing hey. What do you mean your favorite briefs? What about me you cold bloody lizard? Harry chuckled and shook his head first of all dragons aren't cold blooded and second. Harry lifted Bra up to Bulma's face look at this face and tell me she doesn't immediately become your favorite of your family? Dot. Bulma deadpanned at Harry for a good few moments but Harry refused to give up, Bulma suddenly sighed fine, you do make a good point. This little one does have both Veg2 and Beerus wrapped around her little finger, it's kinda scary now that I think about it. Everyone laughed, Milim then grinned it reminds me of Hope and Morgan ever since they were born, those two little girls have had everyone in the pot a household wrapped around their fingers, well except Jean and Pepper. Kanu nodded well someone has to be the strict parent in because no one can say no to them, especially Harry, those two had to lay down the law. Harry laughed we're lucky both Hope and Morgan are good girls, they could easily take over the world if they wanted. Everyone shared a good laugh except Bra who looked somewhat confused and curious about what was going on, eventually, some time passed, and Bulma finally finished preparing everything for Broly and his friends. Harry and Goku decided to go to Vampa right away and hand everything to them, so they wouldn't have any difficulties living on such a harsh planet while the girls stayed and hung out with Bulma. So both Harry and Goku immediately teleported to Vampa to meet with the big Saiyan and his friends. Dash. On Vampa, both Chi-Lai and Lemo arrived not too long ago to stay with Broly, who was very much confused as to what had happened and how he ended up back in Vampa. So both Chi-Lai and Lemo explained to Broly how he was defeated and about to be killed, when Harry saved his life by teleporting him back to Vampa, Broly of course was very confused as to who Harry was. 
Chi Lai described him to Broly and the big Saiyan immediately recognized him as the strange and very powerful guy who he fought before the other Saiyan arrived. He didn't know why but Broly knew he was a good guy, especially with the way he spoke to him and even helped him snap out of his berserker state for a few seconds, he really had a lot of fun fighting Harry even though he knew he was no match to him. The next morning after helping Chi Lai and Lemo bring out everything they brought for their stay on Vampa, it became very clear that they were going to need a good supply of food because what they brought with them wouldn't last long. So Chi Lai asked Broly to get what he would usually eat on this planet, and Broly immediately left to go hunt some of the insect creatures that live on Vampa. After a while, Broly came back and brought a horn of a beetle he would eat with his father, and snapped it open so Chi Lai and Lemo could try it. Chi Lai winced as she saw the gooey inside of the beetle horn, it really didn't seem appetizing but she still needed to try it, so she reached over with a finger and poked the inside, after her finger collected some of the gooey liquid she brought it to her face you're kidding, right? This is what you've been eating? Broly nodded and Chi Lai then reluctantly put her finger on her mouth to taste the gooey liquid, she immediately grimaced at the taste w well it's bitter, but it's better than starving to death. I guess. Chi Lai turned her head towards Lemo and frowned. Lemo grunted and then walked up to the beetle horn and also poked the gooey liquid to give it to dry, but he immediately regretted it play. See count me out. Chi Lai sighed don't ask for too much. We won't last even 50 days on just the food we brought with us. Harry and Gok arrived just outside the cave where Broly, Chi Lai, and Lemo were taking shelter. Broly immediately sensed Goku and stood up someone is here. Both Goku and Harry began to walk into the cave while both Chi Lai and Lemo turned their heads toward the cave's entrance in confusion huh? Suddenly Goku decided to call out to them hey can we come in? Harry sighed at his friend's way of talking to them Goku, you're going to scare them. Goku just chuckled making Harry shake his head in amusement, meanwhile, Lemo and Chi Lai panicked a bit not knowing what to do, Lemo even tried to draw his gun only to remember he sold it for money so they could buy more food. Goku and Harry walked further inside. Goku grinned at everyone while Harry waved to the group of startled aliens. Harry smiled and then spoke up to them hey guys, looks like you guys caught up to Broly pretty quick. Goku tilted his head but then remembered that Harry talked about these guys are. You must be Lemo and Chi Lai right? Dot. Chi Lai seemed to get a bit nervous you're the Saiyan from E Earth and the guy who helped Broly. Goku smiled while Harry nodded to confirm what Chi Lai just said. Lemo then raised a small hammer at both Harry and Goku what are you both doing here? Goku ignored Lemo's question and raised a hand in greeting Broly who looked confused, Harry raised an eyebrow at Lemo finding it funny that he was wielding a small hammer to protect himself from them. Goku smiled and then turned his head towards Chi Lai and Lemo you're both Broly's friends right? Harry told me how you wanted to save Broly and how you asked him to send him back to this planet. But Lemo didn't seem in the mood to be friendly and suddenly raised his voice at Goku I asked you what you're both doing here? However both Goku and Harry just smiled. Goku then decided to try and calm things down a bit now don't lose your temper, we're not here to fight okay? Chi Lai however didn't seem too sure but decided to be more civil, especially because Harry had helped Broly then why are you guys here then? Goku pointed his thumb towards Harry who just waved at everyone Harry told me that this planet was awful, so I brought you some stuff Goku raised the book bag Bulma had given him with everything he asked for. Chi Lai didn't want to trust Goku but one look at Harry who smiled and nodded at her made her calm down. We didn't ask you to help us, are you trying to trick us? Goku just laughed a bit and just shook his head, he then reached inside the book bag and took out a capsule case I asked a friend of mine named Bulma, and got this for you. Goku then opened the case and took out one of the three capsules inside, he then smiled and got ready to throw it ok now give me some space ok? Broly, Chi Lai, and Lemo stepped back. Goku then pushed the button on the capsule and threw it in a big empty spot inside the cave, the capsule exploded and filled the cave with smoke for a little bit. The smoke dissipated a few seconds later and revealed a house to everyone, Chi Lai and Lemo were both surprised while Broly tilted his head in confusion. Chi Lai and Lemo ran to the house in disbelief while Goku told them a few things there's food, water, and a bunch of other stuff inside the house. Chi Lai and Lemo opened the house and were awed at the modern and cozy look of the inside, it was fully furnished and even though it was a small house it was big enough for the three of them. Harry then walked up to everyone and took a bag from his inventory, he then opened it and took out three gels to show to Chi Lai, Lemo, and Broly this bag is filled with these, these gels are magical in nature and can heal, restore energy, or both. 
Harry smiled at how perplexed the alien looked but continued to explain the red one is an apple gel and it will heal you, the orange one is an orange gel and it will restore energy or get rid of fatigue and the reddish violet one is a melange gel and it both heals and restores energy. Harry then put them back in the bag use these only when you're in trouble or in emergencies, I gave you quite a bit but you don't want to risk running out too soon. Sheila crossed her arms and sighed why are you guys helping us, just what are you hoping to accomplish? Harry chuckled you're not very trusting are you? Sheila just stared at Harry who just smiled that's fine, that's actually a very smart way to live but we just want you guys to live healthily. Goku grinned you know I was so sure of my strength but then Broly showed up and showed me I still have a long way to go, and he's a Saiyan too. I think he might be stronger than Beerus actually. Beerus is this very powerful god. Harry grinned knowing that Beerus probably just sneezed because Goku was talking about him well with a bit of training Broly would definitely be stronger than Beerus, though he still has a lot to learn before that. Goku laughed and nodded in any case, it would be a real shame for someone so incredible, to up and die right? Goku grinned and turned his head towards Broly who stared at him in silence until he also smiled at him in return. Goku then turned around and began to walk away well. Anyways take care of yourselves, Harry are you staying or coming? Harry grinned at Goku you go ahead, I have some things to talk to these guys about, I'll catch up soon. Goku nodded and then turned his head towards Broly, Chilai, and Lemo. Lemo however was surprised by one little detail huh? There's no ship, how did you get here? Harry decided to explain well Goku has a technique that allows him to teleport to any energy signature so he can pretty much find anyone, anywhere. Goku smiled and nodded it is a technique called instant transmission. Chilai sighed I don't understand anything you both are telling us. Harry chuckled and Goku just grinned hey do you geese mind if I visit again? Chilai shrugged and shook her head in annoyance it's not like we can stop you, so do whatever you want. Goku laughed and scratched his cheek pretty much confirming that he would come over anyways I just want to fight Broly once in a while. Both Chilai and Lemo seemed very surprised by what Goku wanted to do, Goku however just continued speaking there are also some things I'd like to teach him too. Broly looked surprised but smiled feeling a bit excited about learning new stuff, Chilai sighed and shook her head you sure seemed pretty crazy you know? Goku tilted his head in confusion how come? Chilai just grinned at Goku well, anyway, I should offer my gratitude so thank you Chilai raised a hand and did a circle with her fingers while winking. Goku smiled and looked up at Broly yeah, by now, I'll be back later. Lemo crossed his arms and sighed we might not be here when you do though. Goku nodded it's fine like Harry said as long as you're not too far away I can find you Goku began to walk away. But Chilai wanted to ask one more question hey, what's your name? Goku turned his head towards Chilai and grinned I'm son Goku and also Kakarot with that said Goku teleported away. Harry raised an eyebrow but smiled nonetheless huh? That's the first time I've heard him introduce himself as Kakarot, only Vegeta uses that name though. Harry then turned his head towards Chilai, Lemo, and Broly now I have a few offers for you guys, as you guys might have guessed Frizu is more than likely aware that you three are on this planet and I know him well enough to know that he can hold a grudge with a passion, you guys can bet that he'll eventually come here to get back at you guys. All three of them nodded, Chilai sighed yeah. We guessed as much, but staying with Broly should keep us safe for a while right? Lemo nodded in agreement while Broly tilted his head. Harry shook his head that would be a good plan if Broly knew how to control all of that power Harry turned his head towards Broly do you remember how to turn into a Super Saiyan? Broly looked down and seemed confused Super Saiyan? Harry smiled and nodded I thought as much, you don't remember much of our fight and the form you took right? Broly shook his head, while Lemo crossed his arms Broly here seems to forget whatever happens when he's in that wild state of his. Broly nodded I. I remember you, what you said and that you understood me. Harry nodded to confirm what Broly just said, I have a special ocular ability, with it, I can view a person's strengths, abilities, weaknesses, and even part of their story. Chi Lai frowned and then hummed like a super scout eh huh? Harry chuckled at the comparison but nodded to Chi Lai something like that yes, with it I saw what happened to you Broly. What your father put you through and how terrified King Vegeta was when he found out about you, he sent you to this planet to die. Broly nodded having heard about this from his further before. Harry turned around and looked around where they were you grew up on this planet's harsh environment, abused by your father and practically alone. I can understand what you must have felt, I went through something similar in my childhood as well. Broly softly smiled and nodded while Lemo and Chilai were surprised, Chilai then remembered how easily Harry fought off Broly but you're so strong. 
Harry turned back to the group and smiled I wasn't always this strong. I was actually very weak when I was a kid just like every other mortal out there, but someone very special to me saved me and gave me the tools to become as powerful as I am now. The three aliens nodded and understood Harry a bit more now. They now knew he was a genuinely good guy. Chile grinned at Harry so you said you have some offers for us right? Harry chuckled and nodded yes, I would like to help Broly get the means to control his overwhelming power, it would be too dangerous to let him stay as he is, not knowing when he might lose control, as you saw he is quite capable of destroying even planets. Broly nodded because he didn't like losing control when he fights, Chile and Lemo nodded as well they didn't like it but Harry had a good point, Broly is too dangerous when he loses control. Harry then continued on second. I can help you guys stay hidden here in Vamp and even make this planet more comfortable to live on. All three were surprised by this offer. They couldn't even begin to think of how Harry could accomplish what he just told them. Harry smiled and then went on and third, you guys can come with me to my world and live within a city named Neo Kyoto. There you will be safe and can live your lives in peace. The third option really interested all three of them but something about what Harry said caught their attention. Lemo decided to ask about it your world? Are you not from Earth? Harry shook his head well it's a bit hard to explain but I am from Earth just not the one from this universe. Chile scrunched up her eyebrows, while Broly tilted his head feeling completely lost, Lemo, however, widen his eyes you're from another universe. Chile turned her head towards Lemo what do you mean old man? Lemo looked down and seemed to be pondering about something when Frieza returned he told some of the high officials in his army about the other universes and how he fought to protect ours, word about it spread around his army but most of us didn't believe it. Harry grinned and nodded to Lemo Frieza was talking about the tournament of power, but yes other universes exist and there's even more out there besides the ones connected to this one. Lemo nodded and seemed to have understood but Chile scratched her head I don't really get it but you're really from very far from here right? Harry nodded and Chile hummed for a little bit so if we take your offer of going to your world, that would mean leaving everything we know and starting from scratch right? Harry once again nodded not exactly from scratch since I would make sure all of you have everything you need to live in peace but yes, that's the gist of it. Chile nodded and turned her head towards Lemo and Broly who smiled at her letting her know that, they were leaving the decision to her can we think about it for a while? That's a very big decision to make after all. Harry smiled sure take your time, in the meanwhile how about we go for the second offer? Lemo tilted his head that's the one about making Vampa more comfortable to live on and hiding it from Freezer, right? Harry nodded to Lemo who rubbed his chin not going to lie, I am curious about how you're going to do that but yeah let's do that. Harry grinned and pointed a thumb over his chest leave it to me. I have all kinds of abilities perfect for things like this, first let's hide this planet from Freezer and pretty much everyone else. Harry took out his elder wand and then proceeded to wave it in a very intricate matter, he looked like he was directing an orchestra but what really had everyone's attention was the magic rolling of his body. Broly, Chile, and Lemo didn't know what they were seeing right now was magic, all they could see and feel was the wave of transparent energy around Harry and the pressure it gave off. After a few minutes later Harry finished casting the Fidelius charm and chose himself as the secret keeper, he covered the entire planet I'd known as Vampa with the charm and then told the location to Lemo, Chile, and Broly who panicked a bit when Vampa disappeared and all of them seemed to be standing in space. Though they calmed down after Harry revealed the secret again and found themselves back in Vampa, the entire experience did surprise and scare them a bit though. Lemo decided to ask about it what did you do? Harry chuckled a bit sorry for the scare guys, I didn't think that would happen and what I did is use a spell known as the Fidelius charm to hide the location and the fact that Vamp exists within my soul, now no one can even remember Vamp exist without me telling them its location. Lemo's eyes widen in shock upon hearing the effect of what Harry just did, Chi Lai frowned and then spoke up what about computers and electronics? Vampa is a registered and a semi-well-known planet. Harry nodded well the spell makes it as if Vampa never existed so all records of it just disappear and that goes double for when I'm the one using the spell so you don't have to worry, you're safe now. Chile and Lemo sighed in relief since they were very worried about Frieza finding them and coming after them, Broly smiled happy that his friends were safe now. Harry then sat down on the floor and took a big breath, he then exhaled and got ready to do something else now let's make this planet more comfortable for you guys. Now don't move okay? Harry closed his eyes and then clapped his hands together, Broly, Chile, and Lemo watched Harry meditate for a few seconds before a few blue colored portals opened all around him. Through the portal they could see some unknown planets full of plant life, meanwhile, Harry began to draw in the natural energy from the planets he opened portals to and began to combine it with his chakra. 
The moment he arrived at Vampa Harry immediately knew why it had such a harsh and unforgiving environment, as a planetoid Vampa lacked ley lines and was only self-sustained by its core. This made it hard for life to thrive on this small planet and only the hardier of creatures native to Vampa could survive here. Broly survived because he's a Saiyan and whatever doesn't kill a Saiyan makes it stronger. But Chilai and Lemo were different and they would find it very hard to survive here, so to help them Harry had to change the very makeup of Vampa. First, he opened portals to far off worlds full of life to absorb natural energy. Then he entered Sage Mode and used Senjutsu to push the natural energy into the planet and create a system of ley lines for Vampa and connect them to its core. He then began to empower the ley lines and core with natural energy. This revitalized Vampa and stabilized it. Having done that Harry then combined his Mokaton and his power over reality to make the planet come to full life. The effects were instantaneous, Broly, Chilai, and Lemo could only watch and gape in amazement as giant trees sprouted all over the place. In fact, all kinds of trees and plant life began to grow at an accelerated pace all around the planet. Lakes suddenly sprung out from the very ground and it even began to rain, something Broly had never seen before here on Vampa, he didn't even know what water was until Chilai gave him some. Meanwhile, Harry was using his power of reality, to make sure the creatures and animals on Vampa adapted and were able to survive in their new environments. Harry had created an entirely new ecosystem for the planetoid and it left Chilai and Lemo in awe, they now know that Harry was not only powerful but also capable of doing some very amazing things. Broly however was too busy catching rain with his mouth and enjoying the taste of water. Harry then finally finished changing Vampa to make it more livable for his new friends. He closed the portals and then released all of the natural energy he collected back into the planet itself further feeding to the new life on it. Harry then opened his eyes and stood up there we go, now you guys don't have to worry about running out of water and food, as you can see there are lakes and it rains on Vampa now plus I made sure there were plenty of fruit trees on the planet as well. Lemo and Chilai gaped at Harry and didn't know what to say, Broly, however, was really happy about the changes and was looking around everywhere with curiosity. He then turned towards Harry and smiled at him, Harry returned his smile and chuckled at the faces Chilai and Lemo were giving him. Well that's it for making the planet more comfortable for you guys, now let's help Broly control his power. Chilai and Lemo stopped gaping and turned their heads towards Broly, Chilai then worriedly frowned hey what are you going to do to Broly? It's not going to hurt him right? Harry knew that Chilai was really worried about Broly and he couldn't blame her, not after he had seen how Broly's father kept him under control no, it's not going to hurt, I'm just going to give him a useful ability that will help him control his power, that way he won't lose control. Harry grinned and extended a hand towards Broly, Broly stared at the hand for a few seconds but then smiled and reached over to grasp Harry's hand. Harry then gave Broly the passive skill perfect control and Broly immediately felt something click within him. Harry let go of Broly's hand and grinned at Broly there you go big guy. Now you can use all of that power without going berserk. Boy is Goku going to be surprised when he fights you again. Harry laughed already wanting to see Goku's face when he fights Broly only to get his butt kicked when Broly goes all out, while still in control of his mind. Broly smiled at Harry, he didn't know why he was smiling but whatever it was seemed to be very fun, either way. He was very grateful to Harry for all the help he has given not only him but Chilai and Lemo as well thank you. Harry. Harry nodded no problem big guy, now you guys can live in peace on this planet and if you want whenever you make a decision about going to my world, just pray with my name and I'll hear you. Chilai raised an eyebrow you make it sound like you're some kind of god or something. Harry chuckled and then grinned at Chilai, Lemo, and Broly well something like that, in any case, it's time for me to go, so take care guys. Harry raised a hand and waved at everyone before vanishing, Broly smiled while Lemo and Chilai looked on perplexed, Chilai sighed and then looked around at all the new nature around Vampa now I really want to know who Harry really is. Lemo nodded since he himself was also very curious meanwhile Broly just looked up he's very powerful. But nice. Both Chilai and Lemo smiled at Broly and agreed with him, sure Harry was very scary and powerful but they also knew he was a very chill guy and that made them trust him, perhaps they should take him up on his offer later. Dash. Harry came back to Bummer's lab and told everyone what he did for Broly and his friends, Goku was ordered what Harry can do now while Bummer was really intrigued. She asked about his newest abilities and Harry told her about the infinite stones and the power he received from them, of course, Bummer was very stunned about Harry having the powers of the universe and was quite intrigued about the capabilities of such power. Harry smiled and told her that he can practically rewrite history if he wanted to, he can quite frankly create or destroy universes now. 
Practically he was the same kind of deity Zeno-Samu is. Goku was more interested in what the infinite stones tasted like and wanted to try them, Harry chuckled while Bulma sighed and shook her head while calling Goku an idiot. After that conversation, Harry along with Kanu and Milam decided to visit Master Roshi and see how the old man was doing, now that Krillin moved out with Eighteen and her daughter Marin. So after saying their goodbyes to Bulma and with Goku teleporting directly to the Kame house to wait for them there and to let Master Roshi know that they were coming for a visit, Harry, Milim, and Kanu took off flying towards the Kame house. They took their time getting there and flew over the sea while watching all sorts of underwater creatures swimming in the water, some were even enormous in size and it surprised both Milim and Kanu. At some point Milim saw something under the water and then dived into the sea, a few seconds later she came out holding a very familiar purple-haired mermaid in her arms. The mermaid squeaked in surprise at being out of the water so suddenly and grabbed hold of Milim tightly in fright, meanwhile, Milim grinned and asked Harry if they could keep her. Harry raised an eyebrow at Milim's request and where are you going to keep her? She not a pet you know? Milim smiled or, but Harry, she's cool, and we don't have mermaids in Kyoto. I'll make her a big fish tank in my room with a big house inside. Harry and Kanu sweat dripped at the fact that Milim wanted to keep the mermaid in her room like she was a goldfish or something. The mermaid looked up and softly spoke um. I have a home and family here though. Milim pouted at the mermaid be but. I would feed you and play with you. I'll even buy you all kinds of cool stuff too. Harry sighed but smiled at Milim. The little true demon lord really liked keeping pets though she tends to go overboard sometimes. The mermaid didn't get mad or anything, she just smiled that sounds very nice but I rather stay with my family. Milim sadly smiled and then went back inside the water and let go of the mermaid. The mermaid smiled and then waved at everyone before diving back into the water. Milim flew up and sighed, Harry smiled at his girlfriend and then gave her a head pat to cheer her up, which worked because Milim brightly smiled right away it's okay Milim, I'm sure there are mermaids in our world, we can get one of those or something. Milim nodded and smiled, Kanu giggled at the silliness of it all and shook her head, only Milim would think of getting a mermaid and keeping her as a pet. After all of that, they took off flying again and headed over to the Kame house once again, this time however they made sure to distract Milim to make sure she wouldn't pick up anything else. Soon they were able to see the island where the Kame house stood and just outside, looking over towards them, was the world's famous turtle hermit himself, Master Roshi who had a smile on his face. Chapter 125, Chapter 125 Harry, Kanu, and Milim arrived on the island right in front of Master Roshi, Harry immediately raised a hand in greeting which made the old man known as Roshi chuckle gramps. Harry walked over to Master Roshi and brightly smiled at him, Master Roshi looked up at his student and then nodded to himself you look good Harry, healthy and happy. Harry grinned and nodded yeah, I have a great life Master Roshi and many people I care about as well. Harry turned his head towards Milim and Kanu who smiled at him, Master Roshi turned his head to see the girls oh, looks like one of my students was able to get a harem, I don't know if I should be jealous or proud. Harry laughed at Master Roshi's comments still a perverted old man huh? Master Roshi chuckled old habits I'm afraid, now why don't we go inside so we can speak in peace and so you can introduce your girls to me, Goku is already inside and eating through my fridge. Harry laughed and followed Master Roshi back inside, Milam and Kanu giggled at how excited Harry seemed about being around Master Roshi. Milam looked around the beach for a second but shortly after, both she and Kanu followed Harry and Master Roshi into the Kame house, Milam, however, couldn't help but comment living in a house on a small island huh? I got to say, Master Roshi got style. Kanu giggled and nodded as she watched the back of the old master of Harry, a short bald man with a long white beard while wearing sunglasses he certainly has the look of a hermit. I wonder why hermits like to wear sunglasses? Old man Sun Wukong wears some all the time. Milam shrugged who knows but it does make them look cool though. Kanu nodded and the group of four went inside the Kame house so they could speak in peace, everyone was in a happy mood. Dash. The group found Goku eating some food while speaking to a short pig about something. Master Roshi and Harry seemed completely unfazed by the weirdness of the scene before them. But Kanu and Milam looked at the pig in confusion, Kanu's ears twitched as she realized something oh. You're one of those beastmen I heard about from Goantilda. The pig heard Kanu and turned his head towards her and smiled oh, hey there. Goku was just telling me about Harry and his girlfriend, pretty crazy stuff, my name is Oolong by the way. Kanu smiled and bowed a little in greeting. She then looked up towards Oolong it is nice to meet you Miss Trulong, I'm Kanu and my friend beside me is Milim. 
Milam waved at Oolong and grinned hello. It's nice to meet you. You look really delicious Mr. Pig. Oolong sweat dripped and then turned his head towards Harry she's not going to eat me right Harry, because she's giving me some serious hungry eyes. Harry turned his head towards Milam and laughed a little when she saw her practically salivating while staring at Oolong Milam, don't eat my friend Oolong okay? He might be a pig but he's a cool guy. Milam pouted a bit but nodded, then she saw a big brown sea turtle and immediately went to go pet it, Harry and Kanu smiled and shook their heads in amusement. Master Roshi laughed she's like a hurricane isn't she Harry? Harry nodded you have no idea Master Roshi but we all love her for it. Everyone watched and Milim sat on Turtle's back and gave him plenty of head pats, soon after everyone took a seat around the table in Master Roshi's living room to talk. Harry then told Master Roshi about his world, Neo Kyoto, and about the yokai faction, he even told him about his big chaotic family. Meanwhile, Master Roshi, Oolong, and Turtle listened to everything Harry told them. Goku who had already heard all this just continued to eat while Harry continued to speak, this way Harry was able to tell everything he wanted to Master Roshi uninterrupted. After Harry finished his tale Master Roshi began to stroke his beard amazing, this world is already crazy and full of surprises but to think that yours would be almost the same. Harry nodded I thought so too. There are quite a few similarities between this world to mine, both have supernatural entities, powerful humans, and magical stuff all over the world. Master Roshi agreed with Harry yeah I noticed that during you telling me about your home world, the only glaring difference between the two is the fact that the supernatural and the normal world live separately in your world, but here, in this one? It's pretty much well known knowledge that magic and supernatural entities exist. Kanu nodded yeah I noticed it too, plus humans here seem desensitized about supernatural phenomena happening right in front of their eyes. Master Roshi nodded well a lot has happened in this world. Very big and dangerous things occurred and even though Goku and the rest solved those problems, they couldn't keep them a secret so humanity got to experience some really dangerous stuff. Harry and Goku nodded since they were deeply involved in everything that has happened, with Vegeta's and Nappa's arrival, a whole city was destroyed as soon as they showed up. Cell, who absorbed thousands just to become stronger enough to absorb androids 17 and 18, then proceeded to kill thousands more as he caused nothing but destruction. And then Buu. He had single-handedly killed everyone on Earth and even threatened the afterlife as well, those situations were some of the most dangerous and crazy that Goku and Harry lived through. Sure they would always use the Dragon Balls to bring back all those that died, but humanity never forgot what had happened, there was no way that they would. So this world was more aware than any other Harry has been to and it showed, Oolong, however, was more interested in one thing wait, wait. Harry you have a harem, and you're acting like it isn't a big deal? Harry laughed a little ah, that, well it isn't a big deal to me, apparently in my world is normal for the powerful to have a harem so you could say that I didn't choose the harem life, it chose me. Oolong loudly groaned and pulled on his ears in frustration, both Kanu and Milim found it funny so they giggled a little at him, Oolong then pointed his finger at me damn it, Harry, you're living every man's dream. The least you can do is be more excited about it. Harry smiled and turned his head toward the girls the dream huh? They're certainly my dreams. Both Kanu and Milim blushed a bit and smiled sheepishly. Goku looked on confused, Oolong stared in jealousy, while Master Roshi chuckled smooth Harry, smooth, I should really take notes from you, you're definitely the master in this area. Harry just laughed and shook his head in amusement you guys never change, a pair of perverts all the way through. Everyone shared a laugh together founding this whole thing amusing, it was a good thing Master Roshi and Oolong respected Harry quite a bit and thus respected the girls as well. They both had seen what Harry does to enemies and those that pissed him off, so they didn't want to get a piece of that action and instead opted to behave, or at least behave as much as a pervert can. After that Harry and Master Roshi spoke about Harry's students and how he was passing down the philosophy of the Turtle School of Martial Arts to his own students. This of course made the old Turtle Hermit very proud, he now knew that the teachings of his School of Martial Arts were being passed down to a younger generation which made him very happy. After a little bit of talking Harry decided to ask a few things to Master Roshi Hey Master Roshi, how are you doing here? I know you have Oolong with you and Turtle as well, but I bet it's been very lonely here now that Krillin and 18 moved away. Master Roshi smiled well yeah, it's been real quiet around here lately but I'm already used to it, I am a hermit after all. Harry smiled then how would you like to come to my world? In Neo Kyoto you're actually well known and very famous because I've talked about you to all my students, you can live there in peace. 
Master Roshi's eyes widen a bit, he stared at Harry for a few long seconds before smiling that does sound nice but this is my world and despite the many things that have happened, I still love it plus Goku, Krillin, Yamka, and even Shin might need advice from this weak old hermit. Harry chuckled and then nodded to Master Roshi weak. You? Please, I and everyone else know full well that's not true, you did fight in the tournament of power after all. Kanu and Milim looked very surprised about what Harry just said, he had spoken about the tournament of power plenty of times and about the many powerful foes he faced during it. So to hear that Master Roshi actually fought in that same tournament came as a big surprise, Master Roshi however only embarrassedly laughed I almost kicked the bucket in that tournament, but it did make my desire to grow stronger light up within my heart once again. Goku and Harry brightly smiled at Master Roshi, they both knew that after the tournament, the old turtle hermit had started training once again in order to catch up at least a little bit with his extraordinary students. Harry reminisced about how this same old turtle hermit beat Goku, Krillin, and himself when they were kids, to this day he found it funny how he was bested by Master Roshi's cunning and trickery rather than martial art prowess like he did with Goku and Krillin. Harry smiled well if you ever want to move to my world just say the word. The offer will always be their master Roshi. The rest of the time Harry, Goku, and the girls spent in the game house was spent talking about all the shenanigans Goku, Harry and Krillin got up to as they trained under master Roshi when they were kids. Both Kanu and Milim had a lot of fun hearing about all the things Harry would do as a kid while training with Krillin and Goku. It seems like the three of them were quite the troublemakers back then and always got into trouble, especially when Launch joined in as well. Though most of the time the boys ended up getting shot at, but as they all enjoyed those stories they were also able to see Harry laugh and smile happy to talk about his time in this world. Eventually, Master Roshi took out the photo album and the girls were able to get more pictures of Kid Harry, they had some thanks to Masaki who had a whole album filled with kid pictures of Harry. But Master Roshi had even more, and in all of them Harry was among friends and smiling, they immediately had Harry use his power of reality to make permanent copies of the pictures, so they could show everyone back home. To them, the most interesting pictures were the ones taken during the Tenkaji Dokai or as the people call it, the World Martial Arts Tournament. In these pictures they, of course, saw Harry fighting all kinds of fighters using only martial arts and key techniques. Milim smiled as she watched the pictures why didn't you use magic or your keyblades during the tournament Harry? Harry who was laughing with Goku at a picture where they drew things all over a sleeping Krillin's face with a marker turned his head towards Milim oh, I didn't use my keyblades because it's not allowed to use weapons in the tournament and magic because I wanted to hone my martial arts. Milim nodded and understood why Harry would choose to focus on hand to hand combat in this world, he was already a master of magic and an amazing swordsman. So choosing to hone his martial arts was the next logical step in this world, this is how they spend most of the day in the game house, and for everyone, it was a very fun day. But eventually, it was time for Harry, Goku, and the girls to move on, they still wanted to visit a few more friends after all. Master Roshi walked them out and waved at them goodbye along with Oolong and Turtle as the group flew away, Master Roshi looked at both his students until they disappeared into the horizon, Harry has sure grown, not only in power but where it counts as well. Oolong nodded he's still a scary kid though. Turtle smiled but he's still a good kid. Master Roshi nodded and then walked back inside the game house with a soft smile on his face, he did wonder what sort of other adventures would Harry get up to in the future. And what sort of beautiful ladies he'll get to see too. Dash. The group of four flew towards Krillin's house which was in nearby Satan City, because Krillin took a job as a police officer it became necessary for him to move to the city and so he bought a house and moved in with 18 and their daughter Marin. According to Goku, Krillin was more than likely working right now so Harry decided to surprise his old friend by coming to visit while he was on patrol, with a quick scan for his energy everyone found him and immediately took off toward his location. Dash. Krillin was having a busy day today, everything started as usual. He got up early, ate breakfast with his wife and daughter, and then left to work where he began his daily patrol around the city. Work as a police officer was sort of boring and had him riding all over the place, but it was a good easy job for him, plus he was also doing something good and getting paid. But today resulted to be one of those busy and tedious days, right now Krillin was deadpanning a group of bank robbers who were shooting at his fellow police officers from within the bank they were taking cover in. The funny thing about all of this was that Krillin is easily dodging the bullets and even slapped them away, while his fellow police officers were gaping at him in shock while Krillin sighed man. One more day and it would have been a whole week without any big crimes. I'm never going to break that record. 
The leader of the bank robbers suddenly shouted all right pigs, back off or we'll start shooting the hostages. The police officers growled and glared at the leader of the bank robbers, the leader just smugly grinned at them causing even more anger within the police officers, Krillin, however, sighed how original of this guy. Krillin then looked around and began to count the robbers he could see through the windows of the bank, he also noticed there were quite a few hostages who looked very scared, a voice suddenly spoke by his side who boy, that looks like a mighty pickle. Krillin nodded yeah. I'm going to have to move very fast and take them out quickly before they can even try to hurt the hostages, though if they begin to panic it might cause a few problems. And you're right, the robbers might get trigger happy before you could reach them, so how about I help you a bit? Krill nodded yeah, I would really appreciate it if you gave me a hand, what? Harry? Dot. Harry grinned at Krillin and raised a hand in greeting yo Tilda. Krillin smiled and then hugged Harry ha 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 you jerk. Don't surprise me like that? Dot. Harry laughed and hugged his friend back it's not my fault you were distracted Krillin. Goku walked up to Harry and Krillin and shoulder hugged both of them hey. This looks serious. Want some help Krillin? Krillin grinned at Goku Goku. You're here too. Ha 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 it's like old times. The three of them laughed while the police officers looked on confused. Meanwhile, Kanu and Milam smiled at the reunion between good friends, the guys huddled together and began to plan what to do to get the bank robbers. Dash. A few minutes later Krillin split off the group and walked up towards the bank while Harry discreetly raised a barrier on each of the hostages, Goku got ready to use instant transmission once the plan begins. Meanwhile, everyone else including Kanu and Milam watched on, the leader of the bank robbers saw Krillin approaching, so he pointed his gun at him hey, stop right there pig or I'll blow your brain out of your skull. Krillin smiled and put his open hands to the sides of his face solar flare. Krillin immediately shut his eyes as a blinding bright white light flashed from behind him, the leader and the rest of the bank robbers screamed as they were blinded. Goku and Harry immediately teleported inside the bank after quickly putting on some sunglasses that Harry took out of his inventory while Krillin took her off running at super speed towards the main window. Krillin jumped and kicked the window and the leader of the bank robbers was sent flying back and out cold, meanwhile, Goku and Harry blurred all over the place while knocking out the rest of the robbers. The whole thing took only seconds, though only the girls were able to see what had happened, thanks to the fact that they too had sunglasses on, but everyone else could only hear the sounds of a fight. The blinding bright light finally subsided and after the police officers recovered their ability to see again. They were able to witness the amazing sight of Goku, Krillin, and Harry happily piling the robbers in a neat little pile in front of the bank. The police officers gaped and couldn't believe these three had single-handedly dealt with with such a delicate situation in a matter of seconds. Meanwhile the girls moved in to help the hostages who were still very scared and confused at what had happened. But they were also glad that it was over. The police officers moved in to help arrest the bank robbers after they snapped out of their flabbergasted state, after a while. Everything was peacefully resolved and the bank robbers were taken to jail while still unconscious. Harry quickly fixed the damage to the bank and even made sure all the hostages were safe and unhurt, he even gave candy to the children who were caught in this mess just to cheer them up. After that Krillin, Goku, and Harry along with the girls got together and followed Krillin around the city as he went back to his patrol. It was a strange and comical sight watching Krillin riding his air scooter while his friends followed him by flying at his side. Krillin smiled as he drove his air scooter I can't believe you're here Harry. I did even sense your kid. When did you get back? Harry who was flying beside Krillin grinned I got back a day ago. Did you feel the massive kid that was here? Krillin nodded oh yeah. That was terrifying but I also sensed Vegetu and Goku there, so I didn't think it was necessary to go help. I did panic when I felt Goku and Vegeta move away from the fight and got ready to move and help just in case. Goku smiled from Krillin's other side it was a very difficult fight and Vegeta and I needed to fuse to actually resolve the whole thing, Harry helped keep who we were fighting busy while we did so. Krillin nodded I see, then it was a good thing you got back when you did Harry but boy do you have some rotten luck. Harry laughed yeah but I'm already used to it, though I blame all the potters for that luck and my untamable black hair. Goku and Harry shared a laugh while Milam suddenly flew closer and stared at Krillin you're human right? You're pretty strong for one. I think you might be one of the strongest humans I've ever met. Krillin smiled ha 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 that actually makes me happy to hear, I've been training again after the tournament of power so I don't get left too far behind again, but I am glad it's noticeable. Oh wait we haven't introduced each other right? I'm Krillin. Milam grinned and nodded I'm Milam, one of Harry's girlfriends, it's nice to meet another one of Harry's friends. Especially a childhood friend like you and Goku. 
Kanu flew closer and waved at Krillin I'm Kanu, a student of Harry and one of his girlfriends as well. It's nice to meet you, Mr. Krillin. Krillin nodded as he continued to pay attention to the road it nice to meet you too as well. Harry's girlfriends huh? I'm surprised somebody was able to catch Harry's attention. Both Kanu and Milam tilted their heads in confusion, Krillin noticing their confusion decided to explain Harry has always been very popular with the ladies but he never showed any interest, so we all sort of thought he wasn't interested in things like love and such. Goku nodded in agreement which made Harry's eyebrow twitch in annoyance. If a thick-headed guy like Goku thought of Harry like that, then he seriously must have looked very weird. Milam hummed and nodded now that I think about Harry is very popular in Tempest too. Kanu nodded he's very popular in Kyu and Neo Kyoto as well, he has a big fan club in Neo Kyoto too. Harry winced at what Kanu just said and was completely surprised by it as well huh? Since when? Kanu smiled since a while ago. Ierschkigl is actually the president of your fan club. And Seraphol is the vice president, Tilda. Harry was now beginning to get very worried, while Krillin and Goku were trying really hard not to laugh at the expression on his face. Milim then did a barrel roll in midair and dodge an incoming car while still speaking yeah, and they sell some cool stuff I'm in the fan club too. And I even bought a Dekamura of Harry. Harry sweat dripped what? Kanu nodded I like his action figures. They come with all kinds of accessories. Though mom told me the calendars are pretty wild. Milim grinned and nodded oh Luna told me that the calendars were pretty spicy too. Both Krillin and Goku bust out laughing while Harry looked completely confused and very worried action figures? Dekamakuras? Wait a bloody second. When and who took those pictures for these calendars? Dot. Kanu laughed and flew around Harry Luna and Gabriel took them whenever they saw you in little clothing. Harry looked like he was having an aneurysm, I understand Luna. She's a bit of a pervert, but Gabriel? Dot. Milim laughed I know. She took everyone by surprise with that. Harry looked so defeated right now that it made Goku and Krillin laughed even more, Krillin couldn't help but take one more jab at him so powerful but then taken down by your girlfriends, this is hilarious. Harry frowned at Krillin I will kill you. But Krillin just laughed and shook his head been there and done that Harry. Harry just sighed and shook his head, though he also decided to check this so called fan club of his when he gets back, he was still a bit in denial about it existing but knowing his girlfriends he wouldn't be surprised if they actually did create one. Milam then flew closer to Krillin so Harry is popular in this world too? Krillin nodded he sure is. He's pretty famous too since he fought in the Tenkaichi Budokan and was a semi-finalist most of the time, though he did lose to Master Roshi all those times. Goku then crossed his arms and hummed, he then turned his head towards Harry why didn't you get a girlfriend here Harry? Even Krillin got two so it should have been easy for you. Krillin flinched as Goku's comments speared through him uh, that last part was completely unnecessary Goku. However he was ignored by the earth-raised Saiyan, who was waiting to hear Harry's answer to his question. Harry sighed well, saying goodbye to someone you love sucks, so I tried to avoid getting in relationships while I was world hopping, though some very stubborn girls didn't take a no for an answer, but I've never liked having to say goodbye and not knowing when I would see them again. Milam grinned knowing that Harry was talking about her, Fu, and Jessica. Harry did try his best to keep a good distance away from her but Milim was very curious about him and Harry would always play and hang out with her. He started as a best friend but over time he became much more to her, though she needed a little help from Rimoyu to understand that she had fallen in love with him. At first, she didn't get this whole girlfriend and boyfriend thing since it was very similar to being best friends, but over time she got what Rimoyu had described as love. So under Guy and Rayma Rasu's advice she ambushed Harry and kissed him into accepting her as his girlfriend and the rest is history, though Harry also had to reveal everything about him in order to let her know what she was getting into. But she didn't care about that, she didn't even care about the fact that she had to share Harry with two other girls, she was just happy that she got to be with him and she never regretted it, especially when she got a super awesome family out there relationship. Both Krillin and Goku nodded in understanding, they both could see, that it would have been hard for Harry to get into a relationship with someone in this world knowing that he would have to leave for who knows how long. Krillin nodded I see, fair enough. But then how did you get so many girlfriends? With the few Milim and Kanu just mentioned I can already tell you have quite a few. Harry smiled all of them except three are from my world, so there was nothing holding me back anymore plus they sort of decided to form a harem on their own Harry shook his head and shrugged I had no say in this matter whatsoever. Both Kanu and Milim grinned knowing how true Harry's statement is, Krillin and Goku just smiled at their friend, and despite lightly complaining about it Harry looked very happy about his situation. Dash. 
After a while, Krillin's patrol time was over and so after going to the police station he operates in and filling a few reports, he was finally able to clock out close to evening. So he took everyone back to his house so they could speak more comfortably in peace, everyone flew towards Krillin's house with him leading everyone and soon enough they arrived. They all landed at his front door while Krillin took out his keys and opened the door, he was immediately hugged by Marin who was waiting for him behind the door daddy. Krillin smiled and lifted Marin up into his arms hello sweetie, were you waiting for me? Marin nodded but then she noticed that her daddy wasn't alone, she immediately recognized Goten's daddy but she didn't recognize the girls since she's never seen them before. But then she recognized the other visitor and she brightly smiled as soon as he saw him uncle Harry. Krillin chuckled and let go of Marin when he felt her get ready to jump towards Harry, Marin jumped and Harry easily caught her with a smile on his face hey there Marin. Marin hugged Harry very tightly you really came back. Harry softly smiled and nodded of course I did, you didn't think your uncle would lie right? Marin shook her head you never lie. Krillin laughed and shook his head in amusement sometimes I think Marin likes Harry more than she does me and 18. Goku chuckled since he can understand that as well, both Gohan and Goten are also very fond of Harry and even Bra and Pan are getting very attached to him. Suddenly a voice coming from within the house caught everyone's attention while he does play with her all the time and spoils her a lot, I'm not surprised Harry is her favorite person in the world. Everyone turned their heads towards 18 who walked up to everyone and grinned at the group while Krillin smiled at his wife, Harry grinned at 18 hello there 18. How's the oil? 18 snorted and rolled her eyes at Harry but still continued to grin ha ha that never gets old Harry. 18 then walked up to Harry and gave him a hug it's good to see you again. Harry hugged 18 with one arm while still holding Marin with his other one it's good to see you too Lazuli. 18 chuckled since Harry was the only one who calls her by her real name sometimes, he never did like calling her by Dr. Jiro's number designation but she didn't mind it. 18 stepped away from Goku and walked up to Grillin's side how was your day at work? Krillin smiled a little bit busy but I had some help so everything got resolved quickly enough. 18 smiled I see, that's good, now how about some dinner guys? Goku's A's shinned at the mention of food, the girls nodded since they were a little hungry themselves, Krillin rubbed his hands and nodded since he was looking forward to 18's food all day. Harry smiled and then walked towards 18 come on, I'll help in the kitchen, feeding Goku and Milam isn't going to be easy. 18 smiled and nodded glad for the help though the girls quickly introduced themselves to 18 who nodded and smiled at them, glad to meet Harry's girlfriends. Dash. Harry provided all the ingredients for dinner not wanting 18's and Krillin's budget to get destroyed trying to feed Goku and the Millen, he also helped 18 cook so as to not let her deal with that chaos as well. Meanwhile, Millen was playing patty cake on the floor with Marin while Goku, Krillin, and Kanu sat on the kitchen table and talked as they waited for Harry and 18 to finish cooking. After a while they finish making food and Harry magically made the food serve itself to everyone so he and 18 could eat in peace. Marin found the little show of magic awesome so she awed and clapped every time the food served itself. As they eat Harry told Krillin and 18 about everything he had been doing after leaving this world and when he went back to his world, to the both of them it was very awe-inspiring to hear about everything he had accomplished. Krillin was proud and happy about the happy life Harry was able to get. He was aware that his life wasn't an easy one but he was always inspired by him and his dedication to learning and getting stronger. 18 had always thought of Harry as a cool guy, the fact that even Dr. Jiro was weary of him and very afraid as well just added cool points to him, she always found it amusing that Dr. Jiro was never able to get a DNA sample from Harry adding insult to injury to him and that just made her extra happy. She and 17 knew about him of course and he was number 2 on the list of people Dr. Jiro wanted dead for the destruction of the Red Ribbon Army, along with Goku being number 1 on that list. Both of them did not want to mess with him and his strange magical abilities, the supercomputers in their brains couldn't comprehend those magical abilities after all, so they completely ignored that objective, after all, he could turn you into a styrofoam cup with a wave of his hand at will. Even 16 didn't want to mess with him, only Cell was crazy enough to think he could fight him, that bastard learned the hard way that it wasn't a good idea to mess with Harry when he attacked him while in his first form. Harry almost destroyed Cell that time, but because he was busy making sure Goku didn't die and recovered quickly from his heart condition, Cell was able to get away. Only for Piccolo to chase after him, it was really a lot of bad luck that Cell found them out soon after and just made things worse for everyone, especially since when he became perfect. So as Harry continued his tale, she couldn't help but feel really glad that he was back here and so Harry spoke and told about his adventures in his world. Chapter 126, Chapter 126
By the time everyone finished dinner, Harry had also finished telling both Krillin and Eighteen everything going on in his world, about his family, the yokai, and his faction as well. Eighteen crossed her arms and smirked at Harry so you even have your own temple and priestesses? That's funny. Should I start praying to you to Harry? Harry rolled his eyes at Eighteen but he still smiled you do that and I'll just ignore you. Eighteen laughed a bit while Maron suddenly turned her head towards Harry I'll pray to you every night Uncle Harry. Harry chuckled and then smiled at Maron that does sound nice Maron, thank you. Maron widely smiled and went back to playing with Milam and Kanu, who were happy to keep Maron entertained while Harry hung out with his friends, Krillin chuckled and shook his head to think that the weird kid I used to train with as a kid, is now an all-powerful dragon god. Harry scratched his head and laughed was I really that weird? Krillin nodded definitely. You were always saying weird stuff about magic and whatnot, and don't even get me started on those key blades of yours too. Goku tilted his head I didn't think Harry was weird. I still think he's cool with all the kinds of things he can do. Krillin deadpanned at Goku I don't want to hear that from you Goku, you are pretty weird yourself, you know? Goku just laughed ha 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 I sure am. Harry chuckled while Krillin just sighed and shook his head, but he still smiled letting everyone know he was having fun. Harry then smiled you were pretty weird too Krillin, I think all three of us were very different than other kids and that's a good thing, otherwise we never would have adapted to Master Roshi's training. Krillin scratched his head and nodded you're right, Master Roshi's training was sure different and unorthodox as well, but it sure was very effective. The three turtle school practitioners nodded, Goku then turned his head towards Harry but to you Harry, all of that was too easy. Harry shrugged I had already done weight training in another world, so I had experience with it though when we started training with Master Roshi I decided to use gravity seals to make it harder on me. Krillin nodded ah, so that's why you were in so much pain and so slow when we started. You made it harder for yourself. Man, no wonder we couldn't beat you at the World Martial Arts Tournament. Goku nodded in agreement. Both he and Krillin fought against Harry in the tournament but both lost. Harry ended up going against Master Roshi as Jackie Chun in the finals, only to lose when the old timer used all of his tricks to beat him. 18 smiled so none of you ever defeated Harry before? Both Goku and Krillin hummed at the same time as they thought about what 18 just asked, Krillin moved his gaze towards Goku I sure haven't though I came close during our third time in the World Martial Arts Tournament, how about you Goku? Goku thought about it for a few more seconds while he resigned when I asked him to let me fight against Piccolo, back when he was evil but that doesn't count. We have sparred before while training after that but we never had a serious fight now that I think about it. Krillin nodded already thinking that was the case. 18 curious about it decided to ask more what about the others? Now that was a good question and both Goku and Krillin thought about it, Goku tilted his head and then spoke well Piccolo Daimu did almost kill Harry back when he wanted to rule the world, but he was only able to do that because he forced Harry to protect some civilians, so that wasn't fair. Krillin then spoke next I don't think Yamka or Tenshin Han ever beat him either, in fact, he beat the ever-loving shit out of Tenshin Han when he broke Yamka's leg when he was evil. Harry nodded confirming that he indeed has never been beaten by the aforementioned friends. 18 then decided to ask what about Vegeta? Or Freezer? Maybe Blue? Krillin grinned he beat the crap out of Vegeta and made him scream like a little girl after our fight against him and that other Saiyan, though the giant Oo force did beat him at first. Everyone turned to look at Harry, who shrugged in my defense, some of them had some very odd techniques and I couldn't really take them seriously, they made me laugh more than anything. Krillin nodded that's fair, I did see you struggling not to laugh while fighting them, now let's see, you had no problems with Freezer until he took on his final form, hell broke loose after that. Harry nodded yeah. At that moment Freezer surpassed me by a big margin, it was only because he was completely caught off guard by my magic and key blades that I was able to keep him busy while Goku charged the spirit bomb. Krillin nodded while Goku smiled that it was also the first time anyone had seen you fight with your key blades too. Harry nodded and smiled at his friend I couldn't afford to hold myself back at that time, I had to fight with everything I had, otherwise we all would have died. Both Goku and Krillin nodded knowing that was true, even then Frieza survived the spirit bomb and killed Krillin which resulted in Goku becoming a super saiyan and Harry exploding in anger, which resulted in the worst beating Frieza had ever gotten. There is a reason why the frost alien is semi-polite to Harry after all. Goku looked down I remember that you started to train even harder after our fight with Frieza, and at that point, you even surpassed me in my Super Saiyan form, honestly, I was very impressed. Harry nodded and sighed it wasn't easy and it took a lot of grinding and mastering all the techniques, skills, and abilities I had in order to reach that level, 
I think I abused the hyperbolic time chamber a lot during those days too. Harry then chuckled and then go and unlock the Super Saiyan 2 form and surpassed me, so I had to train even more after that. Thankfully Goen was more than willing to train with me during all of those years. Krillin and Goku nodded since they knew that Harry never stopped training and because of that, no one else did either, all the Z fighters never stopped training and sought to not be left behind. Goku then looked up, Vu was a nightmare, Harry could barely fight him off and it got worse when he began to transform after splitting into two. Harry nodded it was that damn instant regeneration of his, it made him extremely difficult to kill. After that ordeal, I spent many years creating new skills and spells that could help deal with those sorts of enemies. 18 then looked up so none of us and most of our enemies were able to truly defeat Harry? Huh? That's actually pretty impressive. Harry then shook his head I was still unable to prevent some really horrible stuff from happening though, and Beerus beat me to the ground when he first appeared. Krillin shook his head he doesn't count Harry, he is a god of destruction after all and none of us were even close to being ready for someone of his level. Harry nodded I know, I know but it was very frustrating at the time you know? Goku nodded in agreement since he himself felt the same way yeah, I under that feeling too. I was only to fight him off for a bit thanks to becoming a Super Saiyan God. Harry grinned at Goku and then you finally surpassed me, only for a while but it counts, especially when you unlocked Super Saiyan Blue. Goku chuckled and nodded yeah. But I didn't like that I was only able to reach that level with the help of others, so I trained very hard to unlock and master Super Saiyan God by myself. Harry nodded since he had gone with Goku and Vegeta to Beerus planet to train and had seen both Vegeta and Goku obtain and master the Super Saiyan God transformation still I needed to find a way to fight gods of Beerus level, it's only thanks to Master Weiss that I found the answer. Goku narrowed his eyes that's right, you often left with Weiss to train to master something, you never told us about it though. Did you master it? Harry grinned at Goku it took years and even when I arrived back in my world, it took me some more years but I was able to master it some time ago. Goku nodded, he had an idea what twice taught Harry and he was excited to see, but he doubted he could get Harry to do it. Marin suddenly stood up and went to Harry who noticed her and picked her up. He then sat her on the table in front of him what's up Marin? Marin smiled I've never seen you fight Uncle Harry. I want to see. Harry raised an eyebrow while Quillen actually began to think about it huh? It's true, Marin has never seen Harry fight before. How weird. 18 shrugged I'm not surprised, when Marin was born we did our best to keep her away from any trouble, when Harry fought Beerus they took their fight far away from us, so she didn't get a chance to see that time either. Harry hummed and then smiled at Marin you want to see me fight? Marin nodded, Harry tilted his head but then turned his gaze towards both Goku and Krillin what do you say, guys? Want to have a good old fight? Goku brightly smiled now you're speaking my language. I've been wanting to fight you ever since you've gotten back. Krillin grinned and nodded that actually sounds like fun. It will be like old times. Plus I've been training for a while now and I want to see how far I've gotten. Milim and Kanu smiled as they saw the happiness clearly showing on Harry's face great. And if you guys do good I'll tell you a few secrets and even help you get stronger. Both Krillin and Goku grinned now even more excited about fighting Harry. 18 smiled while both Milim and Kanu giggled at how excited the guys looked right now. Marin excitedly cheered, despite being young she did enjoy watching her daddy train and spar with her mommy, she also has always wanted to see her uncle Harry fight as well and now she'll get to do so. Harry stood up while picking up Marin in his arms well since we're fighting let's move to a bigger place away from any city, things tend to get wild when we're fighting. Goku excitedly stood up while Krillin did so as well. He then grinned and spoke, let me get changed first, I can't very well fight in my work uniform. Harry and Goku nodded while Krillin then walked over to his and 18's bedroom, 18 followed him while everyone else waited for them to get back. Dash. Sometime after the group teleported to a big open plain, Goku and Krillin looked around and scrunched up their faces when they saw the place, this area just seemed very familiar to them they just couldn't really remember from when. Harry smiled this is the same plains where we fought Nappa and Vegeta guys. Krillin and Goku's eyes widened in realization, Krillin then nodded ah, I see. This is a good place to fight and it's far away from any cities, too. Goku grinned it's perfect for the fight. Harry nodded and then nodded to Milim who was carrying Marin in her arms get back a bit and raise a barrier around you guys just in case. Milim and Kunu nodded and soon took off flying, 18 smiled at Krillin give it your best shot Krillin, I'll be rooting for you. With that said 18 took off flying and followed Milim and Kanu, who were getting a bit away from the fighters. 
Krillin happily smiled as he watched his wife fly off. Harry smiled she's such as good wife, you lucked out Krillin. Krillin nodded I know. Goku began to hop up and down while moving his arms and neck to warm up. Krillin then began to stretch as well as Harry watched them with a smile on his face. As Krillin stretched he spoke to Goku Hey Goku, what are the chances of us beating Harry? Goku cracked his neck and then stood still honestly not good, he's far more powerful than me now but we might be able to push him back if we fight him together. Krillin raised an eyebrow but grinned at Goku oh? You want us to fight him together? That's a surprise, you usually want to fight by yourself. Goku chuckled yeah. But Harry is no normal fighter, I'm actually feeling very anxious right now. Even though I do want to fight him by myself, I know I'm not a match to him right now. Krillin nodded I see. So we tag team him then? Goku nodded that's the plan. Krillin smiled how powerful do you think he is now? Goku excitedly grinned he made both Beerus and Weiss get very nervous. Krillin laughed wow. We're really going to have to go all out. Harry smiled as he watched his friends get into their turtle martial arts stance, feeling nostalgic he decided to also take the same fighting style stance and got ready. The three students of the turtle hermit master Roshi got ready for a good old fight and all three couldn't help but feel excited about it while grinning from ear to ear. Dash. A fair distance away Canoe, Milan, 18, and Marin watched as the guys got ready. Marin was already cheering for both Harry and her daddy while 18 crossed her arms and gave the fight all of her attention. She knew this fight was going to be big and that it's important to Krillin. Meanwhile, Kanu and Milim were very excited to see how the fight goes. During their years with Harry, they had heard him speak about both Goku and Krillin. They both knew they were both powerful individuals. In fact, Harry has told them that Krillin was probably the strongest human so far and that Goku was on a whole different level than the rest. So they didn't want to miss anything that was about to happen next. Kanu even discreetly began to record with a few monitoring spells, so she can show the fight to everyone at home. Dash. Goku, Harry, and Krillin stared at each other as the wind blew everywhere. Then as if some sort of unheard signal went off, the three fighters moved and blurred from sight. To most normal people, the most they would be able to see was blurs moving really fast all over the ground. Suddenly there was a loud boom and the fighters appeared on the planes they were fighting. Harry had caught an elbow from Goku with his hand, while also blocking a kick from Krillin with his knee. Harry grinned which alerted both Goku and Krillin of the incoming counter but Harry moved too fast for them. The dragon god tightened his hold on Goku's elbow and twisted in midair. He threw Goku to the ground while also using his momentum to lash out a spin kick toward Krillin. Goku was slammed into the ground causing him to let out a grunt, while Krillin blocked the kick with his arms. However, he was pushed back while Harry stomped on Goku's stomach before he could recover. The dragon god then rushed towards Krillin who was able to finally stop himself and react to dodge the punch Harry sent his way, but before he could even contemplate how to counterattack Harry began to barrage him with punch combos. Krillin was forced to backpedal while blocking and dodging Harry's punches. Krillin growled as he began to have a hard time dealing with Harry's barrage. Suddenly Harry's eyes widened and he quickly ducked to avoid a kick from Goku who blurred right beside him. He was able to dodge the kick but Krillin took advantage of the opening and hit Harry in the chin with a rising knee. Harry's upper body and head whipped back from the force behind Krillin's raising knee. Goku who was still in midair lashed out with an axe kick aimed at Harry's head. But Harry blurred out of there and appeared right behind Krillin and elbowed him in the back of the head sending him flying forward. Goku narrowed his eyes and blurred away and appeared below Harry and lashed out with a kick. Harry grinned and whirled in midair avoiding the kick. He then lashed out with a backhand, but Goku slammed his hand on the ground and pushed himself away. Both fighters then landed on the ground and immediately blurred as they rushed toward each other, they both stopped as they punched each other in the face. Both recovered quickly and lashed out with kicks and punches trying to bring each other down. Krillin appeared behind Harry and began to help Goku with a barrage of attacks of his own. This forced Harry to move backward while dodging in high speed both Goku and Krillin's attacks, but then Goku was able to hit him with a kick to the abdomen. Harry grunted a bit from the kick and was then punched in the face by Krillin. His head whipped to the side from the punch and both Krillin and Goku suddenly yelled and lashed out with a barrage of attacks attacking Harry's body non-stop. The dragon god growled and then roared unleashing a kid blast all around his body. This sent Goku and Krillin flying back. Harry wasted no time and rushed forwards toward both fighters. Goku and Krillin stopped themselves in midair but Harry blurred in front of Krillin and punched him in the chest causing him to gasp in pain. Harry then elbowed him in the face sending him crashing against the ground. Goku rushed forward and punched towards Harry, but the dragon reacted right away and caught the punch with his hand. 
He then pulled on Goku's hand surprising the earth raised Saiyan who didn't expect Harry to do that. The dragon god grinned and then headbutted Goku on the nose which forced him to close his eyes in pain. Harry let go of Goku's hand and then did a leg sweep which sent Goku to the ground with a grunt. Harry raised his leg and was about to axe kick Goku in the chest. But he was then blasted on the back by a kid blast, which pushed Harry forward yelling in pain bloody hell. That one actually hurt a bit and took the dragon god by surprise, Krillin was even surprised he was able to damage Harry. Goku took advantage of this and pushed himself off the ground towards Harry who was still off balanced by Krillin's attack and lashed out with a high kick. The kick hit Harry in the ribs and sent him flying, Goku turned towards Krillin what did you do? That looked like it hurt Harry a bit. Krillin shrugged I don't know, that was just a regular ki blast. He must have lowered his defenses. Harry reappeared in front of both Krillin and Goku Sai. You wankers, that actually stung. Both Goku and Krillin smiled as they heard Harry speak in that weird accent of his, that only happens when he's flustered or really pissed. Goku grinned we didn't expect it to hurt though. Harry sighed and shrugged I lowered my defenses and resistances, I wanted to have some fun like old times and me not taking damage would have ruined that, it has been a while since, I had fun in a fight after all. Goku grinned while Krillin laughed and shook his head well we're not going to complain about being able to hurt you. Harry smirked, then bring it. Both Krillin and Goku suddenly yelled as they powered up, a white aura exploded from their body and engulfed it as they got ready to take it up a notch. Dash. 18 raised an eyebrow when she saw Harry actually grunt in pain at Krillin's surprised kid last bat sod. Harry was very resistant to attacks the last time I saw him fight, only the strongest fighters were able to hurt him with key attacks. Milim who was excitedly cheering with Marant stopped and decided to explain Harry must have lowered his resistances and defenses to make things more fair and fun. Otherwise Goku and Krillin wouldn't have been able to hurt him. Kanu hummed he also stopped his healing factor and his dragon scales. He's still really tough but he will be able to take damage now. 18 frowned he can do that? I don't think he had that much control over his abilities the last time he was in this world, he must have trained and improved himself non-stop since he left. Milim grinned he has never stopped training, even when he got back to his world he continued training, he's an inspiration to everyone in Neo Kyoto. And an example to follow. Suddenly a voice spoke behind them I'm not surprised he improved so much, Harry has always been a really hard worker when it comes to training. The girls except for Marin who was intently watching Goku and Krillin powering up, turned round and saw Weiss standing behind them and smiling. Both Milim and Kanu were really surprised he was there since they couldn't sense him arriving. 18 grinned at Weiss oh? What brings you here Mr. Weiss? Weiss chuckled I sensed something fun happening here and I got curious about it, to think I would see Harry, Goku, and Krillin fighting. 18 laughed you know how it is, boys will be boys. Wise smiled while Kanu and Milim nodded in agreement, all three girls knew that this was just the guys having some fun and catching up with each other. Dash. Krillin and Goku finished powering up and then shot forward toward Harry while still being engulfed with their white kick. Goku reached Harry first and tried to kick Harry in the head. But Harry quickly ducked and avoided Goku's attack, but Krillin reached him and rushed forward, forcing Harry to fly backwards while blocking Krillin's attacks. Goku took off flying at high speed toward Harry and caught up to him in a matter of seconds and joined Krillin in attacking Harry, the dragon god growled since not only their speed increased, but so did their strength. But he was about to keep up with them still, in a sudden movement Harry grabbed hold of Krillin and put him right in front of Goku's punch, which ended up hitting him and sending him crashing against the ground. Goku was really surprised at the sudden maneuver from Harry Krillin. But Harry kneed him in the stomach causing Goku to bend over his knee while gasping in both pain. Harry immediately moved and appeared behind Goku and caught him with a bear hug, Goku grunted and began to thrash around already knowing what Harry was wanting to do no. But Harry immediately exploded in green and black key and took off flying towards the sky while Goku tried to get away from him, suddenly Harry slowed down high into the air only to then begin to drop at a really high speed. Goku roared and began to try and pry Harry's arms off of him, but the dragon god held on tight as he began spinning around while Goku grimaced. To everyone else watching the fight, all they saw was a green and black energy like drill coming down from the sky at high speed toward the ground, Harry then roared Omo Trench. Goku screamed unable to stop Harry's technique while Krillin exploded from the ground where he had landed and looked on as Goku was slammed against the ground Goku. The ki around Harry detonated as soon as it touched the ground letting off a big explosion, Krillin covered his face with his arm. Meanwhile, Harry shot off the explosion and headed towards Krillin, Krillin's eyes widened as he watched Harry reach him and barely had time to block Harry's punch with his arm. 
The punch however pushed him back and Harry followed right after Krillin, who frowned and then began to fire a multitude of kid blasts toward Harry in an attempt to slow him down. But Harry slapped them away as he continued rushing forward, Krillin took off flying backward while still firing kid blast at Harry, the dragon god eventually caught up to Krillin and lashed out with a punch. Krillin watched the punch rush toward him, but then he grinned toward Harry and suddenly yelled Kaiokin, X4. Harry's eyes widen in shock Kaio what? Dot. Krillin suddenly and unexpectedly moved so fast that Harry couldn't react in time when Krillin lashed out a punch and hit him in the face. Harry grunted in pain and was sent flying and crashing against the ground. Krillin cupped his hand together and gathered his kiss the red aura around him flared Kansas. Me. Ha. Me. Ha. Krillin swung his hands forwards and shot a massive beam of blue kit towards Harry, the dragon god sat up from where he landed on the ground and looked up ha. Huh? Crap baskets. Harry was then hit by the Kamehameha wave and a massive explosion went off on contact. It was so big that it could be seen in a distance away and felt as well by many of Earth's heroes. Goku blasted off the ground from where Harry had slammed him, he looked a bit bruised and hurt but okay nonetheless I really hate that technique. It really hurts. Goku then suddenly noticed the massive explosion and his eyes widened in surprise, he looked up and saw Krillin engulfed in the all-familiar red aura of the Kaiokin. Goku grinned so he finally perfected it Goku then took off flying towards Krillin. The explosion subsided and Krillin let up his Kaiokin technique and took a big breath. He was a bit sore but he had a smile on his face. Goku arrived by his side and whistled boy that looked awesome. How are you feeling Krillin? Krillin sighed but nodded I'm still fine but that sure hurt quite a bit, still I'm glad I was able to master the Kaiokin to this extent. Goku nodded, he knew the limit was X2, and going beyond that could cause some serious damage to the body so he knew that Krillin had to have trained extensively to reach that level. He was quite proud of his friend, both he and Krillin looked down, Goku frowned you took him by surprise right? Krillin nodded and grinned yup you should have seen his face. He never expected that not from me at the very least. Goku chuckled, suddenly Harry exploded out from the massive explosion that engulfed him when Krillin's came a mere wave hit him, he then stopped right in front of both Krillin and Goku. Both of them could see that he took some damage but was still raring to go. Harry grinned at Krillin well bugger me, that completely took me by surprise Krillin, good job. Krillin chuckled and then shrugged it still didn't do much though, but I am happy I was able to catch you off, guard. Harry nodded and then rubbed his mouth with the back of his hand and then showed it to Krillin, who was able to see a small amount of blood on it. Harry smiled at Krillin you're the first person since I've become a dragon god to make me bleed, regardless of whether I lowered my defenses and resistances that's an accomplishment on its own Krillin, be proud. Krillin brightly smiled happy that Harry acknowledged his accomplishment, Goku grinned and his friend happy for him meanwhile Harry nodded and then took on a serious look but it seems like we're about to have some company, it seems like more fighters want to join in the fun. Goku smirked since he already had sensed some very familiar energy signatures approaching their location, Krillin just smiled and shrugged, he already suspected that some of their friends would eventually join in. Harry however was excited, he had no doubt in his mind that soon he'll have a very excited fight on his hands. Dash. Sometime before Krillin's surprise attack. Piccolo was meditating on top of a rocky mountain when he suddenly felt Krillin's kiss skyrocket, he immediately focused all of his senses on his location HMPH, looks like those three are having some fun. Piccolo opened his eyes and stood up, he then looked towards where he felt Krillin's key and grinned. Well I could use a bit of a warm up, this might actually be fun as well. The Namekian's body was suddenly engulfed in white key and he took off flying at high speed, he might try to hide it but he was really excited about joining in on the fun. Dash. Vegeta was curiously watching Bulma try out some of her magic, she had watched Harry cast some spells a lot of times so she decided to try them out, she suddenly fired a massive fireball which Vegeta caught and dissipated right away. Bulma gaped a bit but then widely smiled okay. That was kind of cool. Sorry about that Vegeta. Vegeta just smirked at his wife letting her know that it was okay. Bulma smiled and was about to try another spell when she suddenly felt something off her. What was that? Vegeta walked up to Bulma that was the midget and Kakarot having some fun. The thing that annoys me is the fact that they didn't invite me. Bastards. Bulma giggled while watching her husband pout and rant about being left out of a good time. Bulma then smiled and nodded then let's go and see what they're doing. You can even join in. I'm sure they wouldn't mind if you did. Vegeta smirked and then nodded to Bulma, who nodded back and began to walk back to the house give me a minute, I have to go grab a bra and then we can head over there. Vegeta raised an eyebrow you're taking her with us? 
Bummer just grinned of course. I'm sure the guys wouldn't let her get hurt, plus I'm sure Bra would love to see Harry again. Bummer then left to go get Bra while Veg to look down I'm not sure I like the fact that my daughter seems to be getting attached to that lizard. A minute later Bummer returned with Bra in her arms, she then handed her to Veg to for a few seconds and threw a capsule a fair distance away from them. A big cloud of smoke suddenly exploded out from the capsule and a big airplane appeared, Bummer then took Bra back and went inside the plane. Vegeta began to fly up and after making sure Bra would be safe, Bummer also took off into the sky. Together they took off flying at high speed towards where they felt Krillin's kick. Dash. Goen was working on something on his laptop while Videl was taking care of Pan, and both of them suddenly felt something a fair distance away from their location. Goen smiled as he focused his sense and recognized his dad and Krillin's energy. Videl suddenly walked into his office with Pan in her arms. Goen, did you feel that? Go and nodded it seems dad and Krillin are having some fun and if I know them well, which I do, then Uncle Harry is with them as well. Goen excitedly smiled, Videl noticed Goen's excitement and smiled at her husband are you going to join in? Goen turned his head towards Videl and seemed to be pondering whether to go or not, but he then smiled and nodded yeah, I think I want to give it a shot. Otherwise Mr. Piccolo won't let me hear the end of it. Goen then got up from his desk and closed his laptop. He then walked up to Videl I'm going to go change real quick and then I'll leave. Videl nodded and watched Goen run upstairs and into their room. Videl giggled and then turned her head towards Pan Daddy looks very excited. I think this is the first time he'll fight without having to worry about the world. I think Daddy just wants to play don't you think so Pan? Pan giggled and clapped her hands in excitement. She didn't really know what her mom was talking about, but she seemed happy and excited and that was enough to make Pan very happy as well. Chapter 127, Chapter 127 Harry turned his head towards his left and saw a big bright light coming in their direction, Krillin noticed it and couldn't help but grin that's Piccolo. It seems like he was closer to us than we thought. Goku turned his head to the other side and grinned looks like Vegeta is also coming this way, along with Bummer and Bra. Harry nodded and then turned his head back to both Krillin and Goku and it seems like Goen just took off in this direction too, Videl and Pan are right behind him. Looks like they want to play. Piccolo arrived and stopped right in front of everyone. He crossed his arms and grinned at Harry who just smiled and shrugged. Piccolo just nodded it seems like you're having a party. Mind if I join? I've been wanting to fight you for quite a while, Harry. Harry just chuckled I don't mind. The more the merrier and it certainly has been a while since we had a fight. I think the last time was when we were training to fight Cell. Piccolo nodded and began to take off his heavy hat and cape. He immediately threw them to the side where they cracked the ground yeah, about that long. Piccolo cracked his neck and smirked at Harry who just nodded, suddenly Vegeta arrived and landed close by, he immediately walked up to the group what's this? Having a fight and you didn't invite me, I should be insulted. Everyone grinned at Vegeta, while Harry just laughed and shrugged didn't think you would be interested, you're not a team player after all. Vegeta scoffed that is true but I'm also not stupid lizard, I'm very well aware that you're not someone I can take on my own yet. Harry just shook his head I see, so when it comes to me, you're willing to play nice. I don't know if I should feel proud or worried. Vegeta just smirked and crosses his arms are we waiting for the boy as well? Goku smiled and nodded yeah, Goen feels like he's excited to fight and that doesn't happen often so I think we should wait for him. Piccolo sighed that boy should focus more on training than all that book reading he does, I don't want him getting soft on us. Vegeta nodded since he himself didn't like that as Saiyan acted as Goen does, Goku just sheepishly laughed, he was happy that his son was doing something he likes but he did wish he would train more often. Krillin just shrugged he's not a fighter like us guys, at least he still trains just in case something happens. Harry nodded we kinda forced this on him when he was just a child, so let him do what he wants, he more than earned that right, and besides, we know we can always count on him when we need him and that's enough. Everyone nodded, even Vegeta, as they agreed with him, Goen then arrived a few minutes later and landed by everyone wearing his purple GI, showing that he was a student of Piccolo. The Namekian grinned as he saw his student proudly wearing the colors and uniform of his school of martial arts, Goen raised a hand in greeting hey everyone, I'm not too late right? Everyone except Vegeta of course greeted the half Saiyan, Harry grinned and nodded you're just in time, though I am surprised you want to come out and play. Go and grinned and nodded it's been a while since we had a good old fight Uncle Harry and I've been wanting to fight you for a while now. Harry nodded and then noticed two airplanes landing by where Kanu, Milim, 
Meron, and Eighteen were standing, he then narrowed his eyes as he saw Weiss standing by them, huh? When did Master Weiss get here? Both Vegeta and Goku turned their heads toward where Harry was looking, and they both saw Weiss happily talking with the girls while Videl and Bomber stepped out of the airplane to join them in watching. Dash. Kunu turned her head towards the side as two airplanes of sorts landed close by, she smiled when she saw both Bomber and Videl walking out of the airplanes while carrying their babies with them. Both Bummer and Videl walked up to the group and greeted everyone with a smile, Pan and Bra immediately began to reach for both Milim and Kanu as soon as they saw them. Both girls began to play with the babies while their mothers smiled at the girls, Bummer then turned her head towards 18 Hey 18, it's been a while huh? 18 nodded and smiled at Bummer that's true, I take it that you and Vegeta came to join in the fun right? Bummer giggled and nodded you know how that man is, he smells a fight and he immediately wants to join in. 18 then turned towards Videl and you Videl? It's a surprise to see you and go in here. Videl let Kanu lift Pan off her arms with one of her tails to play with her and smiled towards 18 well go and got very excited out of nowhere and wanted to come here, he hardly ever wants to do things like this, so why not let him have some fun? 18 nodded, Marin then ran up to Kanu who now had both Pan and Bra on her tails, and playing with both. Milam giggled and then clapped her hands to extend the barrier to cover not only everyone but the airplanes as well. They all came to see the show after all, so might as well make sure no one gets hurt, that way the boys can play all they want. Dash. Harry sighed Weiss must have gotten curious about the fight though I wonder where Beerus is right now? Harry hummed as he pondered about where the god of destruction could be. Vegeta shook his head he might be sleeping again, you know how lazy Lord Beerus can be. Goku sheepishly laughed while Piccolo closed his eyes and Goen smiled, Krillin then spoke up all right now that everyone is here, how are we going to do this? Harry raised a hand wait, what about Yamka and Tenshihan? Where are they? Krillin turned his head towards Harry to answer his question Yamku is in the middle of a baseball season so he's not going to be able to go anywhere soon and Tenshihan is in the middle of a serious meditation training with his students so I don't think he can join in. Harry nodded that's a shame, I wanted to visit them but if they're busy I'll just postpone that for some other time, I wouldn't want to distract them from what they're doing. Everyone again except Vegeta who didn't care much about the two aforementioned friends nodded, and Piccolo crossed his arms going one by one is going to take all day. Harry raised an eyebrow, Goku grinned and then spoke we can do what Krillin and I were doing before you guys arrived. Go and tilted his head and what exactly were you doing dad? Krillin grinned we were both fighting Harry at the same time, I barely was able to hurt him now that he lowered his defenses and resistances. Vegeta raised an eyebrow giving them a chance Harry? Harry shrugged it wouldn't be much of a fight if I don't take any damage or instantly heal any injuries, you remember how annoying Cell and Buu were right? Vegeta scoffed but nodded, enemies who could tank everything and heal from anything were always annoying to fight so we're all fighting the lizard? Seems fair. Harry rolled his eyes how is that any fair? Everyone grinned at Harry and answered at the same time because it's you who were fighting. Harry just deadpanned at everyone, while the five fighters got ready to fight him. Harry chuckled and then nodded all right then, let's have some fun but I hope you guys don't mind me getting a bit serious here. Harry summoned both Oblivion and Oathkeeper into his hands, both Keyblades appeared in flashes of darkness and light, and all the fighters immediately jumped away for Harry knowing how dangerous he is when he uses them in battle. Vegeta and Piccolo even began to sweat since both had been caught on the wrong side of those weapons and they did not enjoy it, Goku was excited as was Goen though Krillin was mighty nervous. Dash. Weiss chuckled when he saw Harry summon his key blades, he hadn't been able to really give them a closer look since he's only used them when he fought Beerus. During the tournament of power, he couldn't use them because they didn't allow weapons, but Weiss always thought that Harry would have probably won the whole thing if he had used them, after all. Harry is more of a swordsman than a martial arts practitioner. Marin cheered as she saw her uncle Harry summon his pretty swords, while 18 sighed ah. Looks like Harry is getting a bit serious, I feel bad for the guys now. Bummer nodded well I can't blame him, Vegeta and the others looked ready to jump him, it is funny seeing Vegeta so nervous though. Videl tilted her head I've always wondered what those things are, I've only seen Harry use those once and if I remember correctly I also heard he used them against Buu but I never bothered to ask what they are. Kanu who was carrying Pan and Bra within her tails while both little Saiyans laughed and had fun in their turned her head towards Videl those weapons are called Gi Blades, they're weapons forged out of the heart and can be only wielded by their chosen wielder. 
Videl turned her head towards Kanu as she continued to explain the Keyblades are extremely powerful magical weapons and can cause damage to anything plus they also boost their wielder's stats and can grant passive abilities as well. Videl eyes widen in surprise amazing. I never knew such weapons existed. Wise hummed I don't think they're from this world, right Miss Kanu? Kanu nodded that's right, they're actually from another world entirely and there are only three Keyblade wielders in our world. Now that caught twice attention oh? So there's more of these weapons. Kanu nodded and summoned her own keyblade to show everyone me and another one of Harry's girlfriends named Luna, were both his students and wielder of keyblades. I'm a master of light while Luna is the master of darkness. Everyone was surprised and quite awed at the information Kanu just gave them about the keyblades. Most of them had seen the very powerful magical weapons, but until now no one had bothered asking about them. Dash. Vegeta narrowed his eyes and glared at Harry Dam. I've never wanted to see those things again Piccolo nodded in agreement since he himself didn't want to see a Keyblade again in his life. Krillin was very nervous, he and Goku knew exactly how powerful Harry really is when wielding his Keyblades, but to him, things just got extra difficult. Goku and Gohan were excited about fighting Harry with his Keyblades, they both had seen him fight with them before and they knew that Harry was more of a swordsman than anything else. That didn't mean he wasn't a strong martial artist, in fact, he is an amazing fighter but he's a completely different person when he's using his keyblades. Piccolo sighed well might as well see how this goes. Piccolo's body exploded with white kiss he launched himself toward Harry at high speed. Harry grinned and got ready, Piccolo arrived in front of Harry and immediately barraged him with a multitude of punches and kicks, but Harry easily countered them with his keyblades. With the keyblades longer range, it made it difficult for Piccolo to get close to Harry, especially because Harry would immediately launch a counter-attack if he gets distracted for even a second. Harry suddenly parried a kick from Piccolo and was about to strike him on his back when he was suddenly forced to jump back to avoid an elbow to the face by Krillin. Piccolo quickly recovered and both of them began to attack Harry at high speed, they were even able to hit him a couple of times, but Harry didn't even slow down. Goku Vegeta, and Gohan suddenly transformed into Super Saiyan and rushed forward to join in the fight, Harry saw them approaching and frowned knowing that he needed to give himself some space before they got to him. He suddenly blocked a kick from Piccolo and Krillin each with his key blades, he then suddenly spun at high speed and struck both fighters in the abdomen and sending them flying away from him. Just in time to because Vegeta appeared above him and tried to hum a fist him on the head, but Harry was able to block it with oblivion, Gohan appeared in front of him and tried to punch him in the gut. Harry raised his knee and blocked the blow but was unable to do anything when Goku blurred in front of him and dropped kick him away, Vegeta took advantage of Harry being sent away and took off after him at high speed. He caught up to him and kicked him toward the floor, but Harry twirled in midair and landed on his feet, Gohan and Piccolo appeared at his side and were ready to attack him. Harry grinned and slammed both keyblades into the ground twilight impulse. Both Piccolo and Gohan slammed against a blast of light and darkness and were blasted away by Harry's magical blast, Krillin suddenly threw a destructo disc toward him. Harry swung a Earth Keeper in the direction the Ki disc was coming from and unleashed a wave of light, but before it could hit the destructo disc it suddenly split into five other ones and headed straight to Harry. The Dragon God's eyes widened in surprise and immediately jumped to dodge them, he was forced to twirl in midair to avoid getting beheaded but the Ki disc was still able to cut his cheek. But before he could anything, Piccolo and Vegeta appeared above him and pointed both of their open hands toward him, both of them roared and fired a multitude of kid blasts toward Harry. Harry immediately began to bat them all away with Oath Keeper and Oblivion as soon as he landed, Goku, Gohan, and Krillin then appeared a fair distance away from him while surrounding him. All three of them cupped their hands and then quickly fired a Kamehameha wave at Harry, who clicked his tongue and then suddenly yelled reflect. Harry's magical barrier materialized around his body blocking everyone's ki techniques, the Zed fighter all grunted in annoyance knowing what Harry's spell did, and immediately scrambled to dodge what came next. The barrier around Harry absorbed the ki blasts and then bounced them back in a shower of white beams of light, the fighters immediately blurred in and out of the sight to dodge the beams of light. But there were so many and moving so fast that they couldn't avoid them all and ended up getting blasted by the beams of light multiple times, Piccolo and Vegeta who were in the sky were shot down and sent falling to the ground. As they crash landed, Krillin, Gohan, and Goku were barraged by the beams of light, Harry suddenly blurred in front of Gohan with both his key blades glowing with a golden light. The half Saiyan couldn't even react as Harry suddenly began to hit him with a rapid barrage of swings, Gohan felt each strike hammer his body and could only grit his teeth in pain. Krillin suddenly appeared beside Harry and attacked him with a punch, 
Harry stopped his combo attack on Gohan and jumped back to avoid Krillin's punch. The Dragon God quickly jumped up and struck Krillin in the stomach with a rising knee. Krillin gasped in pain while Harry swung Oblivion into Krillin's side and sent him flying away. Both Goku and Vegeta rushed toward Harry and began to attack him with punches and kicks. Harry took off flying backward while dodging and blocking with his keyblades. Suddenly he sensed Piccolo's Kirais and he moved his gaze to see what he was doing, only to narrow his eyes as he watched Piccolo charge an enormous amount of kin to two of his fingers. Knowing what was coming Harry immediately twirled around and dodged Vegeta and Goku's kicks while also throwing both keyblades toward Piccolo. Oblivion and Oath Keeper flew through the air like buzzsaws toward the Namekian while Harry kicked Goku away and then grabbed Vegeta in a chokehold. Piccolo's eyes widened as he saw the keyblades coming towards him, but both Gohan and Krillin appeared in front of him and slapped them away. Goku twirled in midair and instantly took off towards Harry. Vegeta growled and began to thrash around trying to get Harry off him but he wasn't able to do it. Harry suddenly threw him towards Goku who was getting close to him, and blasted him with a ki blast. Goku was caught off guard as Vegeta was sent towards him and couldn't react fast enough, resulting in Vegeta crashing against him and then both getting blasted by Harry's ki blast. Meanwhile, Piccolo finished charging his technique and pointed his two fingers towards Harry making Kasapo. A spiraling highly concentrated beam of ki flew towards Harry at an impressive speed. Harry summoned both Oblivion and Oath Keeper back into his hand and gathered his energy into the light ki blade, and then batted away Piccolo's ki technique with a roar. The beam flew to his side and crashed against the ground, drilling its way down. Harry then created a blue portal in front of him and pointed a earth keep at it toad. A blue portal appeared behind Piccolo who didn't even notice and was hit by the magic spell. The Namekian suddenly found himself turned into a toad that actually deadpanned at Harry. Harry just chuckled and shrugged. He knew the spell was only temporary so he wasn't too worried but he was then forced to suddenly avoid a Kamamiya from Krillin. Suddenly Gohan powered up into his mystic form and launched himself toward Harry, who grunted at the increase in power from his adversary. Gohan suddenly succeeded in punching Harry in the stomach and then he kicked him in the face sending him flying. Harry let go of his key blades and they instantly flew towards Gohan and began to attack him. Harry then slammed his hand against the ground and pushed himself up where he twirled a couple of times until he softly landed on his feet. He then took off flying towards Gohan who was too busy dodging his key blades. Go and was then struck on the head by Oath Keeper and forced to his knees by Oblivion who struck one of his shoulders, he suddenly noticed Harry coming towards him and crossed his arm blocking a knee to the face just in time. But that left his back open for Oblivion and Oath Keeper to cross slashing him, Go and yelled in pain while Harry jumped over him and caught his key blades from the air, he then landed behind him and pointed both key blades at Goen's back through Goen couldn't even scream as he was engulfed in a massive explosion of flames and sent flying forward. Suddenly both Goku and Vegeta roared as they decided to stop playing around and transformed into Super Saiyan Blue. Harry grinned as he watched his friends power up. Krillin smiled and shook his head. He quickly picked up Piccolo who was still a toad, and took off flying towards where the girls and wives were watching. Yeah let's not get in the middle of that Piccolo. Toad Piccolo nodded and both fighters soon arrived with the girls and decided to watch the fight. They knew full well they couldn't continue fighting when those two stopped holding back. Dash. 18 smiled at her husband who smiled back at her. 18 then walked up to him, while Krillin handed Toad Piccolo to Marin who hugged him like a teddy bear while watching the fight. 18 inspected her husband to make sure he wasn't too hurt. Once she saw that he is pretty much okay she nodded did you have fun? Krillin sheepishly laughed yeah. It's always fun to fight Harry. He always has so many surprises to hit you with, though it is frustrating that I couldn't push him farther. 18 nodded and smiled at Krillin you'll get there, I know you're strong. Krillin nodded and then looked at his fist with a grin on his face yeah. I'll continue to train, the next time I'll make him fight more seriously. Everyone including Toad Piccolo smiled at Krillin even Weiss was impressed with how much a human like him could put out, it seems that he's going to have to keep an even closer eye on Krillin. Dash. Harry watched as both Vegeta and Goku were in their Super Saiyan blue form and decided to power up a bit and perhaps surprise them both a little, so Harry let go of his key blades and let them float beside him. He then suddenly smiled and his body exploded in red key. Both Vegeta and Goku's eyes widened in shock as they watched Harry transform into a Super Saiyan god. Harry's hair and eyes turned red as his body was engulfed in a red god key that burned brightly. Vegeta then narrowed his eyes how? How is it possible for you to have become a Super Saiyan God? Goku nodded since that was a good question and he himself was very curious about the answer. 
Harry smirked at Vegetu and pointed a thumb over his chest I've become a Saiyan too. Vegetu and Goku looked both shocked and confused, so Harry explained a bit after I left this world, the Saiyan race was unlocked for me for having helped saved the world so many times, this new race actually helped me get even stronger while I had to start over in the next worlds I visited. Goku grinned that's amazing Harry, and you even unlocked the super Saiyan god form. Vegeta nodded yes, but I also guess there's a limit to the race right? Otherwise you would have turned Super Saiyan or something the moment we did. Harry chuckled and nodded that's right, all I got for the Saiyan race is the Zenkai boost ability, a massive ki boost, and an increase in fighting abilities, I didn't get a tail or anything else and the only reason I was able to become a Super Saiyan god was because I became a dragon god which gave me access to godly ki. Goku seemed even more excited while Vegeta nodded I see. Still just the Zenkai boosts are a big boon, so now you're also a Saiyan. I don't know how to feel about that. Harry smirked at Vegeta don't expect me to bow down to you, Prince Vegeta. Vegeta grunted and then scoffed ha. As if you would ever bow down to anyone. You already had a Saiyan's pride even before you became one. Harry nodded and got into his fighting stance, Goku and Vegeta immediately got ready as well, and suddenly Gohan blurred beside Goku and grinned I'm still not out yet. Both Vegeta and Goku nodded, Gohan then immediately took his fighting stance and his body exploded with white kick. Harry stared at his opponents while they did so as well. Dash. Weiss raised an eyebrow did Harry just transform into a Super Saiyan God? Everyone had noticed that and were very curious about it, Kanu decided to explain Harry told us he unlocked that race once he left this world, he gained the ability to transform into a Super Saiyan God once he became a Dragon God, though it did take him a while to get used to the form. Wise thought about it for a few seconds ah, I see, because Harry didn't seem to able to transform into any other Super Saiyan form, his body and he himself weren't used to taking on such an advanced form. Kanu nodded that's right. Harry can't transform into a Super Saiyan, he doesn't even have a tail, the only things he gets from that race are a few useful boosts and perks, I believe he once said that his dragonic blood is too strong and it overpowered his Saiyan heritage. Everyone seemed very impressed. While Weiss nodded still, it's amazing that he was able to unlock that form and train to get used to it, godly ki is denser and heavier than regular ki. I can only imagine just how much effort he must have put into training that form. Dash. Harry with his ki blades floating beside him suddenly disappeared in a red flash and reappeared right in front of Goku, Oblivion then attacked Vegeta while Oath Keeper attacked Goen. Both of them were pushed back by the ki blades while Harry attacked Goku who backpedaled and tried to counterattack. however, Goku immediately understood one thing. Harry in his Super Saiyan God form was far more powerful than him in his Super Saiyan Blue form and that not only shocked him but also excited him as well. With every blow he would block from Harry, Goku would feel pain and would strain to keep his guard up, but that wasn't just it, Harry was also fast, very fast and Goku found himself hard pressed in dodging his attacks. Goku quickly gazed at both Vegeta and Gohan and frowned as he watched both of them struggle against Harry's key blades. This was new since Harry was unable to make his Keyblades attack independently when he was in this world. This means that this is a skill he picked up somewhere after his time in this world, it made Goku feel a bit jealous of his friend but also very happy to see he had become stronger as well. Suddenly Goku was punched in the face and then spin kicked in the chest, he flew through the air but stopped himself in midair, Harry then yelled as he gathered kin to both of his hands and began to chant Kansas. Me. Ha. Me. Ha. Harry spread his hands to his side and fired two massive beams of blue ki from each hand, Goku widened his eyes in surprise and shock it came a mere way from each hand. Vegeta noticed the massive blue beam of ki coming his way and barely dodged it, Gohan however wasn't so lucky and was hit head on and dragged back until the ki blast detonated into a massive explosion. The ground shook and the air blast spread around the area, breaking stones and trees, Vegeta and Goku covered themselves with their arms to protect themselves. Luckily for everyone watching the fight, they had a barrier protecting them otherwise they would have been sent flying, Piccolo suddenly turned back to normal and he gave Marin a head pat as thanks for holding him up while he was a toad. Though he seemed worried about Gohan, however, the half Saiyan suddenly appeared in front of them unconscious but alive, Kanu immediately pointed her keyblade towards him and cast a spell Kuriga. Gohan's wounds were immediately healed and he quickly got up with a gasp whoa, I thought I was dead. He then looked around and saw that he was with the girls and Weiss, he sighed and shook his head damn it, that was quick. Piccolo bent on one knee and grabbed Gohan's shoulder it's alright kid, we knew we wouldn't have won, but let's take this as a learning experience, next time we'll give him a run for his money. 
Go and grinned and nodded right. I'll just have to train and unlock a new form no one has seen before. Piccolo nodded and gave him a smile, Videl smiled at her husband and decided to support him in whatever he chose to do, Little Pan just clapped at her dad happy to see him enthusiastic. Dash. Vegeta took off flying and instantly arrived beside Goku what's your opinion on Harry's power level Kakarot? Goku narrowed his eyes as he saw Harry call back both Oblivion and Oath Keeper to his sides he's strong. Stronger than us in our Super Saiyan blue form and he's only using Super Saiyan God too. Vegeta nodded he has perfect kick control too. He was already very good at it but did you see what he just did? Goku nodded and sighed yeah, he did a Kamamiya wave in each hand and fired them at the same time. That was amazing and I have no doubt I wouldn't be able to do the same, not as easy as him anyways. Vegeta sighed and then nodded well, it's official, he's worse than Broly. Looks like all we can do at our current power level is to rush him and try to do as much damage as we can. Goku gazed towards Vegeta watch out for his key blades, they attack independently with no input on his part plus they seem to be some sort of autonomous defense mechanism. Goku then grinned I know we're going to lose but. I can help but feel excited. Vegeta scoffed but grinned yeah. Fighting Harry brings a lot of memories, bad and good ones. But fighting him also makes me want to hurt him, make the dragon god bleed. For some reason, I wasn't excited whenever we fought Beerus or Jiren but with Harry is different. Goku nodded and began to scream at the top of his lungs as he powered up, meanwhile Vegeta did so as well, and their auras lit up and grew high into the sky, Harry looked on and then smiled I see. They're going all out, then show me what you guys can do. Vegeta and Goku suddenly rushed forward toward Harry and reached him in a blink of an eye, Harry narrowed his eyes and got ready to act as soon as the Saiyans reached him. All three fighters began to exchange blows. Goku and Vegeta attacked with fearsome determination, trying to bring Harry at least a little bit down, but the Dragon God was easily fighting them off. Even when they would get close to scoring a hit, either Oblivion or Oath Keeper would block their attacks or fire off a spell that would force them to dodge. Harry himself would block attacks and counterattack just as fiercely, striking the bodies of Goku and Vegeta, blood flew everywhere and wounds began to pile up. But both full-blooded Saiyans weren't keen on giving up after being defeated so easily and just continued on trying harder and harder to strike Harry. Eventually, Goku punched Harry in the face which made the dragon god's head whip to the side, Goku quickly grabbed hold of Harry's arms and pulled him over to him, and kneed him in the abdomen while ignoring Oblivion striking him on the back multiple time in quick succession. Goku growled and didn't let go of Harry, which allowed Vegeta to kick him in the ribs and sent him flying and crashing into the ground, Oath Keeper then struck Vegeta on the top of the head. But the prideful Saiyan prince ignored it despite dripping blood down his face, both Saiyan roared and then cupped their hands, and Goku suddenly yelled Kamamiya. As Goku fired a massive beam of blue ki, Vegeta also fired one of his own while yelling Jairik Laho. Both beams of ki flew and headed straight toward Harry who stood up and glared at the beams of ki, this time he wasn't taken by surprise and he quickly raised a hand. Harry then fired a massive beam of green and black ki that crashed against the two ki beams from Vegeta and Goku, both Saiyans growled and gritted their teeth, as they felt their techniques being pushed back. Harry stared at both Vegeta and Goku for a few seconds before smiling, they definitely have gotten stronger but it seems that they have begun to plateau. It looks like the information I gathered about the Saiyans and possible new transformation will come in handy. Harry suddenly raised his key even more and his beam of ki suddenly rushed forward towards Vegeta and Goku who widened their eyes in shock, Vegeta actually loudly growled, no. Not Hagayan. Both Vegeta and Goku were struck by Harry's ki beam and pushed upwards while the beam began to damage their bodies, both Saiyan screamed in pain as the beam of ki took them on a ride toward the sky. Harry powered down and then looked up who boy is Vegeta going to be pissed when he lands after that despite saying that Harry couldn't help but chuckle at the fact that he sent Vegeta to the sky with a beam attack again, just like Goku had done that time Vegeta was evil and came to earth to kill them all. Chapter 128, Chapter 128 Harry waited a few moments until he caught sight of both Vegeta and Goku falling down from the sky and then crashing against the ground a few seconds, cracking it on impact. Both Saiyans gasped in pain as their bodies bounced up and down once and then stayed on the ground groaning in pain. Harry smiled and walked up to them. Vegeta opened his eyes and huffed in both pain and annoyance damn it all. He blasted me into the sky again. Damn lizard. Goku laughed but then hissed in pain from his location on the ground not too far from Vegeta now I know. How that feels. Did we reach space? Vegeta groaned almost. It's a good thing the Kibeam detonated. 
otherwise we would have taken a trip through space. Harry reached their location and spoke, Oh, you're alive. That's good, now I don't have to bring you back to life. Vegeta turned his head towards Harry and glared at him I think I want to be dead. What was that by the way? That kid beam hurt much more than everything else. Harry pointed one of his hands at both Saiyans and cast a quick Kuraga healing all of Goku's and Vegeta's wounds that was just a regular kid beam, what hurt you was the nature of my energy. Both Saiyans sat up as they recovered, Harry waved a hand and fixed their clothes as well, Goku sighed but understood what Harry was talking about oh, you mean that God Slayer and Dragon Slayer aspect of your energy, you mentioned before right? Vegeta raised an eyebrow while Harry nodded that's right because the two of you have godly kid then all my attacks do extra damage to you, your super saiyan blue forms works against you this time. The saiyans got up, Goku then sighed and looked down as he thought about what Harry just told them, meanwhile Vegeta huffed great. Now we're going to have to come up with something to counterattack beings like you. Goku nodded perhaps a new form, one not dependent on god kid. Vegeta turned his head towards Goku and frowned do you really think there's a form beyond Super Saiyan God? Goku shrugged and then grinned who knows, but when has that ever stopped us from becoming stronger and unlocking a new form? Vegeta grinned at Goku, despite not liking to agree with him, the prince of all Saiyans knew that in cases like these Goku knew what to say and he couldn't agree more with him. Harry smiled well. Since you guys pushed me a little bit, I'll give you some help or rather some clues as to unlocking a new power. Both Vegeta and Goku turned their heads towards Harry and grinned, they knew that whatever information Harry has, it would be very useful to both of them and they couldn't wait to hear it. Harry then nodded to them but first let's go back to everyone, I'm sure they're all waiting for us. Goku and Vegeta nodded and then all three fighters took off flying toward where their families were waiting. Dash. Marin was cheering after seeing her uncle Harry win the fight, her daddy might have lost but he put up a good fight and she was very proud of him. But besides that, she was amazed at how strong her Uncle Harry is. Weiss rubbed his chin while smiling amazing, he beat them quite quickly, to think he would become this strong. It's too bad that he wouldn't want to become a god of destruction, he would have made an excellent one. Kanu smiled Harry would never accept that, he's not a fan of the gods of destruction plus he would never leave us to take care of another universe. Milam giggled plus Harry is not one for reckless destruction, he's an inventor and creator first and foremost. Weiss smiled and nodded. He himself knew that Harry wasn't very compatible for the job of a destroyer, but he can dream, right? Eighteen smiled as she saw the three Saiyan coming their way, Piccolo crossed his arms while smirking meanwhile both Krillin and Gohan were waving at them. Bummer, and Videl looked up while both Baby Pan and Bra clapped their hands in excitement, soon enough Goku, Vegeta, and Harry landed in front of them. Harry waved at everyone, suddenly Marin launched herself at Harry in the Dragon God quarter and put her on his shoulders Did you have fun Marin? Marin smiled and nodded everyone was moving so fast and all I saw were blurs, but there were a lot of booms and pretty lights, it was really fun. Harry grinned, Vegeta walked up to his wife, and Bama grinned at him causing him to huff but then smile at her, Goku walked up to Goen and Krillin with a goofy smile on his face. Harry walked up to everyone and waved a hand, Piccolo, Krillin, and Goen's clothes fixed themselves, the three fighters smiled at him thankful that he fixed their clothes. Piccolo then grunted. Did you have to turn me into a toad? Harry chuckled and shrugged which made Marin wobble a bit, she giggled while Harry answered Piccolo it's a good way to incapacitate someone plus you stayed green. It's a win, win. Everyone shared a laugh and even Piccolo scoffed but chuckled too, Go and then scratched his head but man, that was fast. I feel like I didn't do anything at all. Piccolo and Vegeta nodded, since to them they felt like the fight was too fast, Harry smiled I stopped holding back a bit after all of you came after me. Otherwise I would have gotten my scaly but kicked around. Everyone smiled, Vegeta closed his eyes and nodded well, at least we were able to push you to stop holding back too much, that's a win in my book. Harry nodded it is an accomplishment, not many beings out there in the multiverse can make me stop holding back even a little bit, but then again all five of you? Yeah, I'm not playing around, I know exactly how powerful each and every one of you are after all. Those words made all the fighters feel proud, it is not often Harry gives compliments. But when he does you know it's an honest one, suddenly both Pan and Bra began to make noise and reach for Harry. Harry smiled and made both babies float and fly towards him, Pan and Bra clapped as they began to fly around him the moment they reached Harry, Videl and Bummer just smiled at the way Harry is always spoiling the girls. Harry then turned his head towards the fighters now how about I help you guys a bit, so you can reach out a new level of power? Though, to some of you it will be more of giving you a few clues. 
The fighters looked interested and nodded to Harry, then the dragon god waved at Krillin to come over to him. Krillin did so and Harry then reached the hand to him and placed two fingers on his forehead. Krillin suddenly felt a surge of power and something click within him. He then began to look over his body in surprise there. Now I gave you the same gifts I gave to Bulma, and Chi Chi so now you have magic among other things. You're ageless too by the way and have a healing factor so it's going to be difficult to kill you. Again. Krillin grinned and nodded to Harry this is cool. I can feel new power coursing through me. Harry gave Krillin a nod train and master your new abilities Krillin, plus try to mix both magic and kick. As you saw I was able to defeat Goen with a good fireball mixed with kick. Krillin nodded and was already thinking about going to the lookout and spending a day in the hyperbolic time chamber to train his new abilities. Goen frowned so that's what you did. That spell really hurt plus it burned away all the oxygen in seconds. That's why I passed out. Harry grinned, it would be a Goan who would notice how the fireball knocked him out while we're at it, Videl come over here, I will also give you the same. Videl jumped a bit but walked over to Harry, er are you sure Harry? I'm thankful don't get me wrong but are you sure you want to give me such a gift? Harry smiled and gave Videl a head pat which made her blush yeah, you're a fighter too and sooner or later Goan slowed aging will get to you like it did Bummer, and Chi Chi, so it's best I make sure you have the means to stay around for a long time for both Goan and Pan. Videl looked up and then nodded, Harry smiled at immediately did the same thing he did with Krillin, she immediately felt the surge in energy and something click making her feel stronger than ever. She looks at her body while humming this is going to take some getting used to. And some training as well but I do feel stronger. Harry smiled and then nodded well you have Goen. You can use him as a punching bag for your magic training, I'm sure he can take it. Goen looked betrayed what? Come on Uncle Harry, that's totally uncalled for. Piccolo chuckled you better begin to get good at dodging again Goen. Goen slumped in defeat while Videl giggled and then walked up to him to give him a hug don't worry Goen, I'll be gentle. Goen groaned but didn't say anything as he sulked. Meanwhile Harry laughed for a little but then turned his head towards Piccolo now as for you Piccolo, I recommend you have your full potential unlocked, either by the Dragon Balls here or the ones on Namek, I'm sure you'll awaken to new power then, especially because you fused back with Kami. Piccolo tilted his head since he was a bit lost but then Krillin grinned ah. You mean like the Grand Elder Guru on Namek did for me and Goen? That's actually not a bad idea. Harry nodded while Piccolo hummed, I think Goen told me about it before. I'll keep your advice in mind Harry, who knows it might come in handy later, but for now I want to see how strong I can get as I am. Harry nodded and smiled at his Namekian friend other than that, you should visit Namek and learn from them a bit, there are all kinds of interesting things they can do that you can learn from them. Piccolo nodded and seemed to like the idea since it held some merit, Harry then turned his head towards Goan who was done sulking I heard you say that you want to unlock a new form no one has seen before right? Goan nodded and closed his fist yes, I already have my mystic form but that's not anything close to what Super Saiyan God and Blue can do, so I decided to unlock something new, something different. Harry nodded and crossed his arms, he would have looked intense and fierce but he had Marin on his shoulders and both Pan and Bra floating around him, it made his image just seem silly to everyone. Harry then looked up towards Goen's eyes then I think your rage is the key to unlocking new power Goen. Go and narrowed his eyes, everyone was also intrigued by what Harry just said, the dragon god then continued on ever since you were a baby, your power would skyrocket whenever you were upset. I think that's your Saiyan instincts pushing you forward, seeing Broly gave me the idea that perhaps you both are the same when it comes to rage, or at least to a certain degree that is. Goku and Vegeta's eyes widen, Piccolo then sighed but wouldn't that mean that Goen would lose all reason? According to what you and Goku told me. Broly was no better than a wild beast. Harry nodded but here's the difference, the factor that allows Goen to harness that rage and turn it into power. He's half human, in fact, he's the first human and Saiyan hybrid born, so his potential could be limitless, I think if he were to harness that rage and use it to power up, he could unlock a new form unique to him, after all, he's a hybrid. Pickle O looked down and thought about it for a while, it was true that Goen's power always went off the charts whenever he was angry. He did it against Traditz and him. Krillin nodded. He had seen Goen pull off some very crazy stuff when he was angry. Vegeta crossed his arms and looked down as he reminisced about the time Goen went up against Frieza in his second form and actually hurt him. Goku smiled. He had seen the same thing while he was training with Goen in the hyperbolic time chamber during the Cell games. At the time he saw something in Goen, something feral, something beastly hiding behind his gentle eyes. Meanwhile, 
Harry walked up to Gowen and clapped his shoulder Gowen, for this to work, you have to always keep in mind what you're fighting for, why you're putting your life on the line then grab hold of that rage and make it explode. Gowen looked up at Harry and nodded, despite not liking that his rage seems to be always the key to his power, he has come to accept it and understand that it's a part of himself ever since he was a kid, so he is going to give it a try and see what happens. Gowen then turned his head towards Piccolo Mr. Piccolo, you'll help me with this right? Piccolo huffed but still smiled at Gowen sure kid, I'll give you a hand, besides helping you might help me get stronger as well. Go and grinned and then turned his head towards Vidal. His wife smiled at him and nodded Pan and I will support you Gowen. Gowen smiled at his wife and then turned towards Harry thank you, Uncle Harry. I'll give it a try and see what happens. Harry smiled and nodded to Gowen. He was happy he was able to help his nephew in all but blood and if he came to him for more help he would move planets just to give him a hand. Harry then turned his head towards both Goku and Vegeta now this is something I've been thinking about since I received the Saiyan race as a reward after leaving this world. You see as soon as I obtained it, I got knowledge about the Saiyans as a whole, it wasn't a lot but it did make me curious. Vegeta, Goku, and even Gohan gave Harry their whole attention it was after I went to another world before Evil Academy, where I obtained the ability to access the Akashic records that I was able to look more into this, though I only know a bit about this. It seems like the Saiyans tail and Ozaru form are the keys to a new form. Vegeta raised an eyebrow what do you mean? All Saiyans have tails and access to the Ozaru form, I'm sure if a new form was unlocked through those things, it would have been known to everyone on planet Vegeta a long time ago. Harry smiled ah. But you see, none of those Saiyans ever became a Super Saiyan, Goku was the first one in so many years, so I'm not surprised no one knows about this. Vegeta looked down so being a Super Saiyan is part of the process, I see, then it makes sense that no one would have known about it. Harry nodded here's the hard part though, you have to be in control of your mind while being in the Ozaru form and then turn Super Saiyan while being a great ape. Goku, Gohan, and Vegeta widened their eyes in shock while Harry went on now this form seems to be a condensed form of the Ozaru form and ups the Saiyan's potential to his and her utmost limit. The issue with that, is that it tends to make the user a bit feral and primal so I recommend you guys pick somewhere very far away to try this. Goku and Vegeta looked at each other, all of this was very interesting to them and did them excited about it, Harry smiled I think Vegeta would have fewer problems with this since he already can keep his mind in Ozaru form, but you might want to help teach Goku how to do that. Otherwise, you might have a wild great tape on your hands, if you achieve the form you should train and adapt with it on all the time, like what Goku and Gohan did before with the Super Saiyan form. Harry then shrugged that's pretty much all I know about this new and mostly unknown form, I don't even know what it looks like and what else might be needed for it, you guys will have to experiment and try a few things to see if you can achieve it. Goku and Vegeta nodded and looked pumped to already try it, Wise hummed and rubbed his chin would this new form be more powerful than Super Saiyan Blue? Harry nodded I think so, I even think you can combine God Kill with that new form, but it might be difficult because of the primal nature of the new form but the difficulty never stopped Goku and Vegeta from accomplishing something. Wise chuckled and nodded too true. I supposed I can lend a hand in this training, but I believe you need a moon in order to take in the Ozaru form right? Vegeta nodded typically, that will be the case but I can create a power ball that can bathe us in blood's waves, we can take on our Ozaru form with that, but what about our tail? It's hard, almost impossible for adults to regrow our tails once they have been cut off. Gohan raised an eyebrow ah, so that's why it never grew back after it was cut off the last time. I was wondering about that since Mr. Piccolo told me that it grew a few times after he cut it off the first time. Goku scratched his head oh? I was wondering about that too. I actually miss my tail. Vegeta scoffed and shook his head as you should. A Saiyan's tail is their source of power and even though we have grown beyond the need of having a tail, our bodies still remember when we had them. Losing our tails is like losing an arm or leg. Goku and Gohan nodded, while Bulma and Krillin looked down, back then, when Goku was small they would always worry about his tail and wanted to cut it off, but now hearing Vegeta explain a bit about them made them feel bad about thinking like that. Videl tilted her head so Gohan had a tail? What kind of tail are we talking about, and now that I think about it, what's an Osaru? Goen sweat dripped but nodded ah well, yes, I had a tail when I was kid, a brown monkey tail to be more specific and as for the Osaru, well that's a bit hard to explain. Harry smiled and took out his elder wand, he then waved it towards a small stone and it transfigured into a small great ape, he then animated it. 
the little Ozaru beat on his chest and began to stomp around while destroying everything around it, it even fired a few kibeams from his mouth. Vidal stared at the chibi Ozaru for a few seconds as it stomped around. That's kind of cute. Veg to and go and sweat dripped while Goku just chuckled. Bulma sighed it's not as cute when it's the size of a skyscraper and destroying everything around. 18 raised an eyebrow say Ayans are just too weird. Vidal looked up as she tried to imagine a big Ozaru stomping around and beating his chest, but if she was honest it sort of made her smile since she had the image of it acting like a monkey and scratching its butt. That made her giggle a bit which just made everyone stare at her in confusion. Harry though found it funny and just grinned. Krillin then turned his head towards Goen. Hey Goen, did Pan have a tail? Goen shook his head no, she wasn't born with one. I did wonder if she would but no, I guess her Saiyan blood is too diluted for her to have a tail. Veg decide not exactly, she might just grow one later on. It's true she's a quarter Saiyan but a Saiyan's genes are strong. I advise you to keep an eye on her as she grows since her tail might just grow in a moment of danger or stress. Goku hummed well my tail did grow whenever I was in big danger when I was a kid, so yeah it's a possibility. Go and nodded and then turned his head to see his daughter floating around Harry and having fun, it doesn't hurt to be more vigilant. Go and then turned his head towards Videl only to sweat dripped when he saw her hugging the little Ozaru to her chest with a big smile on her face. The more surprising thing was that the Ozaru was very calm and content. Harry chuckled well, I did make it with Goen in mind so. It probably got some of his memories of Videl being your wife. It's only natural that even being in Ozaru form it would be calm in her arms. Goen blushed at the implications of what Harry just said while Videl just grinned at him. Everyone else shared a laugh finding the whole thing funny. Piccolo then spoke up I think we can use the Dragon Balls to wish for your tails to grow back, Den did power them up when Harry made sure they wouldn't be abused. Goku and Vegeta nodded in thanks to Piccolo's information, Goku then turned his head towards Vegeta how does a Saiyan gain control of the Ozaru form? Whenever I would transform I couldn't remember much of what happened after I turned back to normal. Vegeta nodded I'm not surprised, most Saiyans get overwhelmed by the wild nature of the Ozaru, to gain control over it. You need meditation and face the Ozaru in you, then it's a matter of beating it until it obeys you. Goku nodded but then narrowed his eyes it's not as easy as it sounds right. Vegeta grinned of course not, it takes everything you have to beat your inner Ozaru, it is you after all just wilder and stronger to boot. Goku grinned and nodded wow, I'm getting excited just hearing about it. Vegeta just sighed and shrugged, meanwhile, everyone smiled at Goku. Harry then spoke up that's pretty much all I know but I do think it will help you guys in the long run, remember Frizu is running around doing Dend knows what so, it best to be prepared plus there's always someone extremely powerful showing up. Everyone nodded knowing the truth behind Harry's words, Weiss just silently nodded knowing exactly how in the vast universe there were a number of powerful individuals. Meanwhile, Harry then smiled okay with that done let's all go home. I would have wanted to visit Yamka and Shin, but Krillin just told me that they're busy, so it will have to be next time. Krillin nodded in confirmation. Harry then made Pan, Bra, and Marin float towards their mothers. Videl pouted a bit when he let go of the Chibi Ozaru and he turned back into a rock but smiled as she hugged Pan. Harry grins now he wants a ride on a dragon? Everyone laughed and nodded to Harry who then turned into his massive dragon god form, which surprised everyone since they hadn't seen this dragon form of Harry's. The girls stared at Harry's golden and silver scales in interest, while the guys just grinned at how powerful and cool he looked. Videl and Bulma quickly left to put away their rare planes back into their capsules while everyone else got on Harry's back. Soon enough Videl and Bulma joined the others on Harry's back and he took off flying with a big flap of his massive wings. Goku who chose to sit in his head chuckled this dragon form is different than the one you had access to back when you were here. Harry smiled that's because this is my dragon god form, it is the highest evolution for my kind plus back then I only had my dragon lord form which didn't give me much of a boost, though it did give me access to some dragon skills. Goku nodded I take it that you can now use those skills even when you're in your human form now, right? Harry slightly nodded to make sure he didn't send Goku flying by accident yeah when I became a dragon lord all the skills and abilities I gained throughout my adventures became available to me even in my dragon god form. Goku grinned and I bet you can use all your skills in both your dragon god and human form too right? Harry chuckled you're right, I can even summon my keyblades and have them fight alongside me when I'm in this form, I use them when I'm facing smaller enemies when I'm in my dragon god form. Goku nodded that's useful, I remember that when you used to take on your dragon form you could only use dragon abilities, you couldn't even use magic. 
Harry laughed a little I was still pretty tough to fight in that form but it was a big issue to fight like that back then, now I have more options. Goku laughed with Harry hey, you're going back to your world soon right? Harry nodded carefully again yes, I just wanted to visit everyone and see how are you doing, plus I was feeling a little restless but that fight we just had did wonders to that. Goku silently looked up for a few moments you're coming back right? Harry smiled of course I am. I've been thinking about building a portal to this world too but that's going to take a while, I have quite a few things to think about and prepare on my end before I can even think about connecting this world to mine. Goku nodded yeah, I don't blame you for being careful, there's always something or someone causing big problems in this universe, plus I think the main reason you're hesitant is because of Zeno and the angels right? Harry stayed silent for a few seconds yes, Zeno is nothing but a child with the power to destroy universes on a whim. He destroyed all other universes during the Tournament of Power and it was only because Seventeen wished them back that all of that was resolved but. Goku smiled yeah, I know. It's scary to think that he would do all of that on a whim, it made me feel guilty about the entire thing since I was practically the one who pushed forward the tournament. Harry sighed you were just being you Goku but you do have to be careful with that attitude of yours. I'm still not on par with Zeno but I'm not that far behind either, still. He's not someone I want anywhere close to where all my loved ones live, you must know what would happen if something happens to them. Goku stayed silent for a few seconds while staring up at the sky, you would do everything in your power to kill him, the gods of destruction, the angels, and probably everything he ever created. Harry slightly nodded that's right. I would take you guys away from this world but after that? I would simply kill everything and everyone he ever created or cares about. Goku sighed and nodded while patting Harry on his head that caring and protective nature of yours is what makes you the greatest guy and the most dangerous as well but, I'm glad you're that way. Harry laughed well, it's who I am. I never want to lose anyone I care about and I definitely do not want to be lonely again. But that's why I care about all my friends and family so much, it's just me being selfish Goku. Goku grinned nothing wrong with being selfish Harry, I've been plenty selfish myself as well. Harry lightly nodded too true, but in any case, I will find a good and safe way to connect this world with mine, that way all of you can visit whenever and hang out, I do have a lot of strong and powerful friends I want you to meet. Goku smirked in excitement that sounds like fun. I can't wait and then he can go to that other world you mentioned. And have this bro field trip you mentioned as well. Harry laughed it's going to be awesome. The guy's getting into all kinds of trouble and adventures. I can't wait to go to Evil Academy with the guys. Goku nodded and after that, both he and Harry continued to speak about lighter stuff while the dragon god gave everyone a ride home. Dash. Harry left Piccolo by his house first, which surprised him a bit, apparently, Den helped build it in the Namekian style which made it the perfect home for Piccolo. After saying goodbye and leaving Piccolo in his house, Harry then took Videl, Gohan, and Pan in theirs, Pan didn't want to leave until she got to hug Harry's big snout goodbye, something the dragon god was more than happy to let her do. After saying their goodbyes Harry then took off flying and went to Krillin's house, Marin also wanted to hug Harry's big dragon snout goodbye and Harry let her. Marin was thrilled and excited that her uncle was a big and pretty dragon, so she ran back home with a big smile on her face, Krillin and Eighteen smiled at their daughter and then said their goodbyes to Harry. Harry took off into the sky and towards Capsule Corp and Bummer's house, once their bra was sleeping by then but Harry still gently rubbed his snout on her cheek which made her smile. Harry then said his goodbyes to Bummer and Vegeta. Harry then told Vegeta to be careful about trying to achieve the new form. Meanwhile, Gunu gave Bummer a pot a household smartphone and told her that with it she can call them whenever. Of course, Bummer was both very impressed and excited about the new piece of technology, though Gunu warned her to be careful with it since they only have a few to spare and to make one they need some very rare and expensive materials from the natural dungeon. Harry did promise to send her the schematics for it over the phone sometime later so she can study it, you never know, she might just be able to upgrade it or even make it better. After that Harry said his goodbyes and Weiss left since he had to check on Beerus he quickly disappeared, Harry then took off flying again, this time only Goku, Kanu, and Milam were with him and so he headed to Mount Posa while flying he had some conversations with Goku about his upcoming plan to go training with Weiss on Beerus's planet. Apparently, he wanted to take Broly with him and Veg2 as well in order for all three of them to get stronger together, plus he also wanted to teach Broly a few things as well so it would be for the best for the three of them to train together. Harry agreed with the idea but told him to wait until he and Veg2 unlocked the new form and train with it a bit, that way they can also help Broly attempt to gain the form. 
Goku agreed thinking it was a good idea and with that said Harry eventually arrived at the Sun household. Chi Chi had seen a big golden and silver dragon coming towards their house through the window of her kitchen and panicked a bit. But she then sensed it was Harry thanks to her new senses and abilities and calmed down, so she and Goten went outside to wait for them. Goten didn't wait though, and took off flying towards Harry and began to inspect the cool dragon all over the place. He then saw his dad sitting on the dragon's head and immediately flew to him. Goku grinned and caught his second son and hugged him laughing. Meanwhile, Harry landed in front of Chi-Chi who was smiling at him. Harry then grinned which made Chi-Chi raise an eyebrow at him, only to panic as Harry took out his tongue and licked her Harry Potter. Uh? Harry chuckled as he stared at the drenched Chi-Chi who was glaring at him while both Goku and Goten laughed. He knew he would get a frying pan to the head because of this but in his mind, all he said was, Worth it Tilda. Chapter 129 Chapter 129 after Chi Chi scolded him and used her famous frying pan technique, the one even the strongest of Saiyans are wary of, they all went to hang out a bit before going to sleep. With everything that happened that day, night came upon them rather quickly and everyone finally felt the fatigue of the day, even Harry who was not supposed to feel tired was feeling a bit sleepy. They still talked about what happened and the battle the boys had against Harry, Chi Chi just huffed and shook her head in amusement, she knew all too well that her boys were fighters. Even though she didn't like it, she understood that fighting is important to them, mainly because Harry showed her that you can be both a fighter and a successful intelligent person, she always was thankful that Goen was heavily influenced by him. Sure she would have wanted her son to just be a scholar but she was happy with the way he grew up nonetheless after a few hours of speaking and having some fun together. The time to finally go to sleep came, and everything quieted down as the Sun family plus guests went to sleep and rest for the rest of the night. Dash. The next morning, it was time for Harry and the girls to go back home, so they ate breakfast with the Sun family and then went outside to go back to their world. Goku grinned at Harry as the Dragon God got his system ready to make the jump, Harry then looked up and smiled at the Sun family well it's time to go home guys. Goku nodded I know, but make sure you visit soon. Chi Chi nodded while Goten grinned and fist pump, Harry smiled and gave them a nod I'll drop by for a visit sometime later and I'll try to come up with a way for all of you to come to our world for a visit safely. The Sun family nodded and happily smiled at the fact that Harry was still thinking of ways to make it possible for them to come visit his world despite the concerns he has. Harry then waved at them along with Kanu and Milim well, see you guys later, and do tell everyone that we'll come back sometime later. The sons waved back at Harry and the girls, suddenly the air around them cracked like glass and then shattered, a few seconds later the world repaired itself, and Harry and the girls were now gone. Chi Chi teared up a bit, and Goku hugged her it's okay, Chi Chi, we'll see Harry soon enough and besides he'll find a way for us to visit too. Chi Chi nodded I know, I just, he's missed a lot you know? He spent a very long time with us, and when he was gone the house felt empty, now it feels the same way. Goku nodded, Harry had been with him and Chi Chi for a very long time, he was family now after all, so when he left his absence was felt deeply, Goten suddenly spoke up don't worry mum, Uncle Harry will be back soon. Chi Chi smiled at her second son and nodded, Goku grinned and looked up at the sky, he knew it was only a matter of time before Harry to came up with a way for everyone to go to his world without risking his, and he couldn't wait for that to happen. Dash. A day after Harry, Milim, and Kanu came back from visiting the world Milim began to call Dragon Ball, they all got back to their everyday stuff. Harry of course went back to lazing around for a bit, he knew that it was a matter of time before something came his way so he wanted to take advantage of his free time while he can. This is how Yasaku and Amaterasu found him sleeping behind the big house surrounded by his demigod children, who were napping beside him or on top of his back. To their surprise Hestia and Rhea were also sleeping on top of his head, it made both Yasaku and Amaterasu giggle in amusement as they watched a big sleeping dragon surrounded by children and two goddesses. Harry heard their giggles and opened one eye, Yasaku noticed him do so and walked up to him. She then gently caress his snout sorry to wake you dear, but we have a situation here that we thought would be best for you to deal with, since we really don't know how to proceed with the situation, it out of the norm. Harry blinked and then began to gently teleport the children, Hestia and Rhea into their rooms and into their beds so they can continue sleeping, Harry then got up on all fours and shook his body for a little bit. After that he then turned back into his human form, Yasaka smiled and immediately hugged him when she noticed he still looked a bit sleepy sorry Harry, looks like you were deep asleep huh? Harry hugged Yasaka back and then nuzzled her neck, he then smiled it's fine Yasaka, I knew it was a matter of time before something came around that needed my attention. 
Yes, Arka nodded and let go of Harry, Amatrice who walked up to him, which made Harry raise an eyebrow. Hello Amatran, if you're here then, we're dealing with a god right? Amatrice who smiled and nodded yes, as you were informed some time ago, the Norse faction have been trying to get in touch with us for a while, we of course have been delaying any attempt for now, so they sent a representative to speak with us. Yes Arka then continued on so they sent Thor and the Oaf has been camping around outside the wards and waiting until we came out to talk to him, he's been there for weeks now. Harry sighed he's not causing any trouble is he? Amatrice who shook her head not at all, he seems quite content with just camping out and waiting for us to come talk to him, to be honest, he is a good god, a bit of a muscle head but a good deity nonetheless. Harry nodded I see, so what do you guys want me to do? Yes Arka smiled at Harry and then spoke up well. We decided to see what they want, the Norse faction and the fake kingdom have been trying to arrange a meeting with us for a while, especially after we showed the world just how advanced Neo Kyoto is. Yasaka then shrugged but as you know, we have been terribly busy these last few months with everything that happened with the Greek faction, the demigod children, and Greek gods relocation to our faction. Harry nodded yeah, so now that we're a bit freer you want to see what they want? Both Yasaka and Amatrasu nodded. Harry then nodded back at them and stretched all right. Then I'll go let Thor into Neo Kyoto and bring him to your office Yasaka, you gather office, Sarah Fall, and Elman Hilda together so they can hear what he has to say too. Yasaka nodded and immediately turned around and began to head back to her office, while Amaterasu followed her close behind. Harry then took off flying and headed towards the unknown energy signature he picked up after extending his senses to cover outside the wards, he immediately picked up a godly energy, one carrying a sense of lightning and thunder. He followed it towards who he believes is the Thor of this world, Harry would admit that he was curious as to how the Thor of this world is, compared to the one he knows of so he was looking forward to meeting him. Dash. Thor would be lying if he said that he wasn't enjoying himself camping out outside the wards of Neo Kyoto, though he would deny it if asked by his father, but something about hunting, living in the wilderness, and sleeping under the stars always appealed to him. Sure he wasn't too happy to be sent to get a meeting with the leaders of Neo Kyoto by his further Rodin and being told to not come back until he got it just aggravated him, but he wasn't in a hurry or too concerned about it either. So instead he decided to enjoy himself and patiently wait. He was pretty sure someone knew he was out here already anyways, he did wonder why his father wanted to speak with Neo Kyoto so much though. He was pondering all of this as he watched the dancing flame of his campfire, when someone landed not too far from his little campsite, the god of thunder and justice immediately stood up and brandished Mjolnir towards who had just arrived. To his shock, his hammer flew out his hand and was caught by the new arrival who inspected him. It's bigger than the one I know of, plus this one really is a divine weapon. Thor narrowed his eyes, and he recognized the one who just arrived, Harry Potter the Dragon God has appeared in front of him, the undisputed number one of the world's strongest beings was right before him and he didn't know how to react. The God of Thunder and Justice was left a bit stunned too, not only did he have a being known for his unforgiving nature, but he also had someone take Mjolnir from him like it was nothing. That was a shock all by itself since his beloved weapon and symbol of power could only be held by someone worthy and it seems Harry Potter was someone worthy, but that just left Thor in a rather peculiar situation. To his surprise however, Harry just smiled at him and threw Mjolnir back at him, Thor caught it and looked at Harry in confusion, the dragon god shrugged at him I'm not here to fight you Thor Odinson, though I am curious as to why you're here, what does the Norse faction want with Neo Kyoto? Thor relaxed since Harry seemed to be not hostile towards him right now, he was still wary but decided that it was best to keep things civil. Meanwhile Harry stared at this Thor and noticed the differences between this one and the one he knew. This Thor was not only taller but also more muscular than the one in the Marvel Universe, unlike the Thor of that world that was blonde, the one before him had red hair and a beard, he's completely different from the Thor I know, though the most glaring difference, is that this one is a true god. Thor sighed and scratched his head, look I'm not good with politics and fancy talk Harry Potter, may I speak frankly with you? Harry raised an eyebrow but nodded, Thor smiled and then proceeded to speak honestly. I have no fucking clue what the old man wants, but it must be serious if he chose to send me here to speak with you though, he did warn me to not to provoke the yokai faction and you. Thor then shrugged news of what has happened to Ares and Zeus has begun to spread, needless to say, you have all the deities of the world practically shitting their pants with the fact that you can permanently kill and cripple gods. Harry nodded and stared at Thor who just grinned don't get me wrong Harry Potter. I'm one of the ones who believe you did the right thing, teaching the Greek faction a lesson has been something that needed to be done a long time ago, 
It is a well-known fact how arrogant Zeus was. Harry sighed I didn't do it because of that. I'm sure the other factions were somewhat aware of the demigods and how they were treated right? Thor frowned, there were rumors but nothing concrete, any other faction would have criticized the Greek faction harshly if those rumors were true but in the end, we wouldn't have been able to do anything about it. Harry nodded, Amaterasu who had explained that deities having children with humans is rare and that any demigod born should have been treated like a miracle. So she was utterly disgusted and angry at how the Greek gods treated their children and it seems like all the other factions agreed with her, Thor's unhappy frown right now was proof of that. Thor frowned and shook his head all I know right now, is that the Judeo-Christian factions reached out to us to join in their peace treaty but further refused, instead he chose to reach out to you guys but that's all I know. Harry frowned I see, well Yasaku and Amaterasu sent me to see what you wanted but they're also willing to meet up with you along with the other leaders of the Yokai faction, they want to know what the Norse faction wants, but it looks like we'll have to go talk to Odin in person. Thor nodded seems that way, I still would like to meet with the leaders of Neo Kyoto and get confirmation for my further about a meeting, or something. Harry nodded yeah, I'll grant you temporary access to Neo Kyoto, but be warned. The moment you try to do anything stupid the wards will react, and you more than likely, will be turned into a blob of gore before you could even twitch a finger. Thor flinched at the very unpleasant image Harry just gave him, but nodded, with that said Harry snapped his fingers and Thor felt something latch onto his core. Harry nodded to him that's the wards allowing access to Neo Kyoto, now come on, I'm sure everyone has already gathered to hear you from you. Thor bowed a little to Harry, he was thankful he was allowed in, though he was very much afraid as well, but he has managed to fulfill his father's request and that was enough for him right now. Dash. Harry took Thor to Yasaka's office where Amaterasu, Sarah Fall, Elman Hilda, office, and Yasaka herself had already gathered and were waiting for the both of them to arrive. Thor wasted no time explaining the same thing he explained to Harry not so long ago, but his explanation did leave everyone very confused and concerned, Thor of course apologized for the vagueness but he himself had no idea what Odin wanted. Soon after Thor decided to take his leave and Harry sent a shadow clone with him to take him back to his campsite to pack and leave immediately, the yokai faction had decided to meet with Odin in Asgard and he wanted to go tell the news to his father right away. Meanwhile, the currently present leaders of Neo Kyoto decided to have a meeting to speak about what was going on right now. So they all sat around Yasaka's desk and began to have a conversation, of course, Office chose to sit on Harry's lap but other than that everyone was ready to talk. Harry turned his head towards Yasaka while hugging Office by her waist what do you think about all of this? Yasaka frowned but decided to respond well Odin might be an old pervert but he is a very old god, he's wise and can see beyond what is going on in any situation. If he refused to join in the peace treaty with the devils, angels, and fallen, then that means he believes they can't help with whatever is going on with Asgard right now. Sarah Fall crossed her arms and looked down I did hear from mom and dad, that Azazel did reach out to Odin since they're all drinking buddies, but he completely refused any notion of ever having Asgard join the peace treaty. Sarah Fall then suddenly shrugged and shook her head both Serzix and Azazel were very disappointed that Asgard didn't want to join the peace treaty, I'm not surprised Odin chose not to though. Harry hummed, while he wondered the reason why the all further would refuse to ally Asgard with the Judeo-Christian factions why? What would make the Norse faction deny joining? Amaterasu who was the one who answered Harry's questions Asgard is the type of faction who values strength and power, let's be honest here. Both the devils and fallen angels have made some very stupid mistakes as of late, especially when it comes to our faction but it's not only that either. Elm and Hilda who had been quietly listening to everything decided to speak next they have also proven themselves to be weak, something that has been happening often too, the devils lost Seraphal and the entire Sightree devil clan, that's not even counting the devils that have left to join our faction as well. The Fallen have lost a big number of their members lately, regardless if they were weak and practically fodder the fact of the matter is, that the Fallen faction's numbers have decreased quite a bit and thus lost a lot of power as well. Harry hummed as he thought about what he just heard so Asgard doesn't think they're reliable then? But what about heaven, despite them having caused so many problems as well, they are actively doing something to fix things. Amaterasu who shook her head heaven is well hated among other pantheons and so is the church as well, they did undermine other religions and spread their influence throughout the word. Sometimes they did so aggressively. Harry sighed I see, so they wouldn't trust them either. But then why trust us then? We're well known to be ruthless and quite frankly very dangerous as well. Yasaka nodded that is true. We have quite a reputation among the factions and we have killed a lot of beings. 
Office then spoke up We only have gone after those that provoked us, we have never gone out of our way to antagonize or provoke anything or anyone. Everything that we have done has been the result of provocation on some part. Amaterasu nodded yes, we also are the strongest and the most advanced faction in the world, that must be the reason Asgard is willing to try and meet with us, they know we might refuse but they're still willing to try. Harry looked down a bit as he thought about all of this, everyone looked at him and waited for him to come to a decision, though he wasn't aware that they were waiting on his word. Meanwhile, he wondered exactly what was going on in Asgard to actually reach out to them, Thor didn't seem to know but he could see why Odin sent him, the god of thunder of this world was a mellow guy and a pretty calm individual. So Odin knew that he wouldn't cause unnecessary problems by sending him to wait around the wards of Kyoto, a tactic that worked because it caught the attention of Amaterasu and Yasaka. Still, Harry wondered what problems the Asgardians had, I'll go and talk to Odin myself and see what's going on, Sarah Fall, Yasaka can you come with me as well? I want your opinions once we find out what's going on. Both Serafal and Yasaka nodded and were happy to help Harry in any way, Office looked up and stared at Harry for a few seconds before speaking I'll go as well, I'm also very curious as to what that old god wants. Harry nodded but seemed curious you've met Odin before? Office nodded a long time ago, yes, back then he was quite the energetic and curious young man, I remember he badgered me for a long time for information about the dimensional gap. He was very annoying. Harry chuckled and gave Office a head pat which she seemed to enjoy quite a bit, the other leaders smiled seeing this, and Amaterasu stood up from her chair then we'll leave the decision of whether to let Asgard join our faction or not, to you Harry. Harry nodded we'll leave for Asgard tomorrow, for the rest of you? Well just rest and prepare. Everyone nodded and began to leave, Harry himself got up while carrying Office in his arms, and Serafal jumped on his back while Yasaka wrapped him up in her tails. It was times like these that made Harry very glad that he was really strong, otherwise, his girlfriends might have broken something off him, either way, the full left, to go home and rest for the rest of the day. Tomorrow promises to be a busy day for them, so they wanted to be well rested and relaxed to deal with whatever they might have to face tomorrow. Dash. Harry woke up early and got ready for the day, he went downstairs to the kitchen and sat down at the dinner table, Hala who had been cooking, wasted no time making and serving him breakfast. Harry watched her as she hummed and went back to the kitchen to continue cooking breakfast for the rest of the family, the family wouldn't take too long to wake up and come down hungry. Harry smiled as he watched Halo happily smile as she cooked breakfast, he always found it surprising just how much she had changed from the time he met her and beat her around, to now. He was glad she was happy now, though she does tend to fight a lot with Himiko for the right to cook in the house, but even then she was always happily smiling and laughing while Himiko tries to kill her. Though watching her now, made him wonder what the Hela of this world was like, if he remembered correctly she is a goddess of death, which means she was also working under him. Perhaps he should go visit and see how everything is doing with that side of death's domain, and meet the Hela of this world and see the differences between the two, but that's a maybe for now. He still didn't know what was going on, with the Asgardians and what was the problem they have, until he does, all he can do is just wait and see. As Hela began to serve more breakfast for the rest of the family, Harry looked up at her hey Hela, where are the girls? Hela stopped in her tracks and smiled at Harry, she then looked up and hummed I believe they went on another one of their adventures, Ari and Morgan came to me and asked me to cook a lot of food and snacks and they only do that when they're planning a long trip or adventure. Harry smiled and nodded I see, I wonder what those five little munchkins are doing? Hela smiled whatever they are doing, is going to be something fun at the very least. Both Hela and Harry shared a laugh. Soon after Halo went back to making and serving breakfast, Office, Sarah Fall, and Yasaka came down and also sat to have a quick breakfast. Meanwhile, Harry drank some coffee and waited for them with a smile, since he had already finished eating. Soon everyone living in the Potter household came down to have breakfast, all of Harry's girlfriends gave him a morning kiss and hug, and went to have breakfast, while they began to talk about their plans for the day. Harry smiled while drinking his coffee as he heard all about everyone's busy day, even though the adults of the house had quite a few things to do, they were still smiling and having fun. That showed that despite being busy, everyone was having a good fun time with everything they were doing in their day, which made Harry happy. Eventually, Office, Sarah Fall, and Yasaka finished their breakfast, so they and Harry said their goodbyes to the family and headed out the backyard to get going to Asgard. Thanks to Sarah Fall who had gone to Esgard before when she was a part of the Devil Faction, Harry now knew where Esgard was and so with a wave of his hand, he created a dark corridor straight to Odin's palace. Dash.
some time before Harry left his home. Odin sat on his throne with a worried frown on his face as he looked down, his son Thor had returned from his task yesterday and brought good news, it seems like the Yokai faction agreed to meet with him here. But even though this is what Odin wanted he was also very worried, the Yokai faction and Harry Potter had quite a nasty reputation after all, and the All Father didn't want that reputation to come true while he was in Asgard. So he was going to be really careful in how he dealt with the Dragon God coming to talk to him, he was glad he had sent Thor on this task since his son had mellowed out a lot. So his nonchalant approach of just camping and waiting to see what happens worked like a charm though he did panic a bit when it was Harry Potter who had chosen to see what Thor was doing in his lands. What had happened to Ares and Zeus was beginning to spread and many gods were now terrified of Harry Potter, he couldn't really blame them though, Odin himself was scared as well. After all, Harry Potter has the ability to permanently kill gods and even crippled them, something that was never seen or thought possible before, and that in itself is a very scary concept to gods like himself. Suddenly a young and very beautiful silver-haired girl walked over to him, Odin sighed knowing that she was, more than likely here to scold him or something. He really wished this young Valkyrie would relax a bit Rosses, what is it? Rosses frowned and raised an eyebrow I know your majesty must be very worried about the upcoming meeting with Neo Kyoto, but should you really just sit here and do nothing? There's no knowing when the Yokai faction will send someone to talk to us. Odin sighed and was about to respond when a pillar of darkness sprouted from the ground, Odin sat up straight while Rossi sculpted and took a step back. Out of the pillar of darkness came walking out Yasaka and Seraphall, and this made Odin smile having already spoken to these two ladies set him at ease but then a third and fourth person came through and those two sent a shiver go down his spine. The first one was bad enough as it is since it was none other than Ophis, the dragon god of infinity but the fourth person was the one that made Odin sweat, for Harry Potter stepped out of the pillar of darkness and looked around. Harry stared at the Asgard of this world and took a look around, the difference between the one he visited before and this one was quite vast. The Asgard from the world where the Avengers live was a combination between magic and technology making it look both modern and majestically beautiful. This Asgard was beautiful too, but that beauty came from the rustic appearance of the place and the mysticism surrounding the area, magic here is very thick and abundant. Harry then looked up and noticed an old man with long white hair and a long white beard, wearing a monocle staring down at them. Unlike the Odin he met before, this one was wearing some very shabby and old looking robes. Besides him and standing by his throne, where he was sitting down was a silver-haired young woman wearing some kind of silver suit, she looked rather scared and shaky right now. Odin sighed and stood up from his throne I welcome you to Asgard, Seraphal Leviathan, Yasaka leader of the Yokai, Office the Dragon God of Infinity, and... Odin turned to look at Harry who just stared at him Harry Potter, the third and most powerful dragon god in this world, thank you for taking the time to come have a talk with me. Yasaka smiled and then spoke, what's this, why so polite Odin? Not going to make a comment about my breasts? Odin frowned. He knew that Yasaka was having too much fun with this, and going by Seraphal's grin so was she, but he supposed he had it coming, so the old god sighed yeah. I'm not about to say something like that when you brought Harry Potter with you, I might be old but I'm not stupid. Yasaka and Seraphal smiled enjoying watching the old man squirm, Office then shook her head you're wrong, Harry was the one who brought us, he's the one who came to speak with you, all we're doing here is offer our thoughts and advise. Odin's eyes widened while Harry walked up and stood in the middle of Yasaka and Seraphall, he then looked up towards Odin all right all father, we're here to listen to what you have to say, we'll decide on what to do once we understand the situation. Odin was sweating a bit since Harry was subtlety letting out a bit of his presence causing pressure to fall on the old god's shoulders, Rosses stared in confusion as Odin looked to be struggling. But the all father understood the threat very clearly. Harry had just told him with his display of power to not waste his time and to not lie. Luckily for Odin, he hadn't planned to do that and so he began to honestly speak, Asgard has been under the attack of a group of terrorists lately, unfortunately, these terrorists were able to sway my son Loki into joining them. And so he seeks to start Ragnarok with these terrorists' help. Harry frowned and turned his gaze towards Office who shrugged and shook her head letting him know that she didn't know what was going on. Harry then turned his gaze towards Odin this terrorist group, by any chance is it called the Chaos Brigade? Odin nodded yes. It seems that what Azazel told me was true, the Yokai faction knows about the Chaos Brigade and is even protecting their former leader. Odin turned his gaze towards Office who shrugged I might have been their leader but now I have nothing to do with them, I'm the leader of the Dragon faction now along with Harry, so I have no idea what the Chaos Brigade is doing right now, 
I never paid much attention to them anyways. Odin looked surprised at how much Office just spoke and how she expressed herself as well, but he then frowned and looked down so you don't know what they're planning either? Office shook her head, Harry sighed the Coes Brigade is just a big group of children playing at war, they have so many fingers in so many things, that even they don't know what they're fighting for, they all just want to cause death and destruction and the fact that they want to now cause Ragnarok means, that they just want to see the world burn. Seraphal frown there's no doubt that the Coes Brigade is the enemy of the Yokai faction and we have been killing them and their leaders all this time, so they're very cautious about provoking us. Yasaka hummed, that might be why they chose to go after Asgard, causing Ragnarok would no doubt affect the entire world, given how the Asgardians are usually not ones to ask for aid, perhaps they thought they could easily get away with it? Harry shook his head no, they knew we would eventually notice something going on, so they're expecting us to confront them so they must have some sort of secret weapon or something that is giving them this kind of confidence. Everyone stayed quiet as they pondered on the situation, suddenly Ross is gasped Loki. Loki is the key to all of this, him and his children maybe even that evil dragon as well. Yasaka frowned you mean the evil dragon Jorman Gandran Fenra, Hearty and Skull correct? Rossis nodded, and Office sighed Jorman Gandra is a toxic dragon or other serpent dragon that specializes in the use of poisons, that's not something that can affect anyone in the yokai faction, we all have immunity to things like poisons. Harry, Sarah Fall, and Yasaka nodded, anyone, including the elderly and the children of Neo Kyoto, could easily kill a dragon of Jormungand level and power with ease, Office then continued on Hearty and Skull aren't a problem either. Again Seraphal and Yasaka nodded in agreement as well, Seraphal then spoke up if I remember correctly those two symbolize the cycle between death and life correct? Odin and Rossis nodded, Seraphal then smiled then Harry can deal with them, I doubt they can do anything to him as it is. Harry nodded but then Office continued on Fenrir is a problem though, he's a god slayer and as such, a very dangerous and powerful foe, only those of the Potter household hold can deal with him. Harry smiled even then he shouldn't be that much of a problem, the difficulty lies in the fact of its nature as a god slayer, the real issue here is Loki, the Coast Brigade easily got him to join up and I'm sure he will be a problem to everyone so, what is it, that you want to do Odin? He is your son after all, how will you take responsibility for his actions, or perhaps you will let him face the consequences of his actions instead? Odin stared at Harry for a few moments, he knew his next answer was important and whatever his choice was, would decided what the yokai faction would do next and that made him feel very nervous. Chapter 130 Chapter 130 Odin stared at Harry in silence for a few moments while pondering his question, just what was his plan to deal with Loki and his so-called children? It was a fact that Loki has always been a problem and had caused many conflicts in both Asgard and the other supernatural factions. But as a father, Odin always hoped he would one day learn and become a better person, however, the issue now, was that he had willingly joined a terrorist organization and brought war to Asgard with the intention of starting Ragnarok. That in itself is not something that Odin can just ignore or even pass over as one of Loki's pranks, Ragnarok was a very serious matter, one that would affect everyone in the world and Odin can't just allow that to happen. So the All-Father looked down and tiredly sighed, Rosses, who had never seen him like this, looked at him in surprise, while Harry quietly waited for Odin's answer. The All-Father suddenly stood up and walked down the stairs towards Harry and stopped right before him. Harry stared into the eyes of the Elder God while he began to speak Loki must be stopped at all cost, he brought war to Asgard and his actions would bring nothing but death and destruction to the world. He might be my son but he has to suffer the consequences of his actions. Harry stared at Odin even if that means his death? Odin stared at Harry in silence but then nodded yes. Harry closed his eyes and nodded very well, the all further Odin, what exactly do you want from the yokai faction? Odin nodded and then began to explain as I just told you, Loki has allied himself with the Chaos Brigade and began to attack Asgard, we've been dealing with this war for a few weeks now, but we have done our best to keep everything under wraps. However the Einhager have been fighting them non-stop and so have some of the Valkyries, but it won't be long before they're overwhelmed Loki and his children will eventually join in the battle, and at that point, things would become too difficult. Office tilted her head ah, I see, you're trying to avoid the prophecy of the Norns. The one where Fenra kills you and Jormungand kills Thor. Yasaka hummed I see, so in order to prevent Ragnarok from happening you're keeping yourself and Thor away from this war but in doing so, you're allowing Loki to gain ground in the war. Odin nodded while Harry sighed a stalemate then, this way Loki can't cause Ragnarok but he's practically free to kill and destroy everything else. Odin sighed yes, this is why I need help. 
At first I was thinking about having Asgard join the peace treaty with the Judeo-Christian factions, but, they're honestly a mess. They wouldn't be able to help at all and they lack any real powerful individuals. Of course, there are the Mu, the Archangels, and the Governors of the Fallen Angels, but I doubt they can all mobilize to help us. Seraphor nodded yeah, Serzix and Ajika wouldn't be able to openly join in the battle, they would risk the Devil faction if they weren't there for an extended period of time. The Archangels are too busy with the Purge and I doubt they will be able to help with their short numbers and Azazel might be able to help, but it wouldn't be much, to begin with. Offus silently looked up but still spoke up so you sought out the strongest faction, the one who could move and the makes any decisions without consequence. Right old god? Odin nodded yes, everyone knows of the power of the yokai faction as a whole, its unparalleled advances in technology and because of Harry Potter. You guys even have your own Valkyries as well. It's like you grab the best of all worlds and add it to your power. I have never seen anything like it before in all my long-lived life. The yokai faction successfully mixed in so many cultures, races, magics, technology and so much more, and right under all of our noses. All of you have done something everyone thought impossible. So I sought you all out for help. Harry closed his eyes and exhaled. He didn't know much about this Odin, other than, he's a big old pervert but that's something he has gotten used to dealing with. But other than that, the dragon god didn't know the sort of person he is, the sort of god he is, or the sort of actions he would take if he were to join the yokai faction. But this was also an elder god openly asking for help, something almost no other god would do, not with how prideful and arrogant they are, so it made Harry consider the all further's request. Harry opened his eyes and turned his gaze towards Seraphal and Yasaka, both Mu and Nine-Tailed Fox smiled and gave him a nod. He then turned his gaze toward Office, who just shrugged but smiled at him letting him know she didn't care what he chose to do. Harry then turned his head towards Odin who was quietly waiting for Harry's response alright, I'll give you a hand, this isn't my first time helping an Asgard of sorts anyways, now give me more details about who is exactly is helping Loki. Odin seemed a bit confused about Harry's comment about having helped an Asgard before, but chose to ignore that. He then moved his gaze towards Rosis, who nodded and came down the stairs leading to Odin's throne. She then stood beside Odin and began to explain along with having to deal with Loki, Fenra, Hati, Skull, and Jormungand. We also had to deal with fallen angels, devils, stray exorcists, and even frost giants as well. Harry looked down, yeah, definitely the Chaos Brigade Harry then turned his head towards Sarah Fall Sarah, informed both Azazel and Serzix that they're about to receive a big order of dead corpses. Ross is sculpted while Odin just lightly smiled, it is well known that Harry Potter would always deliver the bodies of those he killed to their corresponding factions, a scare tactic that had made his legend become a horror story among the supernatural world. Sarah Fall smiled and nodded, she immediately took out her phone and began to make phone calls, meanwhile Harry turned his head towards Odin Frost Giants. Odin nodded they're taller than a two-floor building, skin blue as ice, and really tough to kill, they can breathe frost breath and are very physically strong as well. They're also very smart and crafty, don't let the fact that they're giants make you believe they're stupid. Harry nodded, Office then spoke up do you want some help, Harry? Harry smiled at Office and shook his head no for this one, I was thinking of letting the Digimon have some fun with this, especially the knights since they've been sort of bored lately, I'll handle Loki myself. The girls nodded, Harry then turned his head towards Yasaka while Rosis looked very worried for some reason Yasaka, you stay here with Office and organize Asgard to join the Yokai faction as an ally like the Vampire faction, tell him the rules as well. Yasaka nodded and grinned at Odin who nervously began to sweat, he knew Yasaka was going to enjoy making him squirm for a while, meanwhile, Rosis seemed like she had enough and decided to speak her, um Lord Potter? Harry turned his head towards Rosis and raised an eyebrow when he saw her look very nervous and shaky yes? Miss? Rosis jumped a bit at being actually addressed since she thought Harry would just ignore her, but she quickly composed herself I am Rosis, sir. I was just wondering if it was really alright to take Loki's army so lightly. I know you're really strong but are you sure you can take on Loki and his children, while these Digimon, take care of his army? Harry hummed, well. I guess not everyone knows about the Digimon so it's normal to be in doubt, but trust me, it's more than enough plus I can take care of Loki and his children just fine. Rosis frowned but nodded, Harry noticed her doubt so he smiled how about this? Would you like to come and see how the battle goes? You can see for yourself that there's nothing to worry about. Rosis looked in doubt and turned her head towards Odin who just sighed you worry too much Rosis. But if you want, you may go. 
Rossis nodded to Odin and then turned her head back to Harry and gave him a determined look if you don't mind I would like to accompany you, Lord Potter. Harry just lightly smiled you can just call me Harry, I'm not one for formalities anyways, I take it you know where the battles are taking place right? Rossis lightly smiled and nodded yes, Loki's army has been trying to get into Asgard in the city around the palace since the beginning of the war, even as we speak there are battles going on around all over Asgard. Harry nodded all right, then we'll take care of that army and this will force Loki to come out to us in the open, I will then deal with him and his children. Rossis nodded while Harry turned towards the girls just in case keep your senses on, you never know if Loki has any surprises, so just in case be ready to protect Asgard. Office, Seraphal and Yasaka nodded, Odin smiled and seemed thankful, Rossis was actually very impressed with the way Harry would speak and deal with these kinds of situations, she quite liked the fact that she finally met a serious leader. Harry then created a dark corridor beside him and turned his head towards Rossis all right, step through but make sure to be ready to fly, since this dark corridor will leave us high in the sky. Rossis looked quite curious about the dark corridor and stared at it for a few seconds, she has always been very interested in magic, so seeing the magic of the element of darkness made her very curious. She could tell this dark corridor, created a pathway between two points, hence the name but she couldn't decipher any more than that, still, she nodded and walked up towards the dark corridor. Her body glowed as she equipped her Valkyrie armor and smiled as she got close to the dark corridor, a part of her was really excited to see what the very famous and powerful dragon god, Harry Potter can do. She was hoping to see some amazing magic used, soon enough Rossis walked into the dark corridor, Harry chuckled and shook his head so that's a Valkyrie? I'll have to introduce her to Brunhilde sometime later. Harry soon walked inside the dark corridor so he missed Odin gaping at him, the Allfather turned his head toward Yasaka did he just say Brunhilde? Yasaka just giggled maybe? Odin deadpanned at Yasaka and sighed you're going to be a right pain in my ass, aren't you Yasaka? Yasaka just smiled I don't know what you mean Lord Odin, I'm just making sure to follow my dragon god boyfriend's orders, I'm not at all getting back at you for all the times you made perverted comments about my butt and breasts. Yasaka then tilted her head and gave Odin the sweetest smile he had ever received, the Allfather flinched as he recognized the threat, yeah you're holding a grudge all right. Seraphal laughed at the old god who is about to have a hard time with her harem sister, while Office just smiled and shook her head, she had to admit that Odin had this coming. Dash. Rossis came out of the dark corridor and immediately spread her wings and used her magic to float in the sky, a few moments later Harry stepped out of the dark corridor and actually stood in Madeira to Rossis's surprise. She looked down towards Harry's feet and noticed he was standing on some sort of invisible platform made out of some kind of energy she didn't recognize, but it looked interesting to see someone create a construct out of energy. She wondered if it can be replicated because it looked like a very handy thing to be able to do. Meanwhile, Harry stared down at the big armies fighting all over the outside of Asgard. He immediately recognized the Iron Hedger since they were spirits given a physical body in their afterlife. To them this is their heaven so as the master of dead he couldn't help but smile so this is paradise to those that follow the Norse? Rosses was snapped out of her curiosity when she heard Harry's question, she then looked over towards where he was staring and nodded when she noticed the Einhaja yes, this is what the Vikings and followers of the Norse faction believe is paradise, we don't get many souls for Valhalla anymore but to warriors and fighters this seems like a dream come true. Harry nodded and then turned his head towards Rosses you don't agree with it? Rossis began fidgeting with her fingers but nodded well. The Einhajir are jolly and good people for the most part, some of them are even heroes but, they're very simple-minded individuals and they have no respect for women. They don't appreciate a smart girl and snub her because she can now think them. Or just ignore her. Rossis looked close to crying and Harry knew that she was speaking about herself at the end there, still, the dragon god didn't like her looking like she was about to cry, so he did what he usually does when one of his children or girlfriends looks sad. Harry gave Rossis a head pat, which made the Valkyrie squeak in surprise and turned her head towards him, she noticed that Harry was still calmly staring at the battle going on right now. But he then spoke, if people don't appreciate you for who you are and for what you excel in, then it is their loss, someday Rossis you'll find someone who will appreciate you, so hold on to them and do not let go, because that person will always be grateful to you for being who you are. Rossis stared at Harry in silence, his words despite being spoken so softly and calmly it hard and Rossis couldn't help but think that he had experience with something like she had. So it added weight to his words, a weight that made Rossis feel she can believe in what he just told her.
The fact that her granny had told her something similar added even more weight to Harry's words. So Rosses chose to heed Harry's advice, or at least make an effort to do so. Harry then turned his head lightly to his side and gave her a smile Don't worry too much Rosses, do what you have to do, but don't let it consume you, enjoy life and relax. That's the way we do things in Neo Kyoto and as you have probably seen, it has worked wonders. Rosses nodded. Harry then pulled his hand back and went back to staring at both armies battling Is there a way to call all the Einhajars back? Once my Digimon get here, things will get crazy. Rosses frowned because, that was a very good question, she had never heard of the Einhajars getting called back from a battle and she doubts they'll even listen to such an order. So she shook her head I don't think there's a way, but I don't think you have to worry about that Harry, they are dead after all. Harry frowned No, it matters, like me. All my Digimon can cause spiritual damage, so any spirit-like beings caught in between will most likely be destroyed. The poor Valkyrie gaped at Harry, it's common knowledge that beings or objects capable of doing spiritual damage are very rare, and the fact that a dragon god like Harry can do so was both amazing and terrifying. Harry ignored the surprise and shock on Ross's face and instead chose to think about what to do, destroying the Einhager would be counterproductive to Asgard, so he definitely couldn't in good conscience let his Digimon loose here. Harry hummed for a little bit and then nodded to himself when he thought of a good way to deal with all of this, but he needed some information first. So he decided to ask Rosses Hey Rosses, is there a big open place in Asgard where I can put all the Einhajars? Rosses snapped out of it, when Harry called out to her and immediately answered his questions are, uh there's the palace's garden or dining room, why? Harry activated his Rinnegan and took a look inside the palace to find both the gardens and dining room. He quickly found them and nodded I'm going to teleport all the Einhajars away from the battlefield, so I need a lot of space. Rosses widens her eyes mass teleportation? But that's very difficult and dangerous. There are so many things that can go wrong Harry, are you sure you can do it? Harry smiled at Rosses and then chuckled it's always fun to meet people that don't know what I can do, it's funny to see their faces when I pull off the impossible. Harry then focused his power over space and time and with a snap of his fingers he teleported every Einhager away from the battlefield, into the palace gardens and dining room. Ross's eyes widened at what she had witnessed, she didn't feel any mana being used or even any sort of supernatural energy, but she felt as if the universe itself bent to Harry's will. It was a strange and unknown feeling, and could only be described as what she had said before, it really showed to her that Harry Potter was a being well beyond anything she knows. Harry though, just smiled and then waved his hand realize. Digimon Royal Knights. The next thing Rosses knew, was being flashed by a big bright light, small ones and zeros, and then, after getting her sight back, she and Harry were surrounded by massive metallic beings and an enormous dragon. Rosses was speechless at what she was looking at, these incredibly powerful looking beings before her were so unique and massive but they had this sense of power and dignity around them that just made them, even more, awe-inspiring to her. Then the black armored being turned its head towards Harry and seemed to be smiling with its eyes as it spoke with a feminine voice which shocked poor Rosses even more Harry? Is it time for us to have some fun? Harry chuckled and nodded that's right I'll famine, you and then knights can go wild and kill all of these enemies. Rosses watched as the black knight giggled which, again made her feel rather odd. Then another knight, this one white in color and with heads of a wolf and some sort of reptilian for hands spoke next this looks like a war of sorts. Where are we, Harry? Harry smiled at his Digimon friend this is a war Omniman, as to where we are? We're in as good home of the Norse faction. Omniman nodded, suddenly Rosses felt someone pat her head, which startled her a bit and made her look up w what? Rosses then noticed a pink knight patting her head with her finger as softly as possible Harry, who is this beautiful girl, I really like her armor. Harry smiled that's Rosses and she's a Valkyrie, Crusade Ermin. Crusade Ermin nodded and turned her head towards Rosses and began to tie her hair in a very complicated hairstyle, poor Rosses just decided to let her do it while Crusade Ermin continued to do so. Harry chuckled in amusement, despite her looks, Crusade Ermin was a very girly Digimon knight and would always make different hairstyles out of the hair of all his daughters, Hope and Morgan loved to go to her, just for the royal knight to play with their hair. Harry then turned his head towards the dragonic looking knight Ultra Force Vedraman, Make sure all enemies die they're all members of the Co's Brigade. Ultra Force Vedraman nodded it shall be done, are you going to raise a barrier around the battlefield? Harry nodded yeah, it will allow people to teleport in but not out, I want to draw in an enemy I will take care of personally. 
Harry turned his head towards Rossis but froze when he saw her with a new hairstyle crusade Ermine made for her. She had her hair put up into a big round bun on top of her head. She looked cute though a bit mismatched because of the armor she had on. That sort of relaxed and homey hairstyle didn't match the situation but did match her personality. Crusade Ermine even put on a pair of glasses on her to complete the look. Harry smiled while Rossis just deadpanned, inwardly she liked the hairstyle since Crusade Ermine took a mirror from who knows where and showed it to her well you look nice Rossis. The poor Valkyrie just sighed don't make fun of me Harry. Harry chuckled no I'm serious but in any case, I'm about to raise a wide area of effect ward, so no one will be able to teleport out okay? Rossis immediately took on a serious look and nodded, but it was ruined by her hairstyle and glasses, Crusade Ermine just smiled with her eyes while Harry tried not to laugh. He then snapped his finger and Rossis watched as a massive ward appeared and spread to surround all the opposing enemies, she looked around and stared in awe as the area of effect spread so wide and far amazing. I've never seen a ward being put up so far and wide. Harry just smiled it takes quite a bit of magic and a great control of your mana, but it's doable. In fact, this sort of ward is the norm in Neo Kyoto. Rossis nodded lucky. It's hard to get magical knowledge in Asgard, everyone doesn't take it seriously and thinks that mages are weak, I had to get training and tutoring from Lady Brynhild, so I could get the magical knowledge I needed. Harry raised an eyebrow Brynhild. Rossis nodded yeah, she's the chief Valkyrie of the Valkyrie squad in Asgard. Harry nodded I see, that's interesting. Brynhild. It seems like she's very different from Brunhilde, she is a magic specialist in this world while the one in Neo Kyoto is all about sword play and fists, it's actually funny to think about it. Harry then smiled at Ross as well, if Odin is smart he'll know how to negotiate with Yasaka and Asgard would get access to Neo Kyoto's knowledge and training. Ross is perked up but then suddenly slumped and looked rather depressed, which worried Harry and the Digimon Royal Knights, Harry stared at her for a second before asking what's wrong. Rossis turned her head towards Harry and gave him the saddest face he had ever seen in his life, she even looked on the verge of tears Lord Odin is going to mess it up. He's going to make a perverted comment, or not take things seriously and we'll lose our chance to ally ourselves to Neo Kyoto. Harry and the Digimon Royal Knights stared at Rossis in surprise, the sheer misery in her voice just left them stunned. It made Harry feel rather suspicious about Rossis and Odin. So he took out his smartphone and called Yasaka, it didn't take Yasaka too long to answer Harry, what's going on? Harry smiled at his girlfriend nothing is wrong, though I need you to do something for me. Yasaka smiled and nodded sure, what do you need? Harry smiled back at Yasaka I need you to make sure the alliance with Odin really happens, if the Allfather acts perverted or seems to act like an Azazel, beat the shit out of him but the alliance goes through okay? Yasaka smiled no problem. I was already squeezing the old god of everything useful and both Office and Seraph all already kicked his ass, so don't worry. Harry heard a groan of pain in the background and what seemed to sound like a kick hitting flesh, before a grunt of pain echoed in the back, it made the dragon god laugh a bit alright, thank you Yasaka. Yasaka just smiled no need to thank me, my love, I'll see you when you're done Yasaka then hung up while Harry quickly put away his smartphone. He then turned his head towards Rossis there you go. You have nothing to worry about Rossis, the alliance will go through, so cheer up okay? Rossis nodded and rubbed her eyes, she was looking rather relieved right now since she didn't have to worry about her king messing up things, the Digimon knights smiled at the poor Valkyrie while Harry just sighed. Even though he just knew Rossis for a short time, he already knew that she is a diligent and kind girl, but she also had some major self-confidence issues. Issues that seem to come about from the environment she has grown up in. He didn't know what has happened to her but he was aware that she has had a tough time for a long while. Rossis nodded and composed herself thank you Harry. I was really worried about Lord Odin's attitude and if it would offend Neo Kyoto in some way. The king of Asgard tends not to think of the consequences. Harry frowned I see. So you babysit him. Don't worry, I know how to handle lazy and perverted people, I'll make sure he doesn't cause any more problems. Rossis just nodded but Harry saw some doubt in her eyes, who knows. Just what the All Father has put this poor woman through. It was something that Harry will be looking into, but for now, he needed to go through his attack. He can already see the opposing army look rather panicky since their enemies disappeared and they found themselves unable to leave. So he turned his head towards Alphamon and nodded at her destroy them all. They're the enemies of Neo Kyoto and all enemies must be destroyed. Alphamon nodded it shall be done. She then turned towards her fellow Digimon Royal Knights. You heard Harry, spread out and destroy the opposing army. 
The rest of the Digimon Royal Knights raised their weapons or a claw and loudly responded with a yes, ma'am. They immediately rushed out and became blurs as they disappeared and spread through the battlefield. Harry smiled and summoned his keyblades just in case he needed to snipe and help thin out the army. Rosses just watched on and felt rather excited. These knights seemed like fun and carefree beings but she knew better. Despite the quirks some of them showed, he knew she was about to see something truly amazing. Rosses then reached above her head and touched the bun made out of her hair and smiled. Crusade Ermin reminded her a bit of her grandmother with the way she treated her and spoke to her. It made her smile. Dash. Al Famine slammed against the ground feet first causing a shockwave that blew away a big group of enemies and killed quite a few as well. The rest of the army looked up in both fear and shock as they stared at the massive black knight that just appeared. Al Famine suddenly reached her hand to her side and summoned her weapon as golden and digital golden wings spread out of her back. A massive sword with a long handle appeared in her hand in a flash of green digital energy. Al Famine spun her massive sword and then stabbed it into the ground causing another massive shockwave that forced the many fallen angels, stray exorcists, devils, frost giants, and some of the other members of the Chaos Brigade to cover their faces with their arms and hold on, so they wouldn't be sent flying. Al Famine spread her golden wings fully open and then loudly spoke Al Famine Ariukan mode. Soon after both Omniman and Galantman landed beside Al Famine and became engulfed in digital energy, Omniman glowed white while Galantman glowed red. Omniman spread his arms wide and then his cape became a pair of pure white wings. His body continued to glow a bit while glowing blue lines began to run through his body. He then loudly spoke Omniman. Merciful mode. Galantman glowed red and then swung his arm. The red energy dispersed and showed that he had transformed as well. His body was now covered in crimson red armor while he was now holding a glowing white lance and on his back were five pairs of glowing pure white wings. Galantman spun his lance and then loudly spoke Galantman crimson mode. The three royal Digimon knights then let their digital energy burst out, causing another massive shockwave to spread all around them, this time however the opposing army was ready and immediately took off flying up and away from the three massive Digimon. However they were now completely terrified, whatever these beings were, they were extremely powerful and most of them didn't even know what they were, but some did and that just served to terrify them even more. These creatures were seen in Neo Kyoto when they had televised the event between Harry Potter and Sarah Org, which took place not that long ago. That made them realize that Neo Kyoto was here and that meant Harry Potter was also here as well. That small detail sent the opposing army into panic and despair. The Chaos Brigade were well aware that they were recognized as enemy number one to both Harry Potter and the Yokai faction, but they never thought they would come to aid Asgard. It just didn't make sense to them at all and why was the prominent question in their heads. Some were even desperately trying to teleport away and escape, but they found themselves unable to still do so. Al Famine then loudly spoke the Holy Digimon Royal Knights are here on behalf of the Norse faction and the Yokai faction. Harry Potter our leader and friend has ordered your deaths. Prepare yourselves Chaos Brigade, for we can only promise a quick death. It was at this moment that the massive army knew that it was over for them, many were regretting that they had decided to join the Chaos Brigade, and some were even regretting ever agreeing to this war. But most of all, every member of the Chaos Brigade was cursing the remaining leaders and Loki for ever thinking this was a good idea in the first place, or just because they wanted to cause chaos in the world. Suddenly more massive knights landed beside the first three and then a massive dragon holding an equally massive lance arrived as well, the Chaos Brigade looked up and some began to hysterically laugh. It seems the lost situation they found themselves in had broken some of them, unable to cope with the horror and panic they instead descended into madness. One eight-winged fallen angel just growled and shook his head well we're fucked, and if everyone in the Chaos Brigade army was in any sort of right mind they might have agreed with him. But as of now everyone was too busy staring at the massive knights before them, they knew they were going to die and there was nothing they could do but hope that the Black Knight was telling the truth and they indeed grant them a quick death. Dash. Somewhere in a pocket dimension, Loki stared at the situation on the battlefield but instead of anger or fear showing on his face, he instead maliciously grinned as he took out a dagger. The dagger was glowing with a violent dark glow, this dagger gave the most ominous feeling of hate and rage, but the dark god just chuckled Harry Potter, your death will soon come at the hand of Loki, ha 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 ha. Behind him stood Fenra, Harty, Skull, and Jormungand who stared at Loki in confusion, Jormungand shook his head. He knew what was used in the creation of that dagger. The blood of that abomination was said to be an anathema to dragons, him being that close to it made shivers go down his spine but he also doubted that it would affect Harry Potter. Despite being a dragon, 
Harry Potter was much more and every dragon, evil or good knew that they all respect the dragon god, and even though he is being forced to help his further he knew they would fail. They will all die soon but at the very least he would be free of the torment that is having to serve Loki, he only felt bad for Fenra, Harty, and Skull who had never had a choice in all of this.